Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yuri Time. <laughs> Hello, welcome, welcome. Hi, Susan May. Congratulations on the first, and also thank you for the hydrate posture check confetti combination. <laughs> I have a sip of my monster. Yes, uh, I plan on trying my hardest to play as many of these games as I can today. It would be really cool if I managed to play all of them, but I'm also aware of the fact that whenever I'm playing a visual novel, I take a million hours to play it. So I don't know if I will finish them all today, but I'm gonna try my hardest. <laughs> but welcome, welcome Suzume, welcome Akire, thank you. Welcome Grace Snow. Hello. Yes, I'm going to I'm going to try and play all four of them. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to. But um I'm I I basically was just like, well, if I just take a break at 6 when I usually end the stream and go make myself a sandwich and then run back and then just keep playing. I don't have any plans for this afternoon evening. So I could just Play games. I can I can just have a day of playing games. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to or not. I don't know if I'll manage all of them. I I know that Nui managed to do all four games in like two streams worth. So if I basically see it as like a bef like two halves, like the first half is how long I'd usually stream, and then the second half is keep going until they're done. <laughs> Then I, I might be able to do it, but again, like a lot depends on how distracted I get, how sidetracked I get, how um how long it takes me in general. So I'll have a better idea like after like the four hour mark where I usually end the stream. That'll probably give me more of like a point of reference as to how it might go. <laughs> but I'm really excited. I just I really want to play all of these games so much. I've been trying to figure out where to put it in my my schedule because like I already planned out for October playing loads of like spooky, creepy, kind of unnerving, unsettling kind of games because those are the kind of games that I don't like to play like just randomly during the year because of like it's comfy times. <laughs> So I had all this stuff where it's like, oh, this game, I'll play it in October. Hey, this game, I'll play it in October. And then four Yuri games just pop into existence at the start of October. And I I'm, I have to play them. Like, there's no way I'm not playing them. <laughs> but it's been very like, oh, God, how can I how can I fit this in? Where can I where can I squeeze these games in? So I figured if I just have like a marathon women Wednesday, it could be pretty good, right? <laughs> You got through like maybe two thirds of Upwards Rain in two hours. Oh, that's that's good to know as well, because uh, I'm I'm pretty sure like it's 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 kind of hard to tell just immediately how long it'll take. Like they're not all going to be the exact same length. Like they're they're very different games. <laughs> but I figured I can at least try my hardest. I'm I'm gonna try my hardest, and. Like, I, do I don't have to worry about being up early tomorrow, too, because tomorrow, the only plans I have are me and my family are going to go watch Beetlejuice Beetlejuice in the afternoon at, like, 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m. So I don't have to be up in the morning tomorrow. <laughs> so if I need to stay up late to finish these games, I can do that. But, like, I really want to. I want to play these games because, one... I had like the tiny teasers at the start of the month and ever since then I've been avoiding all of the information. I've been um, I've been lurking in the other Bellflower streams but muted so I don't get information about the games. I don't know what these games are going to be like. I don't know anything about them except for the titles and the, the images I've seen. So I'm really excited. Like I've... I, I always like going into games completely blind. Like, I, I don't like spoiling myself. And it's also the reason why I don't tend to play demos as well. Whenever there's a demo for a game, I'm like, if it's a game I think I'll want to play, I don't want to play the demo because I don't want to spoil the actual game when it comes out. <laughs> as silly as that sounds. Wait, oh, I'm chippy to start with. Alphonse, thank you. 
thank you so much for chippifying me to start with. You can you can get back to your lurk now. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I I love that you're you're you've got all the points hoarded up. <laughs> But I'm I'm really excited for this. Anyway, I got I got very distracted rambling on there. But uh, hello everybody, welcome in. Uh, I've I've said welcome, Suzume. Congratulations on the first. Welcome Akire. Welcome Grace. No. Welcome Hikari. Having your coffee and cereal. Oh, excellent, excellent. I can I can be your breakfast accompaniment. <laughs> Good morning and sunken shell. Hello and Alphonse. Hello. Yeah, I, I hope I enjoy them too. I I know I'm going to because I I cannot think of a single thing that Studio Elan has come out with that I've not enjoyed. <laughs> and I know the teams behind these games. Like I know a lot of the people involved in these games. So like I I know what they're capable of. I know what I know it's gonna be good and I'm excited. I'm so excited for it. Uh you play a, a demo when you're not sure if you'd like it. Yeah, that that's fair, I think. See, if I'm not sure if I'd like it, I usually just don't play it. Because <laughs> I have so many games that I still have planned to play that I haven't gotten around to. So I tend to not, like, not bother with demos, I guess. Man, when is the last time I played a demo? I don't remember. Like, one thing I do like is when there are demos of games that aren't actually the actual game. Like, Stanley Parable, the demo for that game, um, that doesn't really, like, spoil the game because it's, it's, it's a very unusual demo, but it works perfectly for it. But yeah, I am so excited to play these. Yeah, sure they work hard. And four games in the span of one month is impressive itself. Exactly! Like, and they're free as well. These games are all completely free to play. If you want to play them, you can play them. It's... Here is the link. Hold on, let me pin that, actually. Let me keep that pinned. There we go. <laughs> keep that pinned up the top. You can get the link to the games. But uh, all of them are available for free on itch. There's... Um, when you click it, it'll come up with, like, a recommended $2 donation. But if you don't have the money or don't want to don't want to pay anything, you can just click no thanks, just take me to the downloads. And you can get them all completely free. All these games are free. Like four amazingly made games with so much polish as well. Like I'm amazed at the, the quality involved in this. Like ju just look at like my little thumbnail art. <laughs> This is art from the games, and it's so pretty. It, they all look so good. I'm really, really excited. Also, um, if you see the little sketchy chibi that's drawn, that's on the on the thumbnail too, that was drawn by Theo Minute, who is involved in Upwards Rain as well. So uh, I, I wanted an excuse to use this little, little chibi. <laughs> so I stuck it on the thumbnail. It's so cute. But yeah, I'm really excited to, to play these. I figured what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like left to right on the screen at the moment. I'm going to do it in that order. So we're going to start with Yuri Paddle and then we're going to play On Wings Bringing Sleep. Then we're going to play Upwards Rain. Then we're going to play Witch You Want. We'll just go across left to right. Because <laughs> I, I don't know what order to play them in. So I was like, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go with this. This is fine. I think it's like alphabetical order by file name. Because uh, the, the Yuri Paddle file name is um, an anime convention murder mystery. It's like a ACMM. So it starts with A, so it, it comes first alphabetically. <laughs> and then the rest are just alphabetical order. It's the easiest way to do it, I think. ACMM. Also, Gregor, hello. Welcome, welcome. But yeah, it's really nice. You can play all these games for free. You can download them all for free. And the teams have been so hard at work this month. Like, I am so amazed at how much passion has gone into these. And I'm really excited to play them. I, I, I wanted to play them immediately, but I was like, no, I have to stream it. I want to stream them. I'm going to stream the games. So that's what I'm going to do now. I just, I'm, I'm just ready for Yuri time. But yes, the, the game I'm going to start with is... Hopefully this works. Boom. <laughs> We're gonna start with Yuri Paddle. 
Also, yeah, I got an art commission whilst all of the Game Jam stuff was happening too. Everyone is so powerful. Everyone is so powerful. <laughs> That's Suzume. <laughs> Thank you for stopping in to say hi, even though this is now spoiler territory. Take care at work. I hope you have a, an easy work day. <laughs> Yeah, you played Upwards Rain for free and paid some money afterwards. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be doing the same. Like I I downloaded them all for free for the stream because I, I just just grabbing them all. But there's no way I'm like not paying for these games. Like I already love them just from the titles. <laughs> I'm so excited. The Slipknot guy, hello, welcome. How am I doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm excited to play good visual novel games today. I hope you're doing well as well. Happy, happy Wednesday. It's Women Wednesday, so I'm playing games with women. <laughs> also, Nugs, hello. What are you looking at? This is Yuri Paddle. This is a new visual novel that came out a couple of days ago. <laughs> Hold on, let me put the, let me put the thumbnail back up because I didn't do like a full description so much. Also, Vicky, hello! Welcome! Here's the thumbnail for today's stream. Uh, basically, for anyone who doesn't know, Studio Elan, who do amazing Yuri visual novels, they ran an in-house game jam throughout September, where a bunch of their team and people involved in the Studio Elan games made four games that are like completed and available to play right now in the space of a month. In a month, they did all of this in September, all four of these games, and they look so good. They, they look really good. I'm really excited to play them. <laughs> but yeah, it's um it's really sweet. It, I, I know a lot of the, the people involved in the teams and I'm, I'm excited to see what they've come up with because uh, it's a lot of people involved in a lot of stuff I have played before. Like straight off the bat, uh, Upwards Rain is a lot of the uh, the team behind Twofold, which I was playing recently and I'm a very, very big fan of. <laughs> and uh, On Wings Bringing Sleep is the Studio Nekomata team who did the, um, the Verpro merch collaboration not too long ago. Uh, when was that? It was like earlier in the year start of the year they did the the verpro merch collab and i had i have my magnet that was made that was made by uh the on wings bringing sleep team and there's also a uh, fairy co who's part of the yuri paddle team too she's also studio nekamata but it's i'm i'm really really excited i'm i'm looking forward to it so much <laughs> Yes, okay, just chilling at the moment. Woke up two hours ago. Oh, I, I also woke up late today. <laughs> I couldn't sleep last night. So, like, I was I was like awake at 5 a.m. Like, is it really a good idea to do a super long stream tomorrow when I'm not asleep yet? But then I slept all morning, so I, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I made it work. I managed to sleep. Also, Nugs, thank you for the luck. Gonna do some maths. Oh, good luck. I hope the numbers treat you kindly. <laughs> but thank you for the lurk. Lurking while I play Yuri Paddle, an anime convention murder mystery. I am very excited for this. Right, if we look at the about, here we go. Uh, the core team behind this is Sion, who's the writer, who you may know from things like National Park Girls and Highway Blossoms. Uh, Fairy Co is the artist who's part of uh, Studio Nekamata. Ratskare, who you may know as another fellow bellflower with me. She's amazing. She's lovely. And Lopsen for the programming. And then there's the full list of credits here for everything going on. Also, everyone else at Studio Elan, I'm, I'm just going to like count myself in that as a bellflower. Like I'm, I'm creeping in at the edge like, yes, I get the special thanks to <laughs> But yeah, I'm very excited to see how this goes you constantly waking up at 5 a.m oh i'm you wake up at 5 a.m i'm not even asleep at that point <laughs> also ania hello welcome 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 on in how's it going welcome to yuri paddle an anime convention murder mystery i am excited for this because uh one of the only things i've seen about this is 
Oh, I'm back to normal. I'm back to normal. I'm not chibi anymore. <laughs> Special thanks to me for liking women. That's me. I'm, I'm the wom woman appreciator. And Flint, hello. Welcome, welcome. The body has the same pose as Sissel's corpse. Wait, it does. That's great. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. We're, we're not off to a good start in terms of me getting all of these games done today, but now I want to try something very quickly. Because... Hold on a second. Hold on. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Trust me. This, this isn't going to be as, as funny as I think it is. Let's see if this works. Hold on. Yeah, go, ghost trick to convention boogaloo. <laughs> it is. It's it's just like the the Sissel corpse in in ghost trick. Hold on. Oh, where did I save this? I'm so silly. Off to a good start. I'm already distracted. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's me now. We're need to flip it. There we go. <laughs> it's me now. Oh, hold on. I feel like that's no, the wrong way. There we go. Oh, perfect. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> We're off to a good start. I'm 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 self-inserting as the murder victim. Why am I doing this actually? <laughs> also, Gigi, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome in. Okay, yeah, this is That's good. I'm I'm glad I did that. <laughs> right, shall I actually start the game? Oh my goodness, after only like 15 minutes too. That's like a, a record for me playing visual novels to actually start the game. Yeah, the record scratch freeze frame. <laughs> Let's start. Also, uh, let me know if the volume gets too loud or too quiet at any point because uh, I've, I've done minimal testing for the audio levels <laughs> for these games. Let's go. Grayson, 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 buddy. I need you to calm down, okay? Think this over. No! I'm done, Stella. I'm done. It's just one more day. You can do one more day, right? No. Absolutely not. Not another day, hour, or minute. Hell, if I have to spend another second navigating that disaster zone, I'm going to lose my shit. I'll go full Caleb. That, that's a little extreme, don't you think? What happened with Caleb this morning was... Completely avoidable? Yes! Yes, it was! And that's why I'm doing this. If I'm going to have a nervous breakdown, it's going to be on my own terms. Not in the middle of the atrium where everyone can see me. Wow, we're off to an immediate start. <laughs> Immediately, I'm just saying, yeah, that sounds like convention stuff. It's, from what I've heard, it's incredibly stressful. What's that supposed to mean? I'm checking myself in. You can't be serious. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I sound like a clown on the other end of that line? Are you just picking up squeaks and honks? Please reconsider. I'm begging you. I'm already at the hospital. Oh God, Grayson, please. Once I hand my phone over to the nurse, I'm on hold for three days. Do you understand me? Come on, this is the second year we've done this con and Kaylee says if we make it to year three, then she'll salary us. You actually believe her? Insurance, stability. Kaylee has no business running a convention, let, 
running a convention, let alone a payroll. You know this as well as I do. How she even managed to score the Philly Roll sponsorship is <laughs> Philly Roll. <laughs> Crunchy Roll reference, nice. It's beyond me. But she did it. And yet somehow this still isn't worth it. He's right. God, he's so right. I... I... I can't do this, Grayson. Everything's on fire. You're down. Caleb's down. We're over capacity and understaffed. Half the volunteers didn't even show up today, man. I'm sorry. The fire marshal has been here twice already. Twice! You should hear the last voicemail hotel management left. I wouldn't say that shit to my worst enemy. <laughs> you should be handling this. I'm just the guest coordinator, for God's sake. Oh, poor Stella. <laughs> the extent of my skill set is shoddy Kago and keeping repressed voice actors from getting too drunk. Please don't leave me. You're on your own, Stella. Good luck and goodbye. Boop, boop, boop. No! Oh, okay, rough start. Wow. <laughs> Um, doesn't sound like this is going to be a, a, a fun convention. He hung up. No. He's gone. Ah! I'm alone. What do I even do? I'm going to cry. I'm seriously going to cry. Bam, ow. <laughs> I just hit my hand on my desk trying to do like the slam and I actually hurt my hand. <laughs> Why did I do that? I'm clever. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Even this cold, cold desk against my sweaty, sweaty face offers more support than my co-workers. Oh boy. <laughs> I want my girlfriend. Luna will keep me from jumping off the metaphorical cliff. The literal one, too. She's always just a text message away. Is Stella about to be broken up with? Is this, is this just like Stella's worst day ever? <laughs> Babe, I want to smoke so bad. <laughs> Even just seeing the three dots showing that she's typing is enough to cheer me up. Just a little. Nope, you promised. Have a sucker. <laughs> okay, no, everything's good there. Thank goodness. I was... <laughs> Stella needs a break. <laughs> oh, fine. Two weeks in and it hasn't gotten easier. Why couldn't I have waited until after the con is over? Wow, so like smoking withdrawal and... All the staff's gone, and nothing is organized, and one of the main members has just completely left the team. This doesn't seem like a fun convention. Did you get one? Yeah, it's lime. I hate lime. <laughs> good girl. <laughs> the good girl expression. But if it's for her, I will absolutely destroy a thousand lime suckers. I don't even care. This tongue will find the mole molecular core of a Tootsie Roll Pop if she so demands it. Why are you so sad right now? What's going on? Caleb had a nervous breakdown. And Grayson just checked himself into the hospital. OMG. Who's going to do their jobs? I've got a feeling it might be Stella. Yeah. Also, can I just say something I pointed out to you? I, I see the the flower. The flower on the on the phone case. I love that. <laughs> no way. Please kill me. <laughs> Come home now and I'll kiss you. I can't. Everything is falling apart and someone needs to keep it together. Oof. What about Kaylee? Let her deal with it. She's literally taking advantage of you. 
Jiggle, jiggle, click, slam. And I just got an email today from Age of Kingdoms. They're going to sponsor my streams for like the next two weeks. Speak of the devil. It's Kaylee. Well, she seems very, very happy. She seems like she doesn't realize the extent of how terrible everything is. Oh my god, stop. That's so exciting, but you so deserve it. We totally need to collab sometime. And a bunch of her orbiters who definitely should not be in here. Great. Awesome. <laughs> oh, um, actually, I only collab with people who have at least 50 consistent viewers, so... Yeah. I'll text you later, babe. She's here. Texting your AI girlfriend again? She's not AI. I live with her. We have a cat. We're thinking about getting another one. Right, right. GPT is getting so convincing now. I keep telling her she'd love Mystic Messenger, but she never plays it. Real. I can hear you, you know. And all of you can't be here. Get. Oh, actually, we're industry, sweetie. See the badges? Yes, I was the one who handed them to you at pickup. Now get. You heard me. Get. Wow, I thought you were a girl's girl. Guess not. Get out. Just imagining Stella hissing like a cat. Everyone's just like, oh god. Get him out of here. Oh, but I just ran into them like two minutes ago. I was going to ask them to get far for me. Where have you been? I've been trying to radio you for hours. Also, I love the phone charm. <laughs> I love the convention badges too. <laughs> Little rat. <laughs> The little mascot. Hold on, can I like... Yes, I can hide the window. <gasps> Look! Oh, they got the little ribbons! They got the little ribbons. <gasps> oh, is that Mudeng? Nice. <laughs> nice! <laughs> oh, I love the art in this so much. For real? On what? The walkie-talkie. The one you're wearing. Oh, that. It's super cute and business core, but I hate the sounds it makes. It's all staticky and going off at random times. That is what walkie-talkies do. Yes. Just text me on my phone next time. You'll be honest, you had no idea that these were ribbons you could hang on badges till now. Oh, I only know about it because of Off Kai Expo. Um, I, I was a, a virtual guest at Ofkai in Ofkai year two, and I got a badge from that, and I also have a ribbon to put on it. Wait, I can, I can probably show you. Give me a sec. Let me, let me find it. Also, Hikari, I hope you have a good work day. Thank you for stopping in. Shows you've never been to a con before. Oh, well, it's, it's slightly different. Like, I, the, the last con I went to, the last convention I went to was, like, before Vexpo, which was, like, very casual um i did the virtual attendance at ofkai but since then like before then it's been a while and there were never like the little ribbons when i went to conventions but i think it's such a cool idea hold on let me see
Okay, I can't find it, and I'm not going to take too long looking for it because that's going to take me forever. But I'll I'll find a photo afterwards because I, I've <laughs> I've got my my guest badge from Off Kaijen too, and I have a, a lovely little Marigato ribbon that I have attached to it as well. <laughs> but yeah, the the ribbon thing is so cute. It's so lovely. Also, Lyra, hello, Addy, hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's Yuri time. It's Yuri time. I'm, I got distracted. I was trying to find my convention badge so that I could show off the, the ribbons I had on it or like ribbon singular. <laughs> because in the game, they've, they've got the little ribbons on the badges and it's so cute. But I don't know where I have put it. It's, it's probably put somewhere safe, which means I'm not going to be able to find it quickly enough. I'm going to have to get stuff out. <laughs> But hello, welcome, welcome. I think it's such a sweet idea. I love seeing people who just collect the ribbons and they have like a scarf. Like they have so many ribbons attached to their badge that they end up like putting it around their shoulders. That's what I aspire for someday. That's what I, I want someday. I want so many convention ribbons that I can wear them. <laughs> I want to make one for, for next Ofkai too. Like, uh, the goal is I want to attend Ofkai Expo next year. I'm going to try and make it happen. Whatever I do, I really want to make it happen. But even if I can't, I'm going to make sure there is a, a Liri ribbon that could be picked up there. <laughs> Don't know what the design would be yet. Probably Sandra, but uh, we'll see. Or Jopping. Oh, no, I need to make Jopping ribbons. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, I have ideas now. Just saw a trailer for a music biopic of Robbie Williams and The Strange Reasons. He has a monkey in the movie? That's interesting. I had no idea that was that was happening. Interesting. Uh, ribbon for the VTuber k poppies Yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe just like a little car and at the side it says, Get in losers, we're going jopping. So it appeals to the Mean Girls fans as well. <laughs> but uh, I think a Sandra one would be very fun. I think a jopping ribbon would be very fun. Also, maybe Monster Energy, but um, in a in a subtle non copyright branded way. <laughs> so many ideas. I maybe I just have like twelve ribbons. <laughs> right. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, Kaylee is already infuriating to me because she reminds me of people that I've known in the past who have quote unquote arranged things and then nothing's actually been arranged and I've had to do it all myself. I'm having like flashbacks to like school projects. Like it's, it's I, Kaylee needs to have a bit of responsibility and stop talking about getting far with random industry people. <laughs> Just flip the M vertically so it looks like a W. Oh, well, I, I already have like a, Liri branded almost, which is like it's like the monster can but with an L instead of an M. Like if you look at the the emote, the Liri energy emote, it's it's a little small at the moment, but it's 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 not actually a monster can. It's got an L on it. <laughs> and also the cans that Barb made for me. Hold on, let me see. Uh, oh my goodness, where is? Oh, there it is. I lost my hydrate for a second. Watch carefully. Okay, it showed the back of the can. That's that's great. <laughs> I was hoping it would show the front. But the cans that Barb made for me as well also have an L on the front. <laughs> oh, of course it showed the back. Hold on. I've, I've got a PNG somewhere, surely. Surely, surely. Yes, I found them. I found them. Yeah, I'm this this stream might end up being a 12-hour stream. This may be an impromptu 12-hour stream because I'm I'm taking my time. I'm I'm having a fun time. <laughs> and I'm and I'm getting distracted by things. There it is. Look, it's Liri Energy! Th these are the ones Barb made for me. <laughs> Liri Energy with the L on for the, the 3D cans. It's fun. It's so fun. 
Yeah. Oh, Addy, you just plan group trips now because you're too much of a control freak to trust others to do it. Oh, I, I feel like I'm the same. Like, I... If, if I'm planning something, I always want to make sure, like, I have the plans myself and I solidify them myself. If I'm not sure about anything, I will, like, keep pushing until there is something solid. Because I, I really hate having, like, no idea of what's going on. Like, <laughs> I need plans. I need plans when I do things. Otherwise, I get stressed out because I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but no, I'm the same. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an avid planner. Oh, that looks like a scythe. Wait, a, like a, a scythe weapon. Liri the Reaper. What am I reaping? I don't know. I, I don't want souls. <laughs> yeah, booking places months in advance. Oh, me too. Yes. And like booking transport and stuff. Oh, something that got me a little while ago was I used to know somebody who would plan huge events but then they would buy their train tickets on the day they were going and they would just like buy them from the station and every single time I was like how have you not pre-booked in advance how why are you just like rolling up like yeah I'll have a ticket for this for now how how can you do that like not being sure you'd be able to get a train I would be so stressed out I would be so stressed <laughs> But no, they just roll along and be like, yeah, I'd like a train ticket from this place to this place. Cheers. And just roll with it. Whereas I am always like, look, if I'm having a long train ride, I'm booking a seat. I am booking a seat to make sure I can sit down. And if somebody is in that seat, that is the one time that I will actually make a fuss in public and not get embarrassed because I booked that seat and I paid for it and I'm sitting in it. <laughs> the only fuss I can ever make in public. Anything else, I'm just like, okay, okay, um, all right. But if someone's in my seat, I'm like, no, get out. <laughs> yeah, I think it would also cost less than a last minute buy too. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like pre-buying the tickets a lot of the time, it ends up cheaper. And then they're just like, oh yeah, I'll just get an anytime return, which is like double the price. And it's like, why don't you just book the trains? We knew what time we were getting the train. You don't need an open anytime ticket. Why not just get the cheap one? I, I, it baffled me every time. But at the same time, it's like, well, it's it's their money and their choice. Like if if that's what they want to do, that's fine. I've got my ticket booked. <laughs> but it's like I even asked a couple times too. I was like, oh, I'm booking my ticket. Do you want me to book one for you too? And they're just like, no, I'll just buy one on the day. Like. Okay, all right. Anyway, I digress. Uh, back to <laughs> back to Kaylee and Stella. I feel so bad for Stella. She is not gonna have a good day. Oh, Kaylee, just text me on my phone next time. Don't call though, gross. Okay, no, I agree with her on that front. <laughs> I should have guessed. She's only on it all the time. Even right now, as we speak. Look, she's probably networking with industry professionals. You wouldn't understand. Do you like the new charm I put on it? I got it at the airline booth. Super cute, right? Okay, at least she has good taste. Hold on, I wish... Oh, I wish I could zoom in. I want to see the detail on the charm. I want to know what the charm is. loose you didn't tie it right just say it's cute you're so brat this year and not even in the fun way deep breaths Stella deep breaths she's young she doesn't know better you're old ish and a veteran of a thousand convention wars just tell her what's going on it's a dandelion oh that would make sense the oh yeah the dandelion garden the dandelion set oh that would make so much sense yeah, I'm definitely going to be, like, looking for the sprites afterwards. Or I'll just, like, message Fairyco and be like, Hey, hey, can you send me the full resolution, please? Pretty please, thank you. <laughs> All right, Stella. Just tell her what's going on. Kaylee. Boss. We have a couple ongoing situations at the moment. I know, right? Did you see the line for the Yowie booth? Someone should really be managing that. 
That is definitely one of them, but I'm talking... Kaylee, please get off your phone. I'm talking about Grayson right now, okay? Oh yeah, did you get all that, did you get that all settled? In a sense, what's that mean? No hiding it, time to deliver the bad news. He's in the hospital. Oh my God, is he back yet? Oh my God. Great to know where your priorities are, boss. No, and he's not going to be. He quit. What? No way. No way. No way. Me too, Kaylee. Me too. Ugh. Ugh. That's so messed up. Super unprofessional. Well, it was for his health, so does that. I'm revoking his mod privileges. I don't even care. So useless. Oh my god, she's awful. <laughs> what the heck? It can't be helped now. We just have to figure out things from here. Starting with the hotel manager. He's not happy. I really think you need to talk to him. I can tell what the next line's gonna be. I think it's gonna be, uh, can't you do it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew it. Huh? Why me? Because I don't get paid enough for this. I don't get paid at all. With all due respect, you are the event organizer. If things keep going the way they are, on top of the outstanding amount we owe them, you could be held liable. Ugh, so annoying. If it's about the money, like, I get it, but Philly said they'll handle it, so I also, like, don't care. That's why we have a sponsor. You, hello, welcome. What is this game even? This is Yuri Paddle, an, uh, an anime convention murder mystery game. And so far, Stella's having a really bad day. Uh, Kaylee is the event organizer. She also doesn't care. Stella has just had a bunch of the staff members have nervous breakdowns and quit. And she's having to deal with a lot of stuff on her own. And um, we haven't even gone to the murder mystery part yet. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's everything is already a disaster of a convention. And we haven't even gone to the murder mystery part. But on the plus side, it is sponsored by Philly Roll. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Very Louis coded game. You can barely tell it's not part of the overlay. Right, doesn't it match so beautifully? It's like, almost, almost. It's almost the exact same shade of pink as my hair. <laughs> it's so good. But oh, I, I haven't gone very far because I keep getting distracted talking about like convention stories. <laughs> but that's okay. I've got all day. God help me, she is not getting it. Kaylee, honey. I know this is only your second time putting on a con and that there's no way any of us could have expected attendance to double in a year. But it's getting really dire out there. If we can't right this ship, then this whole thing could very well capsize. They'll make entire video essays commemorating our arrogance. They'll talk about the ball pit. <laughs> I really think you need to be taking this a bit more seriously. <sighs> yeah, Kaylee is very out of her depth. Stella, we've been over this so many times. A zillion Caleb's and Grayson's could drop out and I still wouldn't be worried. Because I have you, Stella, you'll do everything right. I understand that, but... And you know why? Why? <laughs> Called it. Called it. Because I have you. <laughs> 
Oh no, but then she's gonna feel important. No, don't, don't fall for it, Stella. Stella, she's manipulating you. She's using you. She knows if she compliments you, you'll feel bad about saying no because that's the kind of person you are and you want to help. Ah. Ah, this is true evil. It, it truly is. It truly is. No matter what happens, I know you'll always be there to fix it. I... I appreciate that, but it's really... It's... It's really getting to be too much. The tech issues, the staff shortage, all the vendors selling AI art in the exhibitors hall this year. Oof. I'm not sure I can take much more of this, Kaylee. Sure you can. I know you can. Who was at the book Takeshi Miyano last year? Me. And when the, the Fiji Yonji livers couldn't connect to the client who had the idea to use PNGs for the concert? That, that was me too. Even though it wasn't my department last year either. See, you're worth way more than quitters like Grayson. Every time you hear the phrase AI art, you tell, oh, me too. It's, <laughs> ugh, ugh, ugh. Generative AI, ugh. not a fan. Don't steal stuff. <laughs> Don't waste the planet's resources. I'm, um, I, I usually try and stay positive and like not talk about negative things too much on stream because like everyone has opinions and if I don't like something, someone else might. But uh, generative AI is the one thing that I'm always just like, no. No, I'm, I, I will be outspoken about that. I don't mind. Oh, you were wondering why the click to continue indicator reminded you of something. It's the Chevron gas logo. Oh, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I don't know anything. That's fine. One of the uh, one of the perils of being British, unfortunately. Also, I love the UI on this. I just realized like it's like semi-translucent and you can see the sprites behind it. It's so pretty. It's so nicely done. Yeah. Yeah, only North America. It would make sense. It's definitely not a, a company I've heard of. <laughs> Yuck. Coming down some fussy hotel managers should be a cinch for you. Oh, God, I really don't know. I'm doing so much already. You know this year is super duper important to me, especially tonight. The Yuri panel, right? With Dandelion P? Exactly! Getting a huge cosplayer like Dandy to host it is a huge get for us. Plus, she's bringing her girlfriend along to help too, and she's like a sort of big YouTuber. Two famous lesbians for the lesbian panel? Um, hello. Goals. I'll do it. I've, I'll volunteer. I, I mean, I'm, I'm only one lesbian. <laughs> but I volunteer. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but... It's at the same time as the cosplay competition and there's already people lining up for that. Oh, the scheduling issues. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Muriel one comfy. Dante left. Thank you so much for the reset. The 27 months. Oh, my goodness. That's such a long time. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I'm your, your morning work background noise VTuber. I'm so glad. I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm happy to fill that role. Thank you. <laughs> I, I always feel so happy when people say, oh yeah, I, I have your streams up to lurk while I'm working because it's comfy. I'm th That's what I want. That's what I aim for. It always makes me so happy. I think some people would be like upset, like, oh, oh, you don't actually watch the streams, you just lurk. But I love lurkers. I'm Everyone who's lurking, thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy. Yeah, morning slot's an underrated slot. Yeah, it's... Honestly, I, I kind of started streaming at this time because nobody else I knew was. It's kind of funny because now I've become friends with uh, Mari Aurelia and she also streams around this time. So we like overlap with each other a little bit. I, I think she's actually streaming right now as well. Um, watch both streams. Check us out. We're both cool. 
But uh, it, it mostly worked out for me because being like in the, in I'm being British, uh, it's just the afternoon for me. So like Tuesday, Wednesday afternoons and Fridays, I'm not doing anything. I'm usually busy at weekends. So during the week, it's like the perfect time slot for me to, to actually do stuff like in the day. And it also means it's morning for a lot of like the, the US folk as well. The only problem is like for, for people like Addy, I'm sorry, Addy, it's like, it's like approaching midnight. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been a really, really comfy time slot for me. It's, it's given me a lot of routine in my day, to be honest. Like I, I like having my stream times. Yeah, <laughs> you'll watch as much as you can. I'm so glad. I appreciate it. And yeah, there's always the VODs too. Cause like even with the, the current stuff going on with Korea not being able to watch VODs on Twitch, I always upload them to YouTube. I, I always stick them on YouTube as well. So the VODs are always there. <laughs> but I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Right, anyway, scheduling woes. Why would you do these panels at the same in the same time slot? Ha. Ah. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, it's getting even better. I looked at the list earlier and I guess Dandy signed up to enter. How is she supposed to participate and host a panel in a separate room simultaneously? Sorry, babes, couldn't be helped. I had to switch the times for the competition and my immortal reading super last minute. Dandy is gorgeous, like so gorgeous. I've loved her work for years, so working with her has been such an exciting opportunity. Is she talking to me or is she answering a question sent with a super chat? <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Also Caps, hello! Just woke up, good morning. I'm having so much fun so far, don't worry. Um, in true Lyrie fashion. I've not gotten very far in the game because I've gotten distracted talking about things. <laughs> but hello, welcome. I'm starting with Yuri Paddle. This is the first game in the four that I'm playing. And uh, I'm going to do them like in alphabetical order by file name. So we start with AMM, ACMM, and then we'll go for On Wings, and then we'll go for Upwards Rain, and then which you want. <laughs> so the plan of action has been set. The order has been set. But uh, good morning. I, ho I hope you have a... I hope you can wake up well. I'm having so much fun so far and I've hardly started. Like, <laughs> Kaylee horrifically reminds me of so many people I used to know. <laughs> and thankfully it's people I, I don't really like... Well, I, I still know who they are, obviously, because they exist. But it's not people I really like interact with anymore I'm not friends with them anymore like the <laughs> <sighs> but at some point she'll have to decide if she wants to be just another Twitter cosplay girly or if she wants to be an actual influencer I had to make that sacrifice and now I run my own convention I'm like way better off I wouldn't exactly call what you're doing running a convention. Yeah, she's not really... She's getting everyone else to run the convention and taking the credit for it. I am infuriated. <laughs> no, they're just some bodies that I used to know. <laughs> but I did have to cut them off. Sounds like we're making more problems for ourselves. Stella, come on. I really need you to be a team player right now. No, I won't be guilt tripped. She's gonna be guilt tripped. She's gonna be guilt tripped. She's too nice. Stella is too nice. I can immediately tell that Stella is too nice. And she's still gonna do all of this stuff because she doesn't know how to say no, because they're gonna make her feel bad because Kaylee is manipulative. <laughs> the murder mystery is learning why we murder Kaylee. 
No, I, I feel like Stella would be too nice for that too as well though. Oh no, Kaylee, don't. No. You're like a big sister to me and I really, 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 really want you to be part of this. Like, a big sister. On Achan? On Isama? <laughs> no, Stella, I knew it. I knew it. Really? You actually think that? Um, yeah? That's why I rely on you so much. This con needs you. Oh, don't say that. And honestly, I do, too. Don't say that either. Please, Stella. Man, why does she have to be like this? But is it really any different than how I used to be 10 years ago? A dozen years ago? 15? Tomorrow will mostly be teardown, so really, if you think about it sideways, this is the last day of the convention? What's one more day? Oh, Stella, I, yeah. Yeah, I knew it. You're making this exceedingly hard for me, you know that? Is it working? <sighs> Fine, you've got me, okay? You've got me! Eee! Oh Christ, my ears! Sweet baby Miku, my ears! <laughs> I'm gonna start using sweet baby Miku from now on, that's great. Oh, sweet baby Miku! <laughs> You're so real for this, bestie. Come again? What did she say? This time next year, we're going to be laughing about this over sashimi at Kusakabe. I'd rather be laughing about this in a big bed with my girlfriend. <laughs> Glad to help. Death is an option. Death is always an option. Yeah, not, not, not for you. <laughs> Guess I'll get started on that email then. Hopefully I can smooth things out with the manager. Oh, actually? Oh no. It's nothing serious. I don't believe you. No, I swear, I swear. Actually, it has to do with a guest, so it's totally in your wheelhouse. A guest? Like, an actual guest? Finally, something I actually know how to handle. Who is it? Dandy, actually. While I was walking over here, one of the tech guys said she was late for setting up. Oh, no. Oh. Sound check, making sure the slideshow works, that kind of thing. That's odd. Was her girlfriend there? Uh-huh, she was there grumbling and untangling wires. Apparently, Dandy's a big fan of her beauty sleep. Low-key relatable, though. She's in room 419. If you go up there and wake her up, you'll be my favorite person in the whole world. I'm amazed it's not room 420, to be honest. <laughs> oh, maybe we will end up in room 420, though. The, the room next to it. Who knows? Anyway, a uh, wake-up call for Dandy. At this point, I already should be. Fine! You'll be my favorite person in every world. Can you please go do it? All this stress is starting to give me a headache. What stress? You're not doing anything. You're telling me. All right, I'll go knock on her door then. Tell her to get her butt down to the ballroom. Slay. Uh-huh, sure. Thank you, bestie, love you. And she's gone. Why do I keep doing this to myself? Because you are too nice. Thank you, bestie. Love you. <laughs> Jay June! Oh my goodness, the 44-month resub! Thank you, bestie. Love you! <laughs> thank you so much for the resub! Good morning! Thank you, thank you. How's it going? Happy, happy Women Wednesday. Um, this is Stella. She's having a time. 
But uh, thank you so much for the resub. I hope you're doing well. Women Wednesday, best day of the week. Good times. Hope I've been well. I have been. I hope you are too. It feels like it's been so long. We gotta catch up at some point. Like, I'm I'm so bad at keeping in touch with people. <laughs> this year, I I saw a post the other day on Twitter, like yesterday, that said um, 2024 is 75% of the way through, and I just looked at it and I was like, no, it's not. It can't be. I haven't done anything yet. Where, where's the where's the year gone? I, I've got so many things I have to do and I haven't done them yet. It can't be 75% of the way. <laughs> it can't be. Like, I, I, I got so much to do. But it's okay. It's okay because it's three quarters, but that still means there's another quarter. And November. November is going to be my big project everything getting done month i'm deciding it now there may be a few less streams in november i might just do like the one weekly one like the tuesday or the wednesday instead of both but i'm gonna make sure things get done because i have set myself like hard deadlines for um it's specifically my song my original song that's getting done this year that is that is getting done this year even if it's not released i want the song done by the end of the year and I'm going to make sure that happens like if I am up all night on the 28th of December recording then so be it I'm making it happen <laughs> but I'm, I'm hoping that it will I'm hoping it won't come to that I'm, I'm gonna make sure it happens before then but yeah there's there's a lot of stuff that uh, I, I've had planned that hasn't happened just yet but it will it will do yeah, good luck in November. Thank you. I, I will work hard. Excited for the work I have planned. You're planning a stream sometime this month? Yes! Yes! Oh my goodness, I hope I can make it. I'll, my, my sleep pattern is all over the place at the moment, so I, I probably can make it. But that's exciting. I'm glad. But yeah, thank you so much for the resub, though. I really appreciate it. Get that little founder's badge. <laughs> Why do I keep doing this to myself? Because you are nice, Stella. You're too nice. Free hugs! Anyone want a free hug? Saber! Hey, Saber! Hey! 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 Can I get a picture? Saber! Hey! What pose do you want? Free hugs! Right here! Seems like the atrium is as lively as ever. Oof. Plant your sword on the ground. Like this. Yeah. Excuse me, can I get through? I had a bad day, please give me a hug. Oh, poor cosplayer. You'll take a free hug. Oh, hello, welcome. Hi, hi, how's it going? Welcome on in, welcome to uh, Yuri Paddle, a uh, convention murder mystery. Um, the murder hasn't even happened yet, or it may have happened. We may be about to uh, discover a body. I'm not sure, but um, but uh, yeah, it's it's already an adventure. I I love this honestly. Is this game supposed to evoke uh, 2000s nostalgia since it's called Yuri Paddle? It, I, it definitely has that element to it. I think it's just like conventions in general, but it definitely blends like the old and the new. I love it. I'm loving it so far. Every con I've ever attended or worked at has always had a central communal area. A convenient nexus in which everyone can gather and get into trouble before heading out to whatever it is they want to do. On kayaks! <laughs> On Kai Expo is no different. On the easily accessible second level, right in the center of the hotel, is the atrium. Hmm, this is an interesting background, huh? I have no idea where this could be. How mysterious. Definitely don't recognize this. <laughs> you love Natsukon. <laughs> oh, Onkai Expo, that's great. From here, you can get to the panel and staff rooms, exhibitors hall and elevators. Hold the pose and, wait, can you say, are you my master? No. Please, you're, you're blocking anyone, anyone at all. 
It's also where the overpriced bar and grill is at. <laughs> Onkai Impact. <laughs> no, I'm more of a fan of Onkai Star Rail, thank you. <laughs> Wonder who gave input on this. Yeah, that's literally in the credits. Rat's in the credits. <laughs> Yeah, Rat worked on this, and you can tell. I love it. The hotel said no to the similarly overpriced food trucks this year, and fortunately for the Bryant Regency, half of all weebs and the entirety of the remaining con staff are functioning alcoholics, so everyone ends up eating and drinking here regardless. Please, I'm so lonely. Won't somebody give me a hug? What about, you're the bone of my sword, Nyasta? <laughs> Unlimited cringe works. Okay, uh, will you give me a hug? Um, gross and gross. What the hell is wrong? Get out of my freaking way. Thank you. Have a nice con. Good, Stella. Use the outdoor voice. Yes. I love the Brian Regency. Luna, save me. It should be legal for me to commit assault. Agreed. You're so right, babe. Now have another sucker. <laughs> Let's see. The flavor this time is... Is it another lime one? Grape! What an improvement over lime. Life is okay. I can go on living. Maybe I don't have to commit assault. Ooh. Oh, I can do stuff now. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna save. Oh, exciting. Exciting. Let's move. Let's move to the elevators. Someone. Someone please fix the escalators. It should be considered a war crime to have to take the stairs during a con. I don't care about getting my steps in. My feet hurt. Ding. Oh crap. The elevator. Wait! Hold it open! Hold it open! Oh, sorry, this one's full. I could see you pushing the button. Just use your leg to... What a butt! What a butt face. Keep it open. It left. Nothing is going right today. I don't even know why I try. Guess I'll just have to wait for the next one. Yep. I bet someone pressed every single button. God, it stinks in here. <laughs> just little anime convention things. Do weeps just not shower? Why can't we hand out deodorant in the tote bags? Elevator! Move it, move it! Out of the- Bam! Ah! Ah! My head! Ah. Is- is this dandelion? Is this dandelion by any chance? Hmm. Senpai-chan! I- I- I'm sorry, I- didn't see you there, ma'am. She must have come down from one of the upper floors. Now this is Senpai-chan. <gasps> notice me? Senpai-chan notice me? She's just staring. What do I do? Do I stare back? That would be rude, would- <laughs> rude would. <laughs> right? I feel like I have to or she might eat me alive, though. She's so scary and tall and stern looking in that well pressed suit and also kind of hot. Wait, who said that? <laughs> Stella. Thermo, hello! G -g -g Greetings! Welcome! Welcome on in! Welcome to Yuri Paddle! A convention murder mystery. Um, it's going slowly because I keep getting distracted, but welcome! Stella. Mm. Yes, ma'am. 
Ah, uh, there goes the elevator. Where is Kaylee? I need to speak with her. I... I'm sorry? Kaylee, do you know where she is? I... I'm really sorry, but I can't understand anything you're saying. Ah, oh, is she actually speaking in Japanese? Maybe, maybe, she may have been speaking Japanese there, maybe. Maybe she was just like, Kiri-san, doko? I, I don't actually know Japanese, sorry. <laughs> I need to speak to Kaylee. Do you know where she is? Des. Desu. <laughs> Do you know where she is? Des. Oh, Kaylee. Why didn't you say so earlier? Hmm. Why is she giving me that look? Was it something I said? Please don't bite my head off. <laughs> Unless. <laughs> no, no. Gotta keep it together. Uh, um, she's in the staff room, ma'am. I was just there. I see. Naruhodo. <laughs> she just muttered something to herself, but uh, I didn't catch it. I'm leaving now. Thank you for the help. But what was that, ma'am? For the love of... Thank you very much for your help. It is appreciated. Desu? Ah, of course. Always happy to help. Please let me know if you need anything at all. It's the least we can do after the sponsorship. Oh, it's the filly roll. Ah. Of course. Of course it is. <laughs> Amazing. Whew. That was intense. <gasps> Luna needs to know. Babe, 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 guess who I just ran into at the con? A couple cosplaying as Chisataki that you're gonna send me pictures of? <laughs> LMAO no. Senpai chan! From Philly Roll! What? You mean her voice actor? No, like the actual person. What? <laughs> Sweetie, she's an anime girl with a company mascot. Yeah, but she's an actual person too. How does that work? I, I don't know, but I'm going with it. No idea, but she's really well COO and she is all business. I met her at the staff meeting on day zero for a few minutes, but seeing her walking among us, oh, among us, is crazy. Her face is plastered on all of the cons promo material. I can't take a single step without seeing her face on something. Just super surreal. Hasn't Philly been in some trouble lately though? Oh, is there a scandal? Oh, what, what, is, what is the scandal? Yeah, there's been some contro controversy lately over how much they pay their translators. Someone who used to work for them was on Spitter a few weeks ago talking about how translators only get like $100 per episode. <laughs> Lyra, yeah. That was the actual joke. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a funny joke, isn't it? It's so funny. Not, that wouldn't happen in real life, would it? Of course it wouldn't. <laughs> funny, funny joke. Uh, Anyway, that's so low. How does anyone, like, make a living? I think they just don't, lol. They're the biggest anime licensor and distributor in the country. you think they would be able to afford it. Yeah, it sucks, but I'm sure there's a lot more to it that we're just not privy to. My girlfriend, the optimist. I'm really not. For better or for worse, Philly Roll is our sponsor. I'm not even sure how this con would look without them. Probably even more chaotic. Ding. For now, though, I need to get Dandy. Ding! The fourth floor. 419. <gasps> What's the song? And judging from the pulsing music seeping from the walls, this year it's also the party floor. It always turns out this way. Whatever floor we stash the guests and industry people in is the floor that just turns into a non-stop rager. <laughs> and once the sun goes down, let's just say that nerds are like werewolves. Mild-mannered during the day, but capable of unspeakable acts of degeneracy and endurance when the moon is just right. Also, probably the alcohol. The things I've seen would make anyone shudder, and had I been sober, I'm sure I would have cried. Now, let's see where Dandy's room is. 
That's my party goer impression. I, I promise I can sing. <laughs> Sounds like 416 is having a good time. Oh, 419. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> Me too, honestly. I'm one of the things I like the most about conventions is like when it's a convention in a hotel or like with the accommodation nearby, I just like the room parties. I just like like the tiny tiny little rooms where it's just like a handful of people. It's not super crowded, but you're just having a having a little party having a good time that that's what i like <laughs> impromptu karaoke stream <laughs> not like that oh my goodness but hi jack welcome welcome i'm jealous that she got a room so close to the elevator it takes me three minutes of walking to get to mine oh yeah that happened at one convention i went to i went to a convention that was at like a university and so it was like the the uni accommodation for the dorms was like the accommodation for the convention and the one I got was like the furthest away from the actual convention spot and I had to walk so far every day that was not fun it was not a good time also uncle tim hello pink cat that's me and everything is pink at the moment welcome welcome well no sense delaying it time to give sleeping beauty a wake up call Miss Dandy, it's me, Stella, the guest coordinator. You're needed in the grand ballroom. No answer. Man, knocking on hotel room doors really is half the job. Miss Dandy. No. Whoa. The door opened. Did her girlfriend forget to close it on her way out? Uh-oh. Miss Dandy? Still no answer. I hate to invade a guest's privacy, but we're really running short on time here. Pardon me, but the door was open. I'm coming in, okay? Ugh, humid. That sounds like running water. Maybe she's in the, in the shower? I'm just gonna cover my face a little, poke my head in to check. M Miss Dandy? Psst. I'll just peek a little to make sure. Huh, it's empty. Maybe she turned on the shower and fell back asleep? I've done that before. Miss Dandy, are you still in bed? If you need a few more minutes to get ready, I can just wait out in the... <gasps> oh no. Miss... Dandy? My knees feel weak. I drop to the floor. Ah. Uh, uh. Blood. There's so much blood. It's Dandy. Her body lies crumpled on the floor, face down, ass up. Deep crimson leaks from her exposed skull, mixing with viscera and flesh. Oh my god. My voice goes hoarse. Any compulsion to scream for help is suffocated by the peeling dryness in my throat. The shower hisses as the world spins. Steam drifts into the hotel room. A pink wig has slipped halfway off her head offering a glimpse of her wavy brown hair. Her dress, similarly pink and accented with lavender, has sponged up so much of the blood, it streams down her pale face, drip by drip falls into the growing puddle around her. <laughs> Miss Tandy, are you okay? Stella! God, of course you are! Dead. A headlining cosplayer is undoubtedly dead. How does someone this young die? This doesn't look like an accident. Meat falls from her head and plonks onto the carpet. Oh, that's horrific. Thanks, Sion. I'm <laughs> I 
think there might have been foul play. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Panic sets in. My heart begins to rev like a car at the start of a race. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Teal Emil, hello! Thank you for the raid! Welcome in, raiders! Oh my goodness! Um, oh, what a time to raid! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness gracious me! Goodness gracious! Oh dearie, dearie! <laughs> hello, raiders! Welcome! How's it going? How was the stream? I hope you had a good stream. Uh, doing some art. I hope the art went well. Thank you. Thank you for the teal raid. Welcome in, raiders. To anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK. And I love comfy games and puzzle games and women. And it is Women Wednesday. And I refuse to accept loss in my chat. Uh, don't, don't you dare. Thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome on in. And King Burb, thank you for the follow. And Carrie and Finch, thank you. Thank you for the follows. Welcome. Stream good. See, uh, I might be at a serious moment of this game. Um, yes, uh, you joined at quite quite a moment. Um, I'm currently playing a bunch of Yuri visual novels that just got released the other day from Studio Elan, who are known for doing incredible Yuri visual novels. Uh, they just did an in-house game jam throughout September and released four new free-to-play games made by members of the team. And I'm I'm on the first game at the moment. I want to play all of them. <laughs> but uh, I'm currently playing a game called Yuri Paddle, an anime convention murder mystery. And um, darling Stella here is basically running the convention as an unpaid volunteer. And she just found the, um, the subject of the murder mystery. So, uh, welcome. Um, a body has been found. There will be a, a class, a class meeting soon. Gather the evidence. <laughs> it's incredible. It's so good. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm so ready to figure this out. I'm, I'm going to solve this mystery. I'm so ready. Hey, um, I warned you about loss. Don't don't do that. <laughs> if you do it again, you're getting a timeout. <laughs> I I was not kidding. How dare you? <laughs> but uh, I'm I am so so excited to figure out the mystery of this. <laughs> but thank you for bringing the raid this way. I hope the the art went well. And uh, if you have to go and look after yourself after your stream, get some rest, food, or drink. That is completely fine. But if you want to stick around for a bit, um, yeah, Stella's not having a good day. <laughs> She's having a bit of a time at the moment. But uh, if anyone wants to play these games as well, um, if you look at the, the pinned message in chat, there is a link to all four of the games that were made. And yeah, they're really good. They're free to play. Four full free games. And like, I'm I'm still on the first one, and I'm having a blast. This is so fun so far. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for the raid. Let's let's continue. Uh, what what do you do? Um, Stella, probably first call somebody. <laughs> Let somebody know, maybe. Kaylee! I need to tell Kaylee. Yes. Bzzzt. Kaylee, it's Stella. We have a situation. Are you using the, the walkie-talkie? Stella, are you using the walkie-talkie? She's not going to respond. Psh, yeah, she's she's probably not even got it with her. Stella, call her. Uh, text her. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. The trial doesn't start until three people spot the body. You're so right. It's time to gather the evidence. <laughs> it's okay. We've got to find out who did this. Oop, 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 oop. Static. You are the most useless event organizer in history! Who runs a con and doesn't use their walkie-talkie? Kaylee, you know this. You know Kaylee doesn't. Stella, please. Cell phone, cell phone, cell phone. Ring, ring, ring. She also said she's not going to pick up if you call her. Just send, send a message. Stella. It's okay. She's just seen a body. She's probably extremely frazzled. I'll forgive her for these silly moments. But also, Stella, please. 
Oh no, she did answer. Oh wow. Surprising. Hey babes. Did you take care of that thing? Get up to room 419. Eh, but one of my followers is bringing me boba. He's like such a simp. Now. Beep. I had to hang up. If I talked to her any longer, I would lose my cool more than I already have. Uh, why can't anything go right this weekend? Whew, what a time. What a time. Ah! What is Kaylee? How is she just going to be upset that like the star act is gone? Or is she going to be actually upset about a, a person being murdered? <laughs> oh, Akira, you just finished Witch You Want on the side. Oh, nice. Oh. Nice. I'm so excited to play it. <laughs> that's it. That's That's the exact noise. Oh, you'd bring me Boba? Oh, I would accept. <laughs> Kaylee. Ah! 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 I, I really need you to... Ah! Ah! Kaylee! Ah! Slap. Pull yourself together. I cover her mouth. <laughs> Stop. Are you trying to alert the whole floor? We're lucky the music in the other rooms is so loud. Oh, thank you, Snow Halation, for, <laughs> for drowning it out. Now, I'm going to take my hand off your mouth, and when I do, you promise not to scream? Okay. <gasps> oh, my God. What the frick happened? I, uh... I think it kind of speaks for itself, boss. Okay, but like, why? And like, who? And like, what? I don't know. I bet it was Senpai-chan. I bet Senpai-chan did this. That's, that's my current hunch. I, I bet Senpai-chan did this. <laughs> The door was open, so I just came in, and she was like this. Wait, wait, wait. The door was open? Yeah, no clue why. Probably because of whoever did this, I guess. Why? Ugh. Because it's scary. If there's some freaky killer going around, then I need someone to be with me, like, all the time. Fortunately for you, there's an army of orbiters at your beck and call that you can summon at any given time. This is, like, it's so unfair. I know. She was only a few years older than you. It's tragic. No! I mean, look at her cosplay. She's super pretty in it. Some people get all the luck. Oh, my... Yeah. 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 Well, she's super dead in it now. Who is she cosplaying anyway? Is that a Melanie cosplay? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, that's Melanie? Studio Elan's mascot? They make Yuri games? Oh, yeah. I played Please Be Happy with my girlfriend. She's pretty obsessed with that fox girl. What was her name again? Mimo? <laughs> <laughs> of course you did, babes. She's real. Whew. Huh. We need to call the police. What? Shh. If she gets any louder, I think Dandy here might wake up. <laughs> Why? Because someone's dead. Oh my god, Kaylee. <laughs> we can't just not report a murder, Kaylee. Oh, 
No, I made the ball pit joke earlier in the stream. No. No, I can't believe this. Oh no. Amazing. I can't believe an adult person would do that in the ball pit, and I equally can't believe another eight adult people would slip on it and break something. It was a bloodbath. Since when have you been concerned about money? You were just telling me that you didn't care about that stuff at all because that's what sponsors are for. Even Philly has its limits, Stelbell. I'm going to gag. Only my girlfriend and mommy have ever called me that. And my mother. <laughs> And my mother called me that a few times growing up too. Oh no. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Senpai would never ever accept it. They'll they totally pull out of next year. I wouldn't be able to salary anyone. Including you. No no salary? Or health insurance, and I wanted you guys to have dental too. You you did? That would be so nice. I've never had insurance that covered dental before. Maybe I could finally get braces. But I guess that's all off the table now, huh? Kaylee is so manipulative. Kaylee is so manipulative. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, did she say only my girlfriend and mommy and mother? Yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. I, yeah. <laughs> Stella, please leave. Please, Stella, this is not worth it. I feel so bad for her. Kaylee's just saying exactly what she wants to hear, but she's hearing it and... Ugh. Stella, please. <laughs> we don't really have a choice here. What are we going to do? Just leave her here? No, we can't. Just until the con ends tomorrow. Then what? We call up the hotel and go, Will Mr. Manager, our guest hasn't been seen in forever. Please help. Then bam! They deal with her. Con's over. Didn't happen on our watch. On top of quite possibly being the most immoral thing I've ever heard, it would never work. Her girlfriend, for one. Nothing is stopping her from coming up here and bearing witness to her partner's rotting corpse. We'll get her a new room. We can't just not tell her. And why not? Because if I was brutally murdered, I'd want my girlfriend to know. Yeah, but you're like single. Oh my god, Kaylee. Uh, I'm not backing down on this, Kaylee. You tell her then. Who? The girlfriend! God, keep up! I would feel a lot better if we told her, but... We... we can't just sweep this under the rug. Babes, I'm not saying we do that, like, at all! Just that we wait a little. We have a chance to really build a life for ourselves, sis! Doing something we're actually good at! And I don't know about you, but all this, this con stuff, it's the only thing I've ever been good at. I stream a lot, but even that's really mid. Kaylee looks like she's about to cry. I've never seen her get so close before. It makes me feel awful for all of us. For Kaylee, because she's just a dumb kid trying her best and sucking at it. For all of us staff who are just trying to hold this jalopy together. For Dandy, because she's dead, that's probably not very fun. <laughs> huh. Oh, I'm going to regret this. I'm really going to regret this. You don't mean... Don't. Don't say it. I might change my mind if you do. Just let me handle the logistics of this, I guess. I'll let the girlfriend know and try to get some of this all sorted. Maybe I can get an idea of how this happened, too. If the person who did this is attending the con, then we have a real problem on our hands. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, I know. 
Same old story, just new set dressing. Come here, you. Squeezing too tight. I knew I could count on my big sis. <sighs> this is the last time I'm doing anything like this, Kaylee. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean it, you owe me for this. Of course, babes, we'll do like KBBQ sometime. It'll be so much fun. Ugh. I don't think she'll ever fully internalize just how much I stick my neck out for her. Well, I'll leave it to you then. I know it's super hard work, but I totally trust you. You know how to reach me if you need anything. Walkie talkie. Gross. Sell. Duh. Oh, how silly of me to assume anything otherwise. Good luck and have fun, you two. Make sure to keep each other company. What the hell? Kaylee. Not funny. Sure it? Sure it is. Bye. Wow. Okay. Whew. My eyes drift over to Dandy's stiff corpse, toppled over in permanent indignity. I didn't really know her, per se, but I sure knew of her. It was never uncommon for clips of her on or posts she made to make the rounds on social media. She wasn't just well-known among cosplayers, but among fans and industry folks, too. I must have been to a dozen cons over the last few years where I saw her in passing, working the booths for companies like Nice Smile and Kimochi, all dressed up as whoever was the seasonal waifu at the time. I love the Nice Smile company. I, I love their um, Rendonoid series. She always seemed so graceful, so peppy. How can a light like that be snuffed out? It's so young too. Young enough to not have even reached the prime of her life yet. Her jaw hangs open. Her head is split open. All in some glittery pastel cosplay. It feels like such a mockery of what drew people to her, of her whole existence. It's unjust and it's cruel. And the fact such brazen cruelty happened here, where people should be celebrating their hobbies and the friends they've made through them, makes me sick to my stomach. Something really bad just happened. Are you safe? Yeah, I am, but one of the con's guests was just unalived. The fuck? Who was it? What happened? Cosplayer, Dandelion P. Looking at the body right now, pretty sure foul play was involved. No way. Babe, this con is cursed. <laughs> I'm really worried. Please call me. I can't right now, but I'll text you soon. I have to figure some things out. Okay. All right. Let's give it a little cheeky save. It's time to... Ooh. <gasps> okay. Let's examine the table. Well, hello there. Little plus, she's adorable. She's a cute little fox girl. <gasps> I think her name is Miho. She's from a visual no novel called Please Be Happy. I played it with my girlfriend. Never heard of that before, but it sounds like a great game. Maybe, maybe everyone should play it. And <laughs> also, Princess Bliss, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome on in. Welcome to Murder Mystery Times. Huh? She's kind of puntable. No. Don't pump the Mimo! <laughs> like, she's cute, but for some reason I want to take out all my aggression on her. No! No! Don't pump the Mimo! <laughs> what kind of dark magic is this? I won't, though. This plushie is heavier than I would have guessed. It might hurt my toes. <gasps> I got a Mimo! <laughs> I got a Miho plushie. Nice! Oh, that's... Wait, can I... I'm j oh... I'm just gonna show everyone this plushie. I'm this is this is gonna be like my, my Phoenix Wright badge. My Phoenix Wright lawyer badge moment. I'm just gonna show Miho to everybody. <laughs> oh, I love this. But oh hi, I heard I was playing Yuri games, so you're here. Oh yes! It's Women Wednesday, I am indeed. I'm planning on playing four of them. I might not get all of them done today because um I I'm very good at getting distracted while I'm playing visual novels and they take me a long time. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how far I get. 
but welcome and termite wood nom nom thank you for pouring dice on my head wait let me let me roll a d20 quickly let's let's see what the the luck is for today all right d20 roll that's a 12 that's decent that's decent i'll take a 12 it's it's not a crit it's not a crit fail at least it's not a one but thank you for the dice and welcome welcome Thought my con badge would be the Phoenix Wright badge. <laughs> no, no, I it's just like something I would always do in Phoenix Wright games is just show random people my my attorney's badge and they'd just be like, why are you showing me this? And I just found it so funny because I have no sense of humor. So I do it for everybody in the game. <laughs> be like the last case. And I'm like, hey, look at my badge. So I'm going to do that with Miho. Everyone needs to see the Miho plushie. Right, let's have a look around again. There was something on the floor as well. Oh, oh, do I want to check the kitchen? A con badge. We hand these out to people who are attending the convention. This has Dandy's name on it, so it must have been hers. Regular attendees, industry guests and staff all have to go to badge pickup and wear them throughout the whole event. Not that staff actually checks very often because they are understaffed. Truthfully, I probably wouldn't think twice if I saw someone not wearing a badge. Hmm. I should probably be more observant. No, just leave it. It's fine. Let people lose a con. <laughs> the con badge. Oh, with the, the please be happy ribbon. Oh, I love it. Look at that. What a lovely badge. I love the color scheme too. It doesn't remind me of anything. <laughs> Right, um, I'm against better judgment. Let's look in the fridge. What's this? It's kind of hidden. No freaking way. It can't be. A Yuri pad? <laughs> oh my goodness. I haven't seen one of these things in years. These used to be everywhere at conventions, always with something written on them, usually Yaoi or Yuri. 15 years ago, these things were inescapable. Tell me about it. <laughs> Nowadays, they're pretty much banned at every con. Too many people were getting swatted with them as a prank. Yeah, that was the main problem, like, back in the day. Back in, like, the heyday of the, the Yaoi and Yuri paddles being around, people would just hit random strangers with them. And, like, that that's assault. <laughs> that's just assault. That is That is not okay. And people, for some reason would think it was okay and i it still kind of baffles me honestly that people would be okay with that but like everyone would just be like well it's just a it's just a yaoi paddle it's fine you you have to ask people if you're going to hit them like physically hit them with a wooden object like <laughs> how is that hard to grasp it was also the heyday of um i'm gonna really age myself here anyone know about glomps Anyone heard of glomps? If you don't know what a glomp is, um, you're lucky. Uh, but basically, everyone would just be like running tackle hug people and go a glomp, glomps you. And that would also happen to strangers. That would also be a thing that strangers would do. They would just like run and dive at you without like even asking first. I'm very glad that the glomp days are over. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe you said glomping as well, right? As I started to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that's something I'm I'm very happy as uh, firmly in the past. <laughs> I myself may have gotten swatted a few times. They were causing severe injuries, though. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The occasional love pat never bothered me, but uh, it's probably better this way. I should probably take a closer look at it when I have the time. Oh, I guess I should. It's got blood on it. Yeah. <laughs> Just picking up this this wooden paddle covered in blood. I should probably have a closer look at that at some point, maybe. Okay, but before I do the floor. Man, this is not getting any easier to look at. I'm lucky I haven't eaten in two days, or I really might have puked my guts out. No, you gotta eat, Stella. No. Still, for a room that a couple was staying in, 
so much of it just feels off. It's probably worth taking a picture with my phone as a reference point. Just in case, it might be useful. All right, we got the photo. I think that's all I'll be able to find here. Time to break the bad news. All right, before I do, I want to... Miho, it's Miho! Yeah! An Onkai Com badge! Photo of the body. And a Yuri paddle covered in blood. Yeah, that might be the murder weapon, maybe. Ah, oh, just reminded you of a clip you saw of a pair of Demon Slayer cosplayers where one was going to hug the other, but he literally fell face first on the floor while she ran away. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's, it's certainly one way to go, yeah. Okay, time to break the bad news. Hey, I'm back. You good? Yeah, I guess. I'm about to tell Dandy's girlfriend what happened. Oof. Yeah, big oof. This sucks so hard. Why does it have to be you? You have like a million other things to do already. Rest of the con should be cancelled to be honest. I'm the guest coordinator. Dandy was a guest and her girlfriend technically is too. That's dumb. It's my job. Whatever. Yeah, this isn't your job, Stella, but... Yeah. I love you, I'm just scared. Be careful, baby. Um... This thing is broken? Excuse me, this microphone is broken? What a clown show. None of these serfs want to work anymore. What the heck? Excuse me? Hello? Oh, I gotta head to work, but hope I have a Yuri for Wednesday. Thank you. I definitely am. But I hope your work goes well. Thank you so much for the raid again. I hope work is kind to you today. I said the microphone is broken. Ah. Sounds like it's working to me, judging from that speed of feedback. It was turned off. Oh, thank you, Michael the tech guy. <laughs> Why? I thought this was a sound check. It doesn't make sense to have a microphone off for sound check. That's pretty illogical. Listen, we already checked it earlier. Doesn't need to be on. Whoa, someone's getting emotional. Did I hurt your widow snowflake feelings? You can keep living in your fantasy delusions, but the facts are facts, and the fact is... This is a sound check. <sighs> Enjoy this creation, this character. The only thing I've seen about this game is a post that Scion made saying, this is the most infuriating character I've ever written. And uh, we've already experienced Kaylee. So I'm uh, so excited. Excited for this. Hey Michael, how are things down here? Remember that pact we made? Yeah? Let's do it. There's life after Onkai, Michael. If this is what life has to offer, I don't want there to be. Oh my god! <laughs> Morale continues to be high, I see. That the person hosting the Yuri panel tonight? One of them. Did you know her handle is Femcell Fury? <laughs> oh dear. Please be joking. Does she even qualify as a Femcell? She has a girlfriend. She's one in spirit, trust me. <laughs> oh my god. Hope the other one's more normal. She hasn't shown up yet about that. Ah, uh, well, you see, she's not coming. A word? I get it. If that was my girlfriend, I'd abandon ship too. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh, Christ. Something else blew up, didn't it? Love all the pink in this game. Oh, me too. I love the, the aesthetic of it so much. It's so cool. Um, take a little break. Can it be a long one? Yes. Okay, 
I'll be getting fucked up in the atrium if you need me. All right, yeah, get out of here, Michael. You don't, you don't want to be here for this. Godspeed. Guess I should break the bad news. Oh boy. <laughs> Absurd. They call this a tech them. A bunch of glowing-eyed Zoomer NPCs were a country of serfs. Um, hello. What? Yeesh. She's not happy now. It's probably not going to get much better when I inform her that her girlfriend is dead. My name is Stella. I'm the guest coordinator here at Onkai Expo. Why... Why is she looking at me so closely? Jesus Christ. Is, is something wrong? Bleak. Real bleak. I'm sorry? Yes, you should be. I want to call her the fun word. <laughs> The one Australians like to use. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you need something or can I go back to setting up? I have a panel to run and my co-panelist is running late. Co-panelist? You mean your girlfriend? Actually, God, I really don't want to do this. Even if she is an Australian fun word, this is no doubt going to hurt. It might go down as the worst day of her life, even. Oh, Addy, going to sleep. Thank you. I will have fun. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm excited to play them all. I hope you rest well. Thank you for stopping in. Yeah, the, the, the see you next Tuesday, you know. <laughs> actually, actually, actually. Brain dead much? But sometimes these things just got to be done. Your girlfriend's fucking dead, Bozo. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. Amazing. Ah. That came out so much worse than I thought it would. <laughs> What? Delaney is... she's dead? Oh man, not the real name, not the watery eyes, now I feel even worse. <laughs> That's one way to deliver the news, it sure is. Yeah, heard that see you next Tuesday was code for that, but didn't understand how for ages. Yeah, it's just like the, the see you, and then the first initials, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, there's been an incident. Do-over. I want a do-over. And it has resulted in your partner becoming deceased. Oh, she's not doing this well. She clasps her hands over her mouth. But I just saw her a few hours ago. How? The image of head meat sliding to the carpet crosses my mind. We have a suspicion it might have been murdered. She hangs her head. Hair drapes over her eyes. Something inside her just went very, very dark. I'm sorry. I guess. I guess that's that then. Hmm? She lifts her head back up and shrugs. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, and Dell loved stupid games. What? She just had to go and make the panel harder for me. Figures. What? I don't think she could really control the murder forecast, man. Still let it happen. Did she ever put any thought into how I would feel about it? No, it's always about Dandelion Pete. What? Yes, it's just typical behavior for an attention whoring, selfish thought. What? Excuse me? Okay, yeah, Scion was right. <laughs> that was your girlfriend, though. Aren't you, I don't know, upset? Oh, get over yourself. I read your virtue signal loud and clear. I actually felt bad for you, lady. You were going to get my sympathy. I was gonna be all like, it's okay to cry, ma'am. 
and you were gonna be like, oh, Miss Guest Courtney to Stella. And I was gonna let you cry in my lap and feel real good about myself. None of that's happening now, though. You better believe it. Cope. Screw you, man. See. God almighty, you took the wrong panelist. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to finish setting up for my panel. Huh? But, but your co-panelist is dead. You're not actually going to go through with it, are you? Uh, yeah. A whole audience of serfs are going to be in the audience. Uh, they need to be taught. Unless you have anything else you like to screech into the void about. Every word she utters is like a siren song enticing me to commit a second murder at this convention today. <laughs> and yet, I press on. As a matter of fact, I'm conducting our internal investigation regarding the incident. I have a few questions. Eh, gross. Make it quick. Alright, uh... Say. Why are you called Femcell Theory, anyway? It's a terrible username. So I have a question, but I don't want you to get mad at me. Those are the words of someone about to ask a dumb question worth getting angry over. Well, I don't think it's dumb. In fact, I think most people would wonder it about you. But why call yourself Femcell Theory? Is there a problem with it? I think most people who spend a decent amount of time online would find it. Kind of incendiary? Call it whatever you want. The fact is, it's evocative. That's one word for it. But aren't incels people who don't get laid and make it other people's problem? Why evoke that? Why would you want to be known as the feminine form of that? Excuse me, are you questioning my lived experience? What? I would never. It's just, it doesn't really apply to you. You had a girlfriend. That's pretty much the opposite of being a femcel. You fool. You buffoon. You drooling NPC. This thing that afflicts me, my femceldom, is a state of mind. I'm sorry. How dare you? I said I'm sorry. I'll have you know that I am based. Based on what? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll have you know that I am blackpilled. And I'll have you know that I am woefully, woefully, involuntarily celibate. Okay, okay, I believe you. You 100... Okay, you 100% without a shadow of a doubt do not fuck. <laughs> but not of my own accord. Of course. That's the important part. It is involuntary after all. Exactly. It's not that I'm unwilling to sleep with anyone, it's that everyone else is unwilling to sleep with me. Can't imagine why. True mystery. No idea. I believe you. You better. You don't seem very okay with that. Sh shut up, I am. I've never met someone so ideologically committed to their lack of game. Whatever, whatever helps pay the bills, right? My audience finds me relatable and my content vital, thank you. I'm sure you're telling the truth about that first part, but I have no clue what your content even is, frankly. I heard about you for the first time today. The fem cells draw job. Did, what? Did, did I just say job, really? Really? I'm, I'm on the first game, I can't be like this already. <laughs> Her jaw drops. <laughs> no jopping here. You must be mistaken. I'm a video essayist. I'm sure my most popular video has shown up on your feed at least once. What's your most popular video? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the monster. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I need more brain cells, please. Please, everything is so awful here. My brain is turning to jopping as a, a form of making, like soothing my brain to make it through this nightmare. Just just humming in my head like, oh, you think you're pretty boy, throw three stacks. I'm gonna show you how to ball your mismatch. I can get through this. Throw back, I might throw this on an eight track. 
<laughs> Joping, wait. I... <laughs> Joping to cope. Joping. Oh, that's. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is getting. Oh, I, I need to play. I need to play the game. What's your most popular video? The anti monarchist propaganda of One Piece. Last year it cracked 250 views and it's well on its way to do 251. It sounds like something that would be fed to me after I leave autoplay on for too long. <laughs> so you get in front of a microphone and rant about anime? I don't rant, I give my perspective. You see the otaku sphere has been too corrupted by Hobbesian remonstr rem remonstrance such as yourself. What does that even mean? Me? What did I do? Everything. You imbued the anime supply with your Protestant brain rod. It's people like you that demand everything aligned with your values of representation and republicanism. Whoa, back up. What do you mean? What's wrong with representation? Taxation should happen without it. What else could I possibly mean? She doesn't know what any of these words mean, do she? Does she? She... I, I'm convinced she doesn't actually understand any of the words she's saying. She just knows they are long words. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, it's back that representation. <laughs> to her credit, that's not the representation I thought she meant, but now her ranting is even more incomprehensible than if it had been. The siren song of Jeffersonian individualism has rung for far too long in the otaku sphere. It's up to me to fight for traditional values. Oh god, maybe she is as bad as I thought. Yeah, I think she is. Like monarchism. And no one lost again. Through my video essays, anime video essays. Through my anime video essays, I will see to it that the divine rights of kings are respected. Why be a domesticated liberal subject ruled by complacency when we could be domesticated royal subjects ruled by fear? Reject democracy, embrace serfdom. I don't even want to show her the Miho plushie anymore. I just want to leave. I just want to go. Holy shit. I was just placating her before, but now I really do believe it. She's never been laid in her life. <laughs> that is all extremely compelling. In a messed up anthropological kind of way. But how does a neo-feudalist never call me that again? Lady, what even are your politics? How does someone like you end up with someone like Dandy? Despite existing within the same sphere, I feel like the two of you occupied very different worlds. Are you saying a base tradcath femcel can't date a disgusting degenerate timeline thought? That's very judgmental of you. No judgment, just confusion. Wiz, hello! What game is this? Hi, I'm playing a game at the moment called Yuri Paddle, an anime convention murder mystery. It's a, a new game that came out uh, a few days ago, made by Studio Elan, who make a bunch of Yuri visual novels. Uh, they released four visual novels that they completed in the month of September in an in-house game jam. And um, the, the I've sure picked one to start with. <laughs> this sure was one to start off with. Oh my goodness, this is a wild ride already. I'm... Wow. It's, um... It's interesting. No judgment. A little judgment. I'm just curious how it happened. Did you not hear me? She was a harlot. She was plastered all over my feed. When I finally went to her profile to block her, I saw the links to her various sites. I was very impressed by her commitment to the traditional female form. Underneath the, all the makeup and wigs was a woman I could see myself settling in Utah with. Why, why Utah? It wasn't long after that I became her biggest benefactor. Then when she finally took notice of me, the regent of her heart. That's what I believed anyway. Love can never be that simple. Which is why when I become nobility, I am going to humbly request the king to sign me a girlfriend instead. 
Sounds like a classic romance story. Wax sarcastically all you want. There was a time when we were two halves of one whole where we completed each other. Not anymore, though? Of course not. She's dead now, after all. As someone studying politics found it intriguing. Oh, well, um, this, this woman is um, unbearable. She's, she's saying such awful stuff. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, it's a murder mystery game. Uh, basically, Stella is working as an unpaid volunteer at this anime convention. Um, the convention organizer is not organizing anything. She's just having a happy time and making everyone else do the work. One of the main guests has been found murdered in her hotel room. And now I'm trying to find out who did it and figure out what's going on. But also, this is the murder victim's girlfriend. And... I never want to talk to her again. <laughs> of course not. She's dead now, after all. Sounds like there's more to it. A lot more. But at this point, I doubt she'll tell me about uh, about it, unless I can do something that really shakes her up. Okay, what were you and Dandy doing this morning? You mentioned that you saw Dandy this morning. Can you tell me a little about that? Not much to tell. I left before her, we didn't speak. Huh? Not at all? Not even a goodbye kiss? I never leave the house without kissing Luna. She was sleeping in, so I decided not to wake her up. Didn't want to debate anymore. Wanted to spare myself the endless headache of her yapping. If only all of us could be so lucky. <laughs> There's a couple things about what she said that make me raise an eyebrow, though. Why such a callous reaction? Weren't you dating? So I have to know, why such a cold reaction to your girlfriend dying violently before her time? I have a girlfriend, and if she were killed, I don't think I'd ever recovered. I'd sob myself to sleep for the rest of my life. Like you have a girlfriend. What's that supposed to mean? Bags under eyes, shitty posture, dresses like a toddler. I know you, I've known you a thousand lifetimes. Rude. These bags are conditional. My posture is adequate. Luna picks out my clothes every day. I really don't appreciate what you're trying to imply here. I'll have you know I'm happily seeing someone. She's incredible and I love her dearly. Just look at my phone. Hmm. Sorry, champ. That looks like AI to me. Sad. Oh my god. <laughs> She's not AI. She's real. She's real. Why does everyone keep saying that? Why are you so mad? All that's left in the world is Stacy's and Bimbo's, and they only want Chad's and the other Stacy's. They don't want you. Even when they say you're nice and treat you great, you can look smacks and mew all you want. I hate having to say this. I hate that I'm having to say this. Why, why is Sion not here? I need to scream at him. Like, I'm, what are you making me do right now? <laughs> Shit, maybe they'll even date you out of pity for a while. But we're just too corrupted by this modern world that puts strumpets on a pedestal. Even if you're the perfect trad wife and always cook and do the laundry for them, they'll still sense that you're not a high-value female. They can smell it. We've been failed. It was never like this under monarchism. We need to return. Return! Oh, that was certainly revealing, dear lord. That's pretty cynical rhetoric for someone in a relationship to say. You two were dating for a while, right? Six months. So it was starting to get serious then. Yeah, seriously annoying. Turns out all the cringe beta orbiters don't like it when their precious fat beat starts dating a strong opinionated woman. Unfortunately, that's nothing uncommon. Idol streamers and content creators of all types have always dealt with fans getting jealous when they start dating someone. Comes with the territory. But considering how incendiary femcell theory is, can't help but wonder if there's more to it. Are you sure that's all it was? Is that too hard for you to understand? Is there soy where your brain should be too? There, right there. You even said it yourself. You're opinionated. Del was a goody-goody. Always had to be on the right side of everything. Constantly making annoying posts about the current thing and virtue signaling. It was all part of the little brand she had built for herself. 
At some point, she started leaking things about what voice actors and other people in the industry were doing. What do you mean? What kind of things? The kind of scandal that comes for everyone with power. Creepy things they've been doing with fans, abuses of power, that sort of thing. Dell had a lot of contacts, knew a lot of people. Pair that with her desperate need for attention, and she was compelled to write these long, sobby documents about what she knew. That's when she blew up and people really started noticing her. I... I didn't know that. Of course I knew about the various industry scandals of the last few years, but I had no idea Dandy was at the center of so many of them. Well, her legions of degenerates did. They didn't like that their precious social justice angel was dating someone who didn't care about indulging all this holier-than-thou shit. They hated the fact that I have opinions about the way the world should be. You've always seen this kind of thing with outspoken women. You know what? I'm with Dandy's fans. I wouldn't be too happy if someone I looked up to for doing a lot of good things started dating the most obnoxious person alive. Alright, so you say you were sleeping in. Oh, that she was sleeping in, even. Why was Dandy sleeping in when she knew that the two of you had a big panel today? Hey, before I continue, I want to see, like, while I'm in dialogue with her... Okay, no, I can't just show her Miho at any point. I'm gonna have to wait for the right moments. Okay, I just wanted to check. <laughs> Why was Dandy sleeping in when she knew that the two of you had a big panel today? Whenever I have something big to do, the next day I always tuck in early. Actually, I tend to go to bed pretty early most days. I'm a little old lady. Not these last few days, though. I don't even remember if I have slept. Probably because she didn't come back to the hotel room until 3 a.m. like a child. Good decision-making skills never come easy to her type, you know. You need to be the adult for them. 3 a.m.? What could she possibly have been doing at 3 a.m.? What do you think cosplay deviants like her do at 3 a.m. at conventions? Room parties? That's my guess, anyway. Were you not with her? Of course not. Unlike her, I actually treat my body like a temple. Not some cheap casino buffet. Whoa, what a thing to call your girlfriend. To me, Luna is equivalent to the finest, most succulent dining. <laughs> like all of God. <laughs> okay. She's the breadstick to my Alfredo sauce. Wherever she went off to, it sounds like you had a problem with it. We had differing opinions. I felt one way, she felt another. So, the two of you argued last night? Don't be stupid. Adults disagree all the time. It's called debate. There's another D word that could be applied to this too. Denial. Alright, debate. I'll bite. So, the two of you were... debating then. Is that right? Yes. Do you have a problem with intellectual conversation? My only problem with it is that I haven't had any whatsoever today. <laughs> well, it just sees, seems like that could have easily gotten heated depending on what you were arguing about. Sorry, debating. Debating. We were debating. Right, humblest apologies. I want her face to debate with my face. <laughs> Was it emotionally... Was it an emotionally charged debate? Was it spirited? Did the debate gods energize you with divinely inspired facts and logic? Did you win? As a matter of fact, it was and I did. I've won every debate of ours. I keep score. What does it say about you when someone's facetious snarking turns out to be true? So, you've been debating a lot lately, then. A healthy amount, perhaps was a pastime of ours. How intense did last night get? I hope things stayed civil. Oh, I assure you, I'm always a rational actor. Del, on the other hand. Let's just say she often lets her feelings override the facts. Oh yes, you strike me as a truly wise philosopher queen. There isn't a reactionary bone in your body. I can't believe someone can have no redeeming qualities at all. <laughs> okay, you can. Yeah, I, I thought Sion was exaggerating when he said it was the most obnoxious character he's ever written. 
I'm so sorry to have doubted that. I'm, I should not have doubted that. <laughs> Thanks, Sion. It's great. I'm, I'm loving this. I'm, I'm having a great time. I love this conversation. Can you tell me a little about the feelings that were being felt last night, if you don't mind? I do mind, actually. It's private. A secret between lovers? Something like that. Of course, you'd never understand that. You've probably never even been hugged before. Ma'am, I'll have you know my girlfriend hugs me all the time. Your AI waifu will never be real, no matter how hard you try to manifest her as a tulpa. What did I do to deserve this slander? Sounds like she's done elaborating on this, though. Guess I'll need to figure something else out to shake more info out of her. Bzz, bzz. Oh, excuse me. Text from my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, go talk to your robot. Hey, baby, everything okay? Talking to Dandy's girlfriend right now. She's kind of insane. Good insane or bad insane? Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> I get weird vibes from her. I've asked her a lot of questions, but I can tell she's hiding things. I can't believe she's making your life harder than it already is. Doesn't she know what you've been through? Why you've been through? <laughs> I doubt it, and... If she did know, I doubt she'd even care. I wish there was a way I could get her to tell me more. Is there anything else you've discovered so far? Maybe there's something you can show her that might bait her into talking more. It's Miho time. Hmm. Femcell Theory does like talking. It's true. But is there anything else I've gathered so far that I could present to her? That's the real question. Oh yeah, I'm saving. I save. <laughs> Like, it's obviously gonna be the paddle that I have to show her. But it's Miho. It's Miho. So, the plushy fox girl. It, it's Mimo. Mimo? I thought her name was Miho. You fool. Embackle. Moronic Seth. Miho is Miho, but Mimo. Mimo is Mimo. So it's not a plushie of the character from the visual novel, Please Be Happy? Are you daft? Of course it is. But, but you just said this isn't Miho. Because that's Mimo. I... I'm so confused. Whatever, this is just going in circles. Never mind, that's not important. Does this toy belong to you? I don't know when, but Fensel got real sweaty at some point. Maybe that's just how she always is. This might just be how all the rage escapes her body. It's not mine. But we found it in your hotel room. Because it was Dell's! Use your brain! Mimo goes with her everywhere. She sees all things. <gasps> your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the plushie. <laughs> The all-seeing Mimo, huh? Believe it, this funky little fox is always watching. Taking notes, gathering precious information. You better be careful what you do in front of her, she'll know. That makes her sound like some sort of ancient powerful deity. Beware the judging eyes of Mimo. Well, she is. It's true. Uh, let's do the badge. Do you think you could help me figure something out? Because you lack critical thinking skills? That's not true, I think critically of you. <laughs> no, because I'm genuinely confused about Dandy's badge. See, she was a guest set to host a panel, so she should have a guest badge. But instead she had an industry badge. See? Are you so intent on gatekeeping? What? No, I'm just... You should be. The serfs need to be kept at bay. They've ruined this industry with their protestant decay for too long. I'll keep that in mind, but that still doesn't explain why she had an industry badge instead of a guest badge. Is a cosplayer not considered industry? Well, I suppose it is. Yes, well, there are certain places an industry badge can get you into that a guest badge simply cannot. Truly, you are the world's most incompetent guest coordinator. Kid, if you knew half the shit I had to put up with, you'd realize I'm the world's best guest coordinator. 
I guess that's true, though. You need to prove your industry in order to get into certain mixes and parties. Disgusting. Oh, come on. You cannot stand there and tell me you are revolted by the idea of people having a good time. I can and I am. Are you even aware of the dark satanic cabals lurking behind the scenes of this industry? Oh, no. 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 Conventions are the perfect opportunity for them to act on their hedonism behind the closed doors of a supposed boom party. That's what everyone thinks. They expect every party to devolve into some kind of raging orgy. But the truth is, you're more likely to end up sipping on a warm beer while watching a Dante cosplayer suck really hard at Arena Ultimax on the hotel TV. Maybe the furries are hosting a cuddle puddle in the corner if it's a real crazy night. Tay, hello! Yes, I'm playing Yuri Paddle. Welcome! Welcome, welcome. I'm still on the first game. I keep getting distracted. Also, I hate her. This, this woman is terrible. Welcome! <laughs> welcome on in. How's it going? Happy Women Wednesday. Okay. Um, this is probably mean. Let's show her the body. So, I know this is a little rude, but I took a picture of your girlfriend's dead body. You what? Oh, I did it, did it again. My mouth just loves the taste of my foot too much. It, it was the justice. Look, gaze upon your dead girlfriend. Ah, uh, you know, considering the nature of your relationship, I guess you could say gaze upon your dead girlfriend. <laughs> Stella, please stop. Stella. She leans into my phone and clinically inspects the picture. My girlfriend is missing part of her head and you're making puns? Oh no, I suddenly feel ashamed. I'll be thinking about this while staring at my ceiling in bed for years to come. <clears throat> Right, and now, this is what I need to actually show her. That's why I did everything else first. What the... What's that doing here? That's a... Oh, the paddle? It was found near Dandy's body. It, uh, it still has some blood on it. Sorry. It's, it's not like I care. She glances away from it, but her eyes still drifting back to the dried blood crusting on the edge of the paddle. I'm just shocked to see one at a convention is all. Paddles like that are usually banned at cons, in case you didn't know. That's what threw me off too. My guess is that somebody brought it from outside the convention. Maybe with the intention of using it as a weapon? I can't even begin to fathom that level of gruesomeness. How idiotic. Hmm? What do you mean? There are far more efficient ways to murder someone than a thin wooden paddle. People tend to use objects for their intended purpose, you know. The intended purpose of being swatted on the ass? I guess that is something some people enjoy. Yes, it's a prop to their degeneracy. Between all the questions and the evidence, we've gone over so much. There's a lot I still don't know, but I feel like I'm starting to get a good grasp on what may have happened in that hotel room. Really, I don't. <laughs> I think I've answered enough questions at this point, don't you? I suppose, but... You suppose what? What could volunteer con staff do at a time like this? You aren't the authority, so really your obligation here is done. This is as open and shut as something like this can be for you. You're an NPC, yes? How about you continue about your day in the pre-programmed pattern you've been assigned? Maybe she's right. Even Luna says I've already gone above and beyond for this con. But Kaylee wanted so badly for me to take care of things. No, Stella! No. Yes, that didn't necessarily mean solve a murder, but I feel obligated now. If not for the purpose of keeping our insurance down so that we can all get salaried, then at least for poor Dandy. Yeah, just as for Dandy... Dandelion. But... But... Yes, all the pieces are here. If you don't mind, I'd like to go over everything one more time. If I can just put them all together, I can solve this. I don't know what you're trying to prove here, sir. Please, I think I'm on the brink of knowing what happened. You can't possibly know the things that occurred in that hotel room. Do you understand me, you soy-facing boomer? 
Why are you another one of her posturing simps? Why are you so against this? Don't you want Dandy to have justice? Doesn't that matter to you at all? Fine. But I'm done after this. Do you understand me? That's completely understandable. It better be. Now, if you don't mind, could you start with how you and Dandy started dating? This better be good. I am a video essayist who created much-needed analysis regarding the degenerate and anti-monarchist trash that has seeped into our precious anime. Delaney was a cosplayer who often posted content of her dressed up as characters from said anime. Her work was plastered all over my timeline. I was quite intrigued by her commitment to traditional beauty standards. She looked like a queen. I became her biggest benefactor, spending copious amounts of dollars on her. It wasn't long after that we began dating. It's not a normal love story by traditional standards, but I guess a lot of people meet online nowadays. Still, some of what she's saying doesn't make sense with the context I have right now. It's like she's burying the lead, but on which topic? Hmm. Hmm, her name was Delaney? Was she always going by that name? I don't know what I should ask here. What's, what's, like, you are a benefactor? That, that just feels like it makes sense. Yeah, just like spend a lot of money, whatever. But her name was Delaney? That's pretty suspicious. What is? Well, her name was Delaney, yet she went by Dandy. Pretty curious if you ask me. No, that's not suspicious. That's not really suspicious, saying it like that. You realize she was a cosplayer, yes? Cosplayers and content creators of all types have handles and screen names. Do you think my real name is Fencel Theory? But wait, seriously? Oh, so <laughs> That's crazy. She seems like the type who would have changed it to her screen name at one point. What's your real name, then? It's Matilda, you pleb. So, Matilda and Dandelion. <laughs> Your ship name could have been Matilda Lion. That's so cute. Aren't you embarrassed? Huh? Of what? For distracting yourself through your own questioning tedium. You have the brain rotted attention span of someone half your age. Ouch. I guess asking about her name really isn't that important at the end of the day, but I was curious. No, see, I was just curious because it was like... Did she meet her as Delaney? Like... Wouldn't she say, like, I met Dandelion and then realized her name was Delaney afterwards, but then I realize now it's just, it's, it's fine. So you were her benefactor, but didn't you, like, disagree with everything she was saying? Why would you give her money? Why, why did you become her benefactor? So when you say you were Dandy's biggest benefactor, what exactly does that mean? I gave her money for her content, of course. In the same way a king would give a stipend to a promising artist. It's quite a classical approach. I thought she was just a cosplayer, though. What was she doing that made you want to give her money? The pictures were already all over your timeline. Just additional content. Oh. Oh. I think I get it. Is that really it? Some more pictures you wouldn't have had access to otherwise? Why is this so hard for you to believe? Well, usually when people pay for things like that online, it's because they're getting content out of it that's a little more... risque. That's exactly it, isn't it? I don't appreciate this implication. You're the one that's been calling everything degenerate. I am merely giving my opinion. You, on the other hand, are making an accusation of scandalous nature. To imply that her content was of anything but the purest and most wholesome displays. Disgusting. You better have evidence to back up your preposterous claim. She's right. If I'm going to make that claim, I'd better have something to back it up. Do I have any evidence I can use to support my claim? Do I? Industry. It's an industry badge. Maybe that backs it up. Not just a guess, she's industry. There's more stuff going on behind the scenes. Maybe. Well, I don't think it's gonna be 
Oh, it's gonna be so bad if it's actually just like, check out how the corpse died, the ass is up. That's the, it's, it can't be. I'm, I'm doing the badge. <laughs> it's not the badge, okay. Is it really? Okay, no, it's not that. What is it then? Oh, the paddle. <gasps> it's gonna be her paddle. It's gonna be her paddle. That's gonna be it. Yep. Yep, of course. As a matter of fact, I think the Yuri paddle is as good of evidence as any. <gasps> I... I... I can't believe such nonsense. <coughs> well, you said it yourself when I showed you the paddle for the first time. Also, Almighty Pluto, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Solving a murder mystery. Well, you said it yourself when I showed you the panel for the first time. People tend to use objects for their intended purpose. Then you called it a prop for their degeneracy. Well, th th that was an exaggeration, hyperbole. I am an internet personality after all. Ms. Femsel? Were you giving money to Dandy so that she would make adult content? And did that maybe involve some <clears throat> swatting? You. 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 So what if that's true? Are you aware of how many people utilize services such as Matreon and Lonely Fans these days? <laughs> Lonely Fans. Your judgment means nothing to me. Whoa. Dandelion P, the famous cosplayer, was selling adult content on the side then. That's a development I really didn't see coming. And Matreon as well. So, good. <laughs> so, the Yuri paddle. It was Dandy's. Of course it was. Would you like me to spell out what she did with it too? No, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Once we officially began dating, she ceased all activities relating to her secret content. Is that right? Then why did she bring the paddle with her on this trip? And what was she doing at 3 a.m., eh? Eh? I think we're getting to the bottom of this. Thank you for being honest with me about this. It helps a lot. Back this out. Thanks. Yeah, okay, that one might be a little deserved. Let's keep going then. Can you go into more detail about the status of the relationship? In regards to... Well, let's just look at yesterday. Tell me about how well you were getting along when you arrived. Delaney and I had been dating for six months, but we still often vigorously debated each other. It's why we made a good team, and it's why we could host a damn good Yuri panel. Things had been going fine when we arrived yesterday, but opinions ran high, and we had another one of our debates, as it were. She ended up leaving and coming back later. Honestly, whenever she described the relationship to me, it sounds more and more turbulent. Even ignoring that, it feels like she's leaving a lot out. Miss Famsel, when you say debate, are you sure you don't mean argue? Yes, I am sure. Oh, okay, okay. Just seems like the two of you weren't getting along, that's all. We had a fantastic relationship. You just have an agenda to try and say otherwise. That's slander. It would be slander if I felt like I couldn't prove it. But I know I have something that can. It's not just going to be the paddle again, is it? Oh, maybe they fought over Miho? Because Miho sees everything? Nope. Right, so maybe the industry badge. Nope. Here we go. Because she left her behind. I know it's difficult, but could you take a look at the picture of the crime scene again? There's something about it I find weird. Is it the corpse? Huh. It's the beds. Oh, ooh, yeah. You say the two of you had been dating for six months, but for some reason you got the hotel room with two beds. That's not strange. It was all the hotel had available. But it wasn't. We booked tons of rooms in advance for the convention's hotel block. Well, we typically get two beds for cons in case a friend ends up staying the spending the night. 
Oh, that's actually very kind of you. I'm surprised. I was worried that you guys were, like, fighting. We weren't fighting. It was debate. Vigorous debate. Yikes, touch a, touched a nerve. Did anyone ever come away from those debates with hard feelings? Debating is all about hard feelings. The point is they get drowned out by facts. So they happen. Yes, they happen from time to time. And yes, last night was one of those times. I'm sorry to hear that. Relationships can be hard. They take effort from both parties. Parties? Don't talk to me about parties. That's all she wanted to do last night. Go to room parties. I take it you didn't want her to go? Of course not. We were taking this trip together. We should have been spending time together. And yet she still got up, took Mimo, and left. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Presenting the paddle like Phoenix does his badge. Oh, I was joking earlier about how, like, the Mimo plushie is my, my Phoenix right badge. Like, I just want to show Mimo in every situation. I just want to be like, hey, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> and yet she still got up, took Mimo, and left. She, she took Mimo? Yes, her plushie. It goes everywhere with her, no matter what. Oh, like a security blanket. Precisely. Mimo sees everything and knows all. She's full of secrets. If only Mimo could talk. I'm sure she would tell me who committed this murder. So, this party Dandy went to last night, was it special in some way? How would I remember? I wasn't invited. I wouldn't even want to go anyway. That's okay. I think I know what kind of party she went to anyway. Yeah, she went to an industry party with her industry badge that Ms. Femcell Theory couldn't go to because she only has a guest badge. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Ha. And how can you be so sure? Industry badge. Dandy had an industry badge, so I feel like if she was going to a party, then it would be to an industry party. What a leap in logic. How irrational. Maybe, but if you didn't want her to go so bad, then why didn't you just go with her? Do you not have an industry badge? I see that you're wearing a guest badge right now. I don't know, but why would I want to go to one of those filthy things anyway? Fair enough, that's your prerogative. So she went to the party, but eventually she came back, right? Yes, at 3 a.m. She woke me up as she entered, but went straight for the other bed. Ooh. So you admit it, the two of you weren't sleeping together. I admit nothing. This whole thing is ridiculous. Are you asking me questions or are you interrogating me? See, we're doing like this whole interrogation, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't her. I'm still convinced it's Senpai-chan. I'm, I'm, my money's still on Senpai-chan, to be honest. <laughs> hey, where are you going? I'm checking out of the hotel. Forget the panel. You're just some virtue signaling boomer desperately searching for purpose while you run around with your head cut off. Your convention is burning, Miss Stella, the guest coordinator. I recommend you go tend to it. Do better, sweetie. Oh. Oh, what a line. Wait. Don't go. If she leaves now, it's all over. I need to solve this puzzle, and I need to solve it. Now, I guess? Of course you're leaving. You talk a big game, but you're afraid of losing a debate in the, uh, the, the marketplace of ideas. <laughs> None of those words sound natural coming out of me. <laughs> She's turning around. I'll have you know, I've won every single argument I've had online for the past 10 years. I know this because I keep count. And now you, some malnutritioned pod person, think you have the better of me? Well, I hate to rain on your parade, but you have nothing. Nothing but conjecture and hysterics. <laughs> okay, that was kind of beautiful timing. <laughs> Hi, Zarok, welcome. Welcome, welcome into uh, Murder Mystery times. Yuri Murder Mystery. This, um, this is a lot. <laughs> welcome. You're wrong. What was that, sir? You're wrong. 
I have more than conjecture and hysterics. I have something you should be quite familiar with. I have a theory. <laughs> Game theory. <laughs> you have fan fiction. That's what you have. Oh shit! How did she find out about my? <laughs> Let me just explain it. And if you think it's nonsense, you're free to leave. Hell, you can make a whole video about how terrible this con is. Really stick it to us. That would bring me joy. Fine, humor me. What nonsense have you strung together in that hollow vase you call a head? I don't know why I said vase. I always say vase. I guess her voice just like vase made sense. That's funny. This is it. Make or break. I need to utilize every speck of information I have at my disposal to solve this. For the con. For the insurance. For the salary. And I guess maybe for Dandy too. What kind of name is Femcell Theory exactly the kind of name you would expect? And she's exactly the kind of person you would expect with a name like that. <laughs> but I'm doing well, thank you! I'm, it's Women Wednesday, so I'm just planning on playing Yuri visual novels all day. And uh, I'm going to try and make it a long stream, too. I want to get as many of these games played as I can. It's uh, taking me a while because I'm very good at getting distracted when I play visual novels. So it, it, I, it, I might be doing like an impromptu 12 hour stream. Who knows? We'll see. It's OK, but I'm having fun. <laughs> I, I feel like picking this one, though, this is like probably the wildest one of the bunch. I, I think I, I managed to pick the, the most out there one as my first one to play. <laughs> I really am starting in style. But oh, it's, it's, it's funny. For the dental! And I guess maybe for Dandy too. All right, let's do this. It all started six months ago. You found out about Dandy because pictures of her cosplaying were all over your timeline. You weren't all that impressed at first until you discovered that she was also sexy. A VTuber? <laughs> Hold on, this isn't the right answer, but I just want to say. <laughs> it's, it's this one, but I want to... I need to know what this says. A VTuber. Oh, it doesn't say anything specifically. Okay. Making adult content. You weren't all that impressed at first until you discovered that she was also making adult content. Ugh. Out of all her fans, you were the biggest, the most obsessed. You always sent the most money. So you were thrilled when the two of you started dating. Not because she made risque material, but because you... ...worshipped her. <laughs> Longed for the soft touch of a woman. Well, they have nothing in common and their chemistry is abysmal. It's gotta be this one. You just longed for the soft touch of a woman. Themsel. Yes. So you were thrilled when the two of you started dating. Not because she made risque material, but because you longed for the soft touch of a woman. Rude. You are a self-identifying Femcell, after all. Odds are this was your first relationship? But there was immediately trouble in paradise that caused endless arguments, right? You had the girl of your dreams, but you weren't comfortable. Because even though she had told you she stopped filming new content, you had a sneaking suspicion she... Missed it desperately. Wanted to film new content with you. But yeah, she was lying. You had a sneaking suspicion she was lying. These suspicions grew and grew, and you, being black-pilled and bitter, couldn't stop thinking about it. It haunted every thought. Sorry, I need to look something up quickly. Like, what, what even does black-pilled mean? I feel like I can guess the meaning. Oh, it's like extremist, like... Your soul has been blackened. You've been convinced of awful... Okay, no, I get it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Black filled and bitter. <laughs> it's like we have a... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for putting it in Idol Master terms. Now I understand. <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> then, after months of this, you were invited to Onkai along with Dandy to run the Yuri panel. If she were to do anything unbecoming by your standards, then of course it would happen at a con. That's why you were so worried about the industry party yesterday. You were afraid she was going to swat someone with the panel. 
Have too much of a good time, get too drunk, secretly film new content. Yeah. No, 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 no. You needed evidence, though. And you knew the perfect way to get it. Did she put a camera in Mimo? Or a recorder or something? I think she put a recording device in Mimo. Oh, and that's why she keeps saying, like, Mimo sees all. <laughs> oh my goodness. You needed evidence, though, and you knew the perfect way to get it. So before you came to the con, you grabbed something precious of hers while she wasn't looking. Call it a leap in logic, but it's obvious to me that you... Bugged Mimo. Yup. <laughs> Put a camera in Mimo. Yes. You Herbesian wretches! You have turned this earth into a nightmare! After she came back to the hotel room with Mimo in tow, of course, you had the chance to go through the footage. You were heartbroken by what you discovered. She betrayed your trust. So in the morning, while she was getting her cosplay ready, you decided to confront her. It was then when you realized how perfect the opportunity was. The neighbors next door were partying so loud you couldn't even hear yourself think. Yeah, that would make sense as to why Mimo's so heavy. Like, don't don't kick her, you'll hurt your foot. She's not punchable because she's got a camera in her. <laughs> it makes sense now. And that's when you... It's all like the same thing. Killed Delaney. Ah, ah, ah. No! How be a moralist? No respect for the throne! You're a serve, a degenerate, an NPC, a soy facing pot person! <laughs> Fucking Stacy! <laughs> what does Stacy have to do with this? And you did it with a Yuri Paddle. <laughs> we did it. Wait, is that it? Is that the end? That can't be the end. The end? What if I do everything wrong? Is that the end? No. I'm gonna pick like all the wrong stuff and just see if anything changes. Went through her cell phone, read a diary, put a camera in Mimo. Killed Daddy. Killed your girlfriend. No, it is. You did it with a Yuri paddle. <gasps> That's the end. We did it. We solved the mystery, I guess. I'm so scared about Senpai Chan. But we did it. A Yuri paddle. <laughs> nice. One down. That took me like three hours. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait for, to see how long the next ones take, too. That's going to take me so long. But oh my goodness. We did it. We made it. We solved the mystery. We got there. And all it took was putting a camera in Mimo. Wait, I need to check my Miho now. Okay. I think I'm safe. I think I'm safe. My Mimo is light. Oops. I, I, I need to also say I did not punt the Miho. I just let her flop onto my bed. But there was stuff on my bed that she may have hit, but she's fine. But we did it! Game number one, Yuri Paddle! Nice! Oh, that was fun. That was... That was so... I don't know what I was expecting. But that was... <laughs> that was fun. That was so fun. Right, on to the next one. Next game. Right, the next one is going to be... Ba -ba 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 -ba. On Wings Bringing Sleep. 
Right, let me load it up. Let me make sure everything is working. Oh, if, if they do like a little update after the game jam, I wonder how hard it would be to commission just like art of Matilda being taken away in handcuffs just because it would be very satisfying to see. <laughs> okay, I hear it. I hear it, where's the game? Hello? Here it is! Game number two and immediately I think it is quite clear to see this one has an extremely different vibe to Yuri Paddle. <laughs> this one is on Wings Bringing Sleep. This is by the, the Studio Nekamata team. If you go to the about. Bam, bam, bam. No, you've got to talk about yourself here. Put yourself in the about section. Credit yourself. Queens. And you're, oh, wait, the books. It's all the, it's the high white blossoms, heart of the woods. Twofold National Park Girls, please be happy. Oh, it's all the games. Oh, it's Yuri Paddle, Upwards Rain, which you want. It's got all the, the airline games in the background. That's so cute. But we're, we're going to be looking at this book. This one is On Wings Bringing Sleep. Let's start. Uh, the following story contains implied domestic abuse, explicit violence, animal death, and toxic lesbianism. Warnings. Wait, maybe I should do a a content warning. Although I, di I didn't have a content warning for uh, Yuri Paddle, and that had a, 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 a dead deadness in. I guess because like the mature content thing was just automatically put on my stream anyway. That that kind of covers it. I think we should be safe. But uh, if if anyone is bothered by any of these topics, please be aware that this is what's happening in this game. Reader discretion is advised and do not try this at home. Oh, I would hope not after this. <laughs> in a sense, you're fortunate. One loss that you will never feel slip through your grasp is what it was to be gods. Of course, that title was given to us by those who didn't understand. The folk have never had deities of our own. Those condemned to such short lives, perhaps, can only view any who live longer than them as abominations. But when humanity first came to this land, they saw what we were and knelt, and in their awe, they prayed to remain insignificant to our eyes. Not a night went by that was not spent in revelry, and changelings danced among us, whoops us, nearly as numerous as ourselves. And we stretched from the ice and whispering winds of the north, between the oceans of east and all precious mountains of west, to the depths of this forest, and magic was all that enthralled us. Should we have thought that time would end, we whose natural lives have always been eternal? It may yet have gone on forever had one of our own been less foolish. A human trickster, their name long forgotten, took one of the folk for a lover and betrayed them. With stolen magic, the trickster forged the iron weapons that proved fatal to our kind, and humanity climbed up from its knees with a ruler of their own. It's the Fae! It's the Fae! It's the Fae! Okay, yes! Our weakening was meted out in lines they called borders, desolation they called progress. A small human hovel in the north grew into their royalty snarling gullet, and they ate outwards through the land as they gained more and more influence so quickly. We lost our ice, our ocean, our mountains. What remains of us remains here, in this wood, where every breath of magic is a fight to not be its last. We would weep to lower our heads and proclaim this the age of humanity. But it is certainly no longer an age of the folk. Humanity sprawls its seat further than can be pushed back. And now we suffer. It did not have to be this way. It was humanity that stole everything from you and I. You must remember that. On wings bringing sleep. Oh, what a start. Yes! Oh, here we go. The wood is withered 
I feel it around me like the arms of someone who once loved me. I do, but whatever it is now, this isn't what was told to me in song. I may be a child to those who saw themselves as gods, but I do pay attention. Even this close to midsummer, the green of the trees is just green. Even Mother says to me that it's getting worse, so I know that all of the folk of the wood see it. Maybe that's why my magic refuses to bloom. Why should a child born to the decline of the folk have the same sort of power her mother does? There will never be a future where I lead them like she does. It's too crowded in the lungs, too frantic. Everyone worrying that the wood is dying, all while they still prepare for midsummer. Sorry, I need to move my mic slightly. It's it's falling slightly. There we go. A revel at the end of the world. It makes folks act oddly. The way you shed everything you are to feel true escape, just for a moment. Of course, that's only possible if you can somehow forget that you have to come back to the real you. And she's the one who'll be different forever after what you've done. Do humans sense it? I can breathe easier out here. Just the birds and the trees and me. Closer to whatever fine blade of grass is the definitive border. That's another thing the wood folk don't talk about. And I'm not bringing up with Mother. But there are humans who venture near these parts. A wood carver who makes sure to only take from dead trees. Exceptionally brave children from the nearest human settlement, a day's walk to the west. A nomad family of hunters who lay their traps. Is it strange that they're my favorites? I've grown the most familiar with them. A mother and her two sons, always setting their snares at dawn and returning to collect their rabbits and squirrels before nightfall. They're always together. I know mother wouldn't approve of my interest. It certainly isn't that she fears humans, but she still counts her losses to them. One more thing about me she wouldn't understand. Maybe that's it. Without magic, I might as well be a human. Hello? Singing? It's barely past dawn, and that's no song of the folk. Let's try that again. A human. I think a new one. Her voice fell flat of that high note and she just tried the melody again. How did she manage to make it sound so natural? This feels like a dream letting some strange melody lead my way. I don't want to interrupt her. A girl. She's singing to the bird perched on that branch like we would. Oh, but her other hand. She took two eggs right from the nest and into her pocket. It's clever enough that she must have tried this before. All right. At least that's breakfast taken care of. Mother would just observe. Well, Mother wouldn't have followed a mystery song through the wood at all. And that song was lovely. Who goes there? She jumps at my arrival. How do I appear to her? Her gaze is lingering on... Ah, my ears. You're... Faye. Hello. You mustn't be from these parts. I appreciate Apparently, the compliment. I am calling from the UK now, Mega Tihi. Bob, hello! Thank you for the tier 2 sub for 44 months. Oh my goodness. Calling from the UK, hello? <laughs> Hi, welcome, welcome. How's it going? Thank you for the, the resub, the tier 2 resub. It's Yuri time. It's Women Wednesday. Happy Women Wednesday. <laughs> Oh, 44 is the international prefix for the UK. Oh, it is like the, the phone, the, the, the plus 44. Yeah, it, I didn't get that. 
My my brain has been melted after Yuri Paddle, to be honest. That that game was so much. But thank you so much. Thank you for the resub. Thank you. I'm on the second game out of four with the the Studio Elan recent game jam games. And uh, I sure picked a, a banger to start with, I gotta say. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for the resub. Well, I appreciate the compliment. The song's just a lullaby. My sister sang it to me when we were little. And you're not quite right about me not being from around here. You could better say I'm kept under close watch. Yet you're sneaking out to hunt your breakfast and risking being caught by a folk of the wood. But singing like that, perhaps you were hoping to be caught? I... How are you so certain that you caught me? No, it's my fault. It takes two to meet too close to the boundary. Letting you go for today is the right thing to do. Only for today? Oh, such mercy. I'd ought to run along before you change your mind. Hmm. Hmm. This is a bit awkward. Yes, thank you for the luck. I appreciate it. Will you also be passing through tomorrow? Tomorrow? That would be something different from whatever this is. I could try to find this grove again. I do believe that I could as well. Forbidden. Forbidden. Ooh. Well, my sister will throw a fit if I make her wait on breakfast, but I'll look forward to tomorrow. Ah, that's right. Humans have a superstition that if one of the folk gives you our name first, we can hold no power over you. I'm Morgane. Morgane. I feel like that suits you. I'm very glad to have met you. My name is Ilsa. Girl meets girl. Oh, she's humming it. She's humming it. I can't help but hum that lullaby, she said. The folk don't have to sleep as much as humans. I've never thought about a song I would want to fall asleep to. And I have something to look forward to now. Ilsa and I be talked for barely two minutes, but this is the most that I've wanted to do something in ages. Speaking of things I need to do, let's see, some chamomile, some gardenia, Oh, and lavender. Perfect. That should be strong enough to mask if any of Ilse's scent got on me. I don't think I could pass her off for a changeling, especially since the only one I'd have talked to is... Forget her. Ooh. Whomst. More folk about this morning than usual. Must be revel preparations. I don't really bother waving to anyone anymore. Sure, there are more new faces now that the last of the mountain folk have merged with us, but even the ones I've known all my life, it's obvious how they see me. Late bloomer. Unendowed. Can she really be Mab's daughter? Wow. Believe me, I'd have it some other way too. Mother and I live on the outskirts of the lungs. For how much time I spend trying to escape it, you'd think there were shackles keeping Mother chained inside. Sometimes she'll go months speaking to nobody but me if nothing requiring her leadership comes up. I take a moment to breathe in the old wood. The Morgane who spends her days roaming the wood, spying on humans. She's left out there beneath the trees. She's not the one who enters this cottage. I like to think she's the real me. I wish it were larger in here. I can't hide anywhere, not even from the walls. They're all painted with the stories of old from when all this land was our heaven. Mother is there, but the portrait isn't really her. She's so minimal, just dark horns and judgment among all the revels and hunts, violence and creation. I've always felt a revolting fascination with them, like the first time I opened up a dead animal for a spell. Ugh. Power that my role is to never dream of. Good morning, Mother. Ivy would have been preferable to Gardenia's, but you can fetch that later. 
You know where to put the flowers. Can I help prepare anything for the solstice? I suppose there are some more wreaths that need to be woven. Ah, yes, wreaths. Wreaths that she'll do all the magic with, mind you. I can weave some of the finest wreaths in the wood for how many years I've spent only making them. Morning Glory, Barbary, Watercress, the bowl of rabbit's blood beside them. Memory puppets my blood-stained fingers. Good enough. Remember that you were born to a purpose, Morgan. Here we go, as always. We are the Witch Kings. We are the Guardians. We keep the magic, and with it, the only order in this world that can be hoped for. And what would she do if she knew I met a human in the wood just an hour before? That Ilsa wasn't afraid of me? That she threatened none of our kind? That she was warm and beautiful, and all she asked of me was whether we could meet again? I understand, Mother. I'm sorry, Morgan, but you don't. Not until you play your own part. I... Ugh. I need to go gather some more ivy. It looks like we need, we, need, uh, we need more magnolia as well. She doesn't need to know I crushed the last of it under my boot. You know what you're doing, I hope. Ooh, that's, that's a bit of an ominous line. Those blackbirds are out again today. Is it strange that I hope they don't wind up anyone's dinner? Let's see, which way did I walk yesterday? I think it was to the west and then a bit north. There she is. Oh. She's really here. I almost want to sing the next line with her. But what's that hanging from her belt? It looks like a knife. Which could be for anything. She was hunting yesterday, wasn't she? Still, I don't see any blood on her. And the real thing she'd need to protect herself from in the wood is... Morgane, are you there? You heard me coming? I'm not certain that heard is the best word. I felt something yesterday and just now, right before you appeared. You Faye probably don't even register it. But it's like the whole forest pulling a touch closer around me. So, yesterday too then? I'd be lying if I said there was no shadow. Can I confess something? When I felt it with the stories I've heard about these trees, I did wonder, hope even. So, the singing? Well, don't start thinking too highly of yourself. A girl does need to eat, too. Mm. No need to just stand there. We both found our way back, didn't we? She doesn't even seem phased by how close we're sitting. It's like she doesn't have a care in the world. I don't know what it is. I don't trust her. <laughs> I'm really nervous. I don't I don't think I trust Ilsa. This this feels it feels too nice. I don't trust it. Must be nice. Oh no, I need to say something. But this is only the second time we've met. How much do we actually have to talk about? Did you uh, find any more breakfast today? Really, breakfast? What am I even saying? But she's laughing. It's musical, like she can take her amusement and bend it into something beautiful. No unlucky birds today, sadly. Maybe they got smarter. Maybe. I did find these, though. She's woven some wild, wild flowers up her arm the same way that I do. <gasps> I thought that I might bring some back for my sister and myself. Is she the sort who wears flowers in her hair? <laughs> no, I can't quite picture that, which is why I wanted to see it. She wouldn't say no, it's the least that she owes me. She smiles with her teeth. Her hands keep going in and out of her dress's pockets while she talks. 
She feels realer than she did yesterday. I've made a lot of wreaths out of flowers like those, you know. The gardens we have are beautiful, so I've heard. The drawings of some of your flowers that I've seen. The paths change every day, even as you walk. The air brushes your cheek like it's been longing for your return. It's tempting just to linger at the entrance, but you wonder, what's in bloom? Even the flowers you would grow on your windowsill feel different. Golden. Magic. It seems more fantastic than I can imagine. The whole garden is really at your command? Oh, the garden! Is that where you keep your menageries of fearsome beasts? Fearsome beasts? <laughs> yeah, when there's like the, the one dissonant note every now and then. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure everything is fine. Everything is fine here. Nothing is wrong here. I've read about them too. Twin-tailed black cats who trick human travelers into games of finger bones on your behalf. Or serpents who grant understanding of their language with a bite? Well, some of us have familiars. You make them sound far more fantastic, though. Oh. She's so earnest. I feel guilty being the bearer of bad news. It makes sense that human accounts have blown things out of proportion, though. What would help her understand? Or I can try showing her. Ooh. It won't be the real thing, but when we tend to them, it's sort of like... What am I thinking? I'm about to make a fool of myself. Because how many times have I dug a hole into the earth like right now? Have I placed bits of plant inside and covered it back up, breathed in with my hands over the plot? When did Ilsa lean closer? What does she see? Some one-trick gardener? Or one of the Fae? So many different flowers bloom within this grove. I have to focus on just the one. Takuma! Hi, Kuma! Welcome, welcome. Look, I'm playing. Ah! Hi! Hi! Welcome, welcome! I have to focus on just the one. Huh. It's a magnolia petal, but... I've never thought of it like this before. I see it in my mind, but it's part of the soil now, too. And that soil is part of this grove, with every dewdrop on every blade of grass, and the wildflowers Ilsa picked, and the roots going up into the trees, and... I'm not me at all. I'm one of those blackbirds in the sky, looking down the only other creatures in the world who know about us. We bleed into the grove. There's color again. The wood knows me, and now it knows Ilsa, and it's singing her lullaby. The soil is trembling beneath my fingers. I unclasp them, and I hope Ilsa thinks their shaking is normal. As I raise my palms upward, the blossoming magnolias are coaxed from the earth, straining for the sky of my magic. Shy Pai, hello! Welcome, welcome! Thank you for the head pad, welcome! Happy Women Wednesday! I love women. Ah. It's so easy. I turn back to Ilsa and I know it. It's her. It's her. Until I met this strange human girl, despite a thousand tries, I could never do this. I pluck the magnolia from the earth. Keep it. You made it. White isn't my color, anyhow. <laughs> what is your color, though? It's not much. Whole gardens are still out of my reach. These are much more manageable. Me too. I also love women. Pluck up a stalk of Ilsa's wildflowers, braiding my magnolias through the smaller blooms. I don't even have to think about what my fingers do. I barely have time to I, uh, I barely have to look away from Ilsa as I braid another wreath. Some skill for one of the fabled folk, isn't it? Could you humor me? Would you mind turning around? 
Oh. Maybe I should have kept a, just one flower. Making a whole patch grow in a matter of seconds was a bit much. She takes the wreath from me and then... I feel her hand on the back of my neck, pushing my braid over my shoulder. The cold prick of her fingertips somehow feels like a sunburn on my skin. She can see my left ear fully now, my base nature laid bare. There's some small breeze blowing just between us. It's Ilsa, breathing me in. Her fingertips trace higher to the nape of my neck. Of my swan, you've been gone so long. How many tears more must I shed for your song? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. You tensed up. It's fine. You can keep singing. The lullaby, right? <laughs> you get hello! Exactly. Women are my favorite guy. Uh, all of the dream. Yeah, we, we've we got the planet of the Fae now, though. Uh, hello, welcome, happy Women Wednesday. Welcome in. I'm. I don't know why. I'm so nervous for this. I. I. I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm worried. It's fine. You can keep singing, the lullaby, right? Right. Her own hands are getting more confident, and her voice. <laughs> you left me with naught but a smile and passed on. This poor crow can't fly from the memory of your arms. Yet I know what skies you've soared onto from me. No pale beauty feather is stirred by my pleas. I bared you my heart and I'll see yours bared too. If holding it's the last thing I'll ever do. Oh no. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Her hair is nothing like mine. How would it feel to run my fingers through hers like this? Let's try something else. Who taught you this? Your mother? I... I taught myself. Too much time on my hands, my sister always says. That should do it. Bring it back over your shoulder. I wish I had a mirror to show you properly. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm... <laughs> How is it so beautiful and yet I'm so uneasy? I... Oh. The wildflowers. She's woven them all through my braid and crowned me with the wreath. They smell soft. Sweet. Thank you. I thought you said that song was a lullaby? It seems a bit... A bit what? Dark, is all. And it seems more like the singer is laying a claim to their beloved rather than pursuing their love as equals. Now that you mention it, I suppose so. I've known it for so long that I never gave it much thought. Although knowing my sister, it might well be some murder ballad that just happened to put me to sleep one night. That's the sort of thing she sings in a good mood. Who really thinks about the stories we tell children until someone points out their flaws? That's a really good point, honestly. Like, there are so many, like, classic fairy tales and stuff. When you, like, think about them further, they're so dark. Fairy tales are so dark. And it's always so interesting how they, it becomes so normal. Like, think of something like Little Red Riding Hood. It's like, oh, um, her grandmother got eaten. That's just a, a nice, happy children's story. Yeah, it's great. It's so, it's, it's wild, really. Stories. 
There's the one mother has told me so many times. I've memorized where she pauses to breathe. Yeah, it's it's always the Grim fairy tales. I feel like Grim is such a an appropriate name. They have the most appropriate name. Because some of them are so grim. Like it's it's I think another thing that I find really interesting is how many have been like adapted to be more like child friendly. Like I think about all of the fairy tales I used to listen to as a child, like I was told. And then like later on as an adult, I've looked up the grim grim fairy tales, the grim stories. And they've been very changed. They get very changed. Yes, and uh, Hans Christian Andersen as well. Yes. It's like I, I read the origins of some of the stories that I used to know as a child. And I'm like, w w okay, yeah, this doesn't have a happy ending. This also doesn't have a happy ending. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're, they're more like warning tales. It's like, don't, don't go into the forest. This awful thing will happen to you. It's, it's like a, a warning. It's used to scare scare people into obedience. <laughs> so it's really interesting how it's kind of evolved as time's gone on, because they're not really warnings anymore. Very interesting. It's, it's very interesting. Right, what story did Mother tell? But all that happened centuries ago. Things get lost in memory, don't they? Let me return the favor somehow. Our Midsummer Revel is almost here. Maybe next time I could teach you some of our songs? <gasps> yes. Maybe next time, listen to me, assuming a whole future without even thinking. I'll look forward to it. She's blushing. I have little else to celebrate. For just a moment there, something slipped through. I wonder what kind of sadness that was. The ravel. If I could make her glamour, it could sharpen the tips of her ears. She could dance to our music, be the queen of the festivities. That is dangerous. That's so dangerous. <laughs> and when she's caught, how horribly will that end? Yeah, that's, that's dangerous. That's really dangerous. The grove is what we have. The grove, is, this grove is enough. <laughs> oh, they're beautiful. They're so beautiful. Ah. I pick up the second wreath and straighten it on Ilse's brow. Wear this next time, too, so that one thing of ours can match. You keep saying next time. Even yesterday you agreed so readily. You really want to know that much about me? You... You're new, unlike anything else. Well, I suppose you do have me there. I should go. My sister and I live alone, and she worries if I'm gone for too long. Of course, we wouldn't want that. Tomorrow, though. Tomorrow. <laughs> Two young human women living alone this close to Folk Forest? Fearlessness must run in the family. And who knows about young, either? That sister of hers sounds more like a mother if she was singing Ilsa to sleep as a baby. See, I'm here like... Morgane is kind of presuming that she's human. I, they might not be human. There's very, it's very possible they're not human. Oop. Just what in the name of the tallest mountain was that, Morgane? Who? Dahlia? So this is where you've been wandering further and further off to? Gathering for Mab, surely? Um, uh, what does Mother have to do with this? Really, Morgane? I'm trying to give you an excuse here, because to me, it looks like you... Why do you care what it looks like I'm doing? I thought that wasn't how you felt. I think it matters for all of us if you're beguiling a human. That's not... I don't have to explain myself to you. You're a changeling. How is it any different? You and I both know perfectly well the difference between me and a human. Did her family leave her at a boundary? Has she met the changed part of the process? That's what I thought. No, it's not because nobody is being beguiled. 
She's just a girl from the wood who happens to be human. And it doesn't matter if she knows who I am because she's the first one who doesn't care. Do you really mean that, Morgane? No, how about for once you answer my question? Did you follow me? She smiled. Yes. Why? Needing to make sure I haven't gotten on to all right without you? Uh, uh, this would be easier if she wasn't still gorgeous as ever. You could throw Dahlia off a cliff and she'd splatter prettily. Oh, that'd be perfect, wouldn't it? Little Miss Perfect raising her hand to the sad, broken daughter of the Witch King. Except, she's tracing my jaw as she pulls me closer. She's... Her lips brush the ridge of my cheek. Well? Have you? I still remember how to hold her. Oh. Her lips close in on mine. What? The magnolias I grew that weren't woven into Ilsa's and my crowns are right at my feet. I don't think anything. The girl I loved like a spark loves dry wood is kissing me again. But they shoot upwards. Huh! <gasps> my ankle! She breaks apart from me, stops, tears her foot out from the magnolia stalks that wrapped up and around it. Oh, oh boy. Ooh. Morgane, what a. Oh! You're all over them. Did you? Use magic? Does Mab know? Why do you care what goes on between me and Mother? Morgane, if you did, that changes things. You're not being fair. And you're only honest when it suits you. How does it feel being on the other end? Ooh. No, she doesn't get to ruin this for me. If she tries to follow me again, I'll... I'll... What? I didn't even mean for that thing with the flowers to happen, and... I don't want to hurt her. Not really. She's the one who makes having a simple conversation impossible, though. I've always barely been able to keep up with her. That's why... It's for the better that she ended things. No matter how much it hurt back then. Whatever impression she got of Ilsa, too, she's wrong. I'm not... That is to say... Ugh. I know what falling in love feels like. Dahlia's the one to thank for that. And I did kiss her back just now. But it doesn't change the... F but it doesn't change that the first time I've ever been able to use magic was when I was with Ilsa. Yes, that's what I need right now while I feel this out. A friend. Someone who isn't judging me, who has no motives of her own. Are you sure about that? Just a friend. Just, just gal pals. Just, just gals being pals, you know. Morgane! We're meeting even earlier today. It's not yet dawn. I suppose neither of us could wait. I would worry how Ilsa found her way through the wood in the dark, but there's a candle lit inside the glass lantern she's holding. She looks tired, tense. She wasn't using her right hand to hold things yesterday. Where did those blisters on her palm come from? Did I not mention it? Did I say that out loud? Oh, you don't need to hide it. I just... Well, now's a good, as good a time as any. My sister is a craftswoman. It's only right that I help her with whatever she needs. Would you humor me? How far exactly is your home from here? It just... Troubles me how far you've been walking. Would you like for me to show you? In the name of Elaine, your fears. We're traveling further north, like I suspected, but not towards that human village. I don't think any of the folk have walked in this part of the woods since Mother's youth. And Ilsa, she keeps looking back over her shoulder at me, like she can't believe I'm following her. Is my being here helping her nerves or causing them? I don't know what else I expected. It's a proper house. 
No thatched together cabin with logs still groaning from being cut down. How long did you say your family has lived here? Oh, the cottage? I don't know, to be perfectly honest. My sister couldn't live in the capital anymore. She took me with her and followed the river, the river south until she found... Well, we aren't the praying sorts, but it was a certain stroke of luck, wouldn't you say? So it's always just been the two of you? For all your life? Ilsa? Are you out here? The sister? I can't see her, but it's no mystery who that must be. I... Mm. Mm. Something feels wrong. I crumple a fistful of ague in my pocket and lay my palm on the nearest tree. I've seen plenty of folk do the spell before, and it feels sort of like growing the flowers did yesterday. Bloom. Hide. It's like the bark of the trunk grows around my hand. A sloth of a, a slough of hot wax that scrapes rather than burns. My skin mottles the same color as the wood, patches of moss laying their claims at my arm, until all of me that's visible is dusky green. Go, Ilsa, it's fine. I, uh, why is she looking at me like? Oh no, this isn't the magic I used to grow those flowers. This is, I'm, the reason humans cut down the trees before they lay claim to the forest. The story that keeps children from wandering from their beds. The monster tapping my fingers at her window. Ilsa? Ilsabeth! Do something, Ilsa. Say anything. I promise it's still me. Ah, uh, Creamhild, I'm right here. Ilsa? Did you go into the woods? Ilsa, I swear, I don't want to talk about this again. The sun's barely even up. It's all right, let's just go inside. Creamhild, it's nothing. That's right, that's all you can say. Nothing. Nothing. I'm nothing. Whew. Oh dear. Should I have a sense to stay away? If Creamhild suspects something, we need to both be cautious. But I was cautious this morning when I used the camouflage magic. Look what Elsa thought of that. All right, left arm, right arm, everything back to what Elsa sees. And as for what's in the bag around my waist, well, mother might see what I stole and realize what magic they work together. Maybe she'll be proud. I've got to go back to that cottage. She won't come to me. I recognized how she talked to that sister of hers. Sister, mother, seems either way I thought right. Yeah, we gotta get her out of there. It somehow looks smaller at night. Which room is Ilsa's? That's the last thing I need, her sister wake, uh, waking up to see me outside her window. Oh, up there, the loft on the second floor. That's the candle from Ilsa's lantern this morning. Did she light it for... She's even left it open, and there she is, brushing out her hair for the night. Her arms. I hear how she breathes in every time she raises them. They're stiff. She's hurting. Something isn't right in this house. But then, I already know that. Ilsa? What do you want? I've never seen her like this. She turned around so quickly, but... She looks like she hates me, like the doe at the end of the wild hunt. I've only seen her teeth when she smiles, never her fangs. And her nightgown isn't like the clothes I've seen her in, I've met her in. I can see more of her, her chest, her shoulders. They're all bruised, like ugly eclipses all over the peach of her skin. It's the height of summer. 
I've always met her when any human should have sweat salting their scal scalp, with her neckline buttoned up to her throat and the cuffs at her wrists. Oh, they've always been there. Who hurt you? I, you know. You know. Who? Oh. Why didn't you tell me? Well, game, tell you what? You're not a fool, Ilsa, and I'm not either. You shouldn't have come back. I think those bruises are exactly why I should have. You... You don't understand nearly as much as you think that you do. Ilsa, if I did anything that upset you, I truly am sorry. That wasn't my intent. No, Morgaine, it's not... Uh, I'm not angry with you, it's... It's myself, how I acted earlier. I don't know why I thought leading you here was a good idea, and then Cream Hilda's ear, and I... I've never had a friend, not truly. And I realize that's what you are to me, Morgane. I just hadn't let myself think that way until we were right there at the doorstep, and it wasn't perfect. Not the way I thought it'd be. Friend. She does feel this bond too, then. It's real. So why does that word feel like shadows on a summer day? Because you want more than friend. I want to help you, Ilsa. No matter how little an escape I can offer, I... I don't know where yet. Past the grove, maybe there's our revel, but... You can't understand the kindness you've shown me. It's all that feels right to offer you. For your friendship. Thank you, Morgane. Why do I feel like you know so much more about me now than I do you? Necessary caution? When you are a stranger, at least. Don't you see, though? I can't explain my word, my world in words. This is the best answer I can give you. Surely a knight stolen into the folkwood is better than... How I exist here? What have I done for you to slip through my windows with the night and save me from existence? Please, don't think of me that way. As a girl who's only wounded, only ever falling, who's never wondered where the bravery to save herself lies. She only held my face in her hands for a moment, but... Is there some magic that preserves the ghost of a touch? Tomorrow, then? Tomorrow. Good night, Morgan. Let's see. I think I got away cleanly. Mother shouldn't notice me taking from her storage if I supplement from the gardens. I should have guessed food would be heavier to carry, though. Oh, hello again. Just you today, little blackbird. Little blackbird. Well, I suppose you know where I'm off to. Oh, no. Wait, what was the song? What was the song? Oh, wait. Oh. Worry. Suddenly worry. Well, I suppose you know where I'm off to. Why haven't you flown on with the rest of your flock, though? What makes a bird decide somewhere is the place to remain? Just having a sing. Ah, oh, careful where you're flying, little bird. You nearly made me drop my bag of tricks. You really are my escort, then. Maybe I should call you something nicer than little bird. Morgane, I know you're there. What gave it away this time? Hmm. It was different. She steps closer to me and takes my hand in her and takes my hands in hers with a swipe of her thumb over my knuckles. That's a standard human greeting, right? Right? Just a bit of hand holding, that's normal. It was a scent today. I don't even know if it's yours alone, but I felt like every tree in the forest had suddenly gone into full bloom. All that lightness and lush was wrapping around me. Upping the fey dramatics, are you? I, uh... I wasn't trying to? <laughs> Never mind it, for now. Oh, your hair! What about it? You... the flowers. You didn't have to keep them there for me, you know. 
No, do they look wrong? I tried to enchant them so that they wouldn't wilt. Well, today I thought... I mean, with everything you said last night, I... I thought I would try to make myself more at home here. She's brought a blanket to spread over the grass, the quilt from her bed. Even sitting at ease here all last night, she looks regal. I don't think she could slouch her shoulders if she tried. About that, I had an idea. We always prepare so much food for the Midsummer Revel, nobody's going to miss a little amount of it. If you'd like to try it, that is, oh, I know the tales about eating fey food. I, mm, I, I know the, the myths there. But I kind of think it might not be that, maybe? Let's see. Fruits I picked from the gardens, honey milk, sweet cakes, some bird simmered in that saffron sauce I like. I can't predict everything there will be, but staples seem like a safe place to start. She's hesitating though, even over something basic as bread. Is her hand shaky? Ah, I'm sorry, it all looks delicious, don't misunderstand, but it... I... Ah, oh, how could I have forgotten? She's likely spent her whole life being told any food of the folk will turn to ash in her mouth, if not worse. If I may? Take these berries. We eat them just before the sun begins to set. They wake you up to the wood. That's where the revel really is. The one time of year where all of the old magic can be felt. You can start with just one. They're small enough to come right off the vine and sweet without any sugar. I've been trying so hard to make her feel safe. What if she simply can't manage this, though? Maybe if I... I'll pretend it's my first time as well. The next berry that I reach for, it's slower, less certain of where to pinch my fingers and sever fruit from stalk. It takes another moment, but... Ilsa starts to mirror me. She mangles hers a bit, some pulp sticking to her fingers. When she eats it, she almost seems self-conscious, ducking her head down and eating in a hurry before the juices can drip further than her wrist. A few dark droplets make it to her skirt, but no matter, no going back now. Do you feel something? You are right, it's sweet. Oh. Oh my. This is how you all live? Constantly? If it's too much, we can stop. No, 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 no. I just... It's so much. Everything you've said about the forest, I'm feeling it now. I taste it. What else is there? Try this then. The cakes lighten your feet for dancing. Here, I'll break it in half. Whatever you eat, I match you. That way it stays fair. How long do the effects last? They're meant to carry you through the festivities. Don't believe anyone who claims that you need to double up. I once saw a girl who couldn't set her feet on the ground for a week after eating too many of these. She eats this one so urgently too. Creamhill doesn't, a sister wouldn't, would she? How hungry is she? I don't want to ask. Not in this moment. Not when she's laughing. It's the berries, I know. She falls back onto the quilt, her eyes shut in bliss. There's no force at all to her laughter. I don't want to help her up until she lets it all out. Why, I'm okay, and you gentlewoman. I couldn't leave you to any grass stains. Morgan, would you like to dance? And before I know it, we're pulling each other around the grove, clasping hands and spinning until our vision loses direction, twirling beneath each other's arms, weaving, hopping steps towards each other like dewdrops on a spider's web. I feel carefree, maybe for the first time I can ever remember. You weren't exaggerating. I'm absolutely parched. What's in that water skin at your belt? I'm not certain you want to try wine right now. Wine? 
I'll admit, I've never been uh, inebriated before, but that's not it. It's, well, our wine makes you honest. Honest. So, if we both drink, a truth for a truth, whatever either of us wishes to know. Ooh, okay. All right. The first question that comes to mind. No regretting it, whatever the answer. There's not much more in here than for each of us to have a sip anyhow. I'd forgotten how heady it is. Ilsa downs it quickly, although I don't think it's from practice. Oh, that's not quite what I expected. I think it's meant to taste better the more that you drink. Go on then. Have you ever... Are you not afraid of me? It's a simple answer. Of course not. Of course not. The words don't come. And for that to be the case... No, I can't be afraid. Was it the fight with Dahlia? Yes, that has to be it. That just shook me. Not that either? Then what? I know I'm taking too long to say anything, to say something again. Ilsa has to see it, the betrayal of magic. What if there's no version of the truth that I can give her? That's all right. I haven't been certain myself recently. Don't doubt yourself. Don't let... Don't let anyone make you. You're not a monster for claiming whatever you can from the world, even if it's not what you might have expected. I didn't hear a question in that, Morgane. Can you tell me a story about the old times? Don't alter it for my sake. Tell me about my people exactly the way you've heard it. Okay. Once upon a time. Hmm. Once upon a time, the people of Vildegren answered to gods, and the gods were hungry. Prayers were left to be ignored, a prized cow butchered on the doorstep, bowls of milk swirled pink with blood. Desperate families offered up their unwanted children, chaining them to the ground when they rejected their purpose. All agreed that to be changed was the kind of fate. If the gods returned them to you, whatever they still breathed was inconsequential. Children wept to walk their tattered feet across hard ground. Parents could no longer meet the eye of any within their family. Lovers would scream at the touch of your hand. Into such a genealogy was born Acre the Diligent. She lost her sister to a beguiling spring, only finding what bones of her washed down the river from the hunting ground of the gods. Her father went to bed one night a man, and she found him the next morning as a mass of flesh still bound to his killing tree. And then, one day, her lover returned to their home like a lost ghost. She swore that her people would bear no more. Ica's family come from low means, but her lover was a merchant who had travelled far and wide, and had gifted her upon their engagement a dagger of foreign metal. Armed with all that remained of her love, Ica ventured into the woods and waited. Some, sh some say she brewed a solution to counter anything the gods bade her ingest. Some that she cut open her own veins and bled into the earth, knowing what thirsts it would draw. Others that she simply stripped naked and waited to be found. Perhaps all three, perhaps something else entirely. When Ica awoke in the morning, her mind remained her own, as much as her lover's dagger buried within the breast of the dead fae at her side. Ica returned to the hunting ground upon the next full moon. Her lover's blade once more fell true, and this time granted Ica a gift greater than vengeance, a vision of what she must do. She spread her tale from village to village, and with it the knowledge that gods could be brought low. And when she slew the fey lord who had stalked the boundaries of her family's home until it held only her, she carved her declaration of war from his chest and left him to you to be found. 
human settlements once isolated and penned like cattle, banded together. A capital of our own rose in the north. What became of Ica as the new balance was weighed? Oh, what became of Ica as the new balance was weighed is our tale's only mystery. She was last seen leading the charge against the Fae's own horned queen, their greatest and most terrible commander. A hero such as Ica would certainly have been proud to sacrifice herself for her people's triumph. And indeed, the end of that battle marked the drawing of the Boundary Pact that keeps the Fae at bay even now. Yet some claim that with her family avenged and their hunters humbled, Ica returned to anonymity. They claim she may very well have lived out the remainder of her days in a once impossible dream, free from terror. Ah. Do you see why I asked what I did? Centuries have turned wounds to scars, yes, but you still took so much from us. And we, I suppose, and it's anyone's right to divinity. Hearing the story like this, I never wondered if the Faithbreaker had a name, and the Horned Queen could only have been Mother. She's always told me that humans don't comprehend time how we do. I wouldn't think that that was all history from centuries ago, though, not hearing how Ilsa spoke of it. So now you know. All that I ignore every time I do this you suddenly everything i can think of to say sounds like it will just prove her right about the folk that we didn't want a war of absolutes that she has no way of knowing her version is what really happened what response won't lose her forever i can't think of one before she suddenly grabs for a plum still lying on the quilt biting into it fiercely enough for the dark juice to spray across her lips Why should it fall to the two of us to right every wrong? And before I can let myself think twice, I cradle her chin on my fingers, wiping the juice from her soft lips. What did you say this fruit does? I have no idea. We can find out. Instead of taking a bite from the plum, I flick my tongue to the droplets on my finger. Ilsa watches me do it and I feel a strange sense of obscenity. I feel my little bird circling above us once more. There's a buzz, almost an itch running up my spine, spreading along my shoulder blades. The space between me and Ilsa suddenly feels different. The quilt beneath my hands isn't soft anymore. It itches up through my skin, suddenly rushing through my veins like an embrace. I'm frozen and I need to move. I feel stirrings along my muscles, but it's like my brain doesn't know what to do with them. And somehow, I feel a certainty that Ilsa is experiencing the same. Although, how can I know? I can't look her in the eye. The... The light's changing. The light's changing. Creamhild won't believe I'm taking this much time. Creamhild? It's my day to hunt, but it doesn't take me all day. Something isn't right about this, but I already knew that. That's not the face of someone who wants to go home. And I still have... what I was too cowardly to give her last night. Ilsa, do you trust me? What? I have here a glamour spell. All you would need to do is wear it like a charm. Can you meet me back here tomorrow before sundown? Tomorrow? Th isn't that your revel? Yes. She touches me then, just running a finger along the length of my ear, pushing my hair back. It's like I suddenly know every way I want to touch her in return. I want to cover her eyes every time she sees a part of me she ought to be afraid of. I... I think that I could sneak out. Freshen up the flowers, though, for me. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, 
right, it is, it's nearly six o'clock. I, I think there's probably not much more of this game to go. But uh, because of the time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rush off now just for like a minute so I can go and feed Tiffany. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this game. And then once I finish this, I'm going to take a little break for like 15 minutes or so. So I can go make myself a sandwich. <laughs> and I'm going to go make myself a sandwich, have some, have some dinner. And then I'll be back for more games. But for now, I'm, I'm just going to feed Tiffany very quickly. I will be right back because it's, it's nearly her dinner time. And this feels like a decent spot for me to just very quickly be right back. Be right back! Oh my goodness, wait. I got raided while I was feeding Tiffany. Hi! <laughs> Hello, oh my goodness. Hi, raiders. Hello, welcome, Mari. Hi, I just ran off to feed Tiffany because it's her dinner time and she would get mad at me. But thank you so much for the raid. Hello. Welcome. No, it's the funniest timing. You, you got to like fill the gap while I wasn't here. Have a, have a bit of content. Thank you. <laughs> But hello, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, raiders. Oh, you you were playing Upwards Rain, weren't you? I'm I'm so excited to play it. I'm gonna be playing it after this. Once I finish this game, I uh, I think Upwards Rain is gonna be my next one. But oh, I hope you had fun. Thank you for the raid. For anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK, and I love comfy games and puzzle games and uh, women. And it's Women Wednesday, and I'm playing all of the, the Yuri games from the Studio Elan game jam that recently happened. <laughs> and because I am a very silly person, I wanted to see if I could play all of them in one stream. So that's my goal at the moment. <laughs> uh, have I only played on Wings Bringing Sleep? Uh, this is the, I'm playing it at the moment, but I've, I've played Yuri Paddle. The start of the stream was Yuri Paddle. And now I'm playing this, and then I'm gonna play Upwards Rain, and then I'm gonna play Which You Want. But uh, my plan is gonna be, after I finish this one, I'm gonna have a little bit of a break. I'm just gonna have like a 10-15 minute break so I can go make myself a sandwich. So I can have some dinner, because it's, it's dinner time and I am hungry. But I wanna finish this first, I wanna finish this. And then I will go feed myself, and then I will resume. <laughs> I will resume the Yuri Marathon. <laughs> But thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. The sensitive of Yuri Paddle is amazing. Oh, the Yuri Paddle was such an adventure. I, I was not prepared. Like of all the games for me to start with, I think I picked the game of all time. <laughs> I should never have doubted Sion when he was like, this is the, the most obnoxious character I've ever written. I didn't believe it. I should have believed it. I should have, I, I shouldn't have doubted him. <laughs> It was so fun. 
But yeah, this one is... I'm, I'm getting so nervous with this one. I love it so much. It's so beautiful. Uh, you'll have to disappear because it's 1am and you got to avoid spoilers. That is completely fair, yes. That is completely fair. But I hope you rest well. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the VODs of everyone else playing these games after I finish them. Because I, I want to I wanna watch other people play them too. <laughs> but thank you. I hope you sleep well. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. Fellow Bellflower. Another another member of the, the Street Ambassador program. We're the Bellflowers. But oh, it's so good. Yes, Scion never lies for better or worse. <laughs> it is true. It is true. I don't know. I, I shouldn't have doubted. Should not have doubted. I thought he meant Kaylee to begin with. She, she was annoying enough. <laughs> Oh, it was very good though. But yeah, this is this is so amazing. It's like I I have got such a soft spot for like dark fairy tale stuff. I think it's such an intriguing concept. I love the idea of like fairy tales and fae stories, but with like a twisted element to them. That kind of darkness makes it so interesting. I think it's it's, it's good. It's good. Anyway, let's let us resume. <laughs> Hold on, actually, I'm gonna have a drink before I, before I continue. Have a sippy of my monster. Uh, Sion said he wanted to write it so everyone would be so obnoxious and annoying anyone could be a killer. Yeah, I was, I was just like, anyone could have done this, to be honest. <laughs> I, I'm still suspicious of Senpai-chan. I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm, I'm watching. Don't think I don't know what goes on. Oh, it's so good, though. But yeah, this one is, like, such a tone shift from Yuri Paddle. It's so... It's so great. Like, going from, like, one thing to another like this. I, I love this style. It's... This, this whole game, like, the atmosphere is just so spot on. It is just a fairy tale. I love it. It's beautiful. What happens if she's not there, Naira? She didn't seem as certain yesterday. Did you follow her home? How did she seem? Hi, you're not you're not singing? Oh no, the blackbird's not singing. This doesn't feel good. <laughs> oh, I love the Fae and stories of the Fae. Yes. Oh, Fae Aladrin in an upcoming D and D game. Oh. They're elves whose appearance changes with their mood. That sounds so cool. That would be so cool. I love that. Yeah, I say go for it. Uh, I, I don't know what your other ideas are, but, but, but I go for that one. That's cool. <laughs> What's worse, Naira? Having no one to talk to but myself or talking to a bird? All right, keep flying with me in silence then. Ilsa, are you here yet? I picked a fight with Creamhild, so she'll think I'm sulking in my room. Even if she checks on me an hour from now, what can she do? That's not quite what I had in mind. Now, that glamour you showed me yesterday, how does it work? Or is it just cosmetic? Oh my goodness! I've got another raid. Whoa! Aiko! Aiko-san! Hello, Potato Fox raid! Hello! Welcome in, welcome raiders! How's it going? Oh, thank you for the raid. Welcome on in. Bring in the potatoes. Oh, I, I, I was going to try bounce it on my head, but it fell. <laughs> it fell. No, I've got more. Yes. Potato time. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for the raid. How was your stream? I hope you had a good stream. I hope you had a lot of fun in VR chat. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. Welcome. Welcome in, raiders. To anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK. And I love comfy games and puzzle games. And um, it is Women Wednesday today. And I'm playing some Yuri visual novels, which just came out a couple of days ago. Four whole games, four free-to-play games. Um, because I'm a silly person, I'm trying to play all of them in one day. And I'm still on the second one out of four, after like four hours. So this is going to be a long stream. 
but I'm excited to play them. They're really good. You're okay, okay. Oh, I am as well. Thank you. I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you so much for the raid. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. But yes, I hope you had a good stream. Welcome on in, everybody. If you have to go to sleep, if you have to go to bed, that's completely fine. Please go sleep if you need to. But uh, if you want to stick around, I was going to say comfy vibes. I'm a little worried at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I love when the, the emotes land on my head and they stay there. Because... <laughs> Um, a lot of the time they just bounce off, but sometimes they get stuck and I, I just have an emote on my head. Like, can I catch one? I almost caught it. <laughs> I love them. It's a lot of fun. And thank you for the hydrate too. I will have a sip of my monster. Because monster is hydrating. Don't worry about it. But, oh, thank you very much for the raid though. I... I hope you have a a lovely rest of your day. It's it's late for you though, isn't it? Wait, I've I've just got three raids. Oh my goodness! Hi, <laughs> Arahad. Hello, welcome, welcome on in raiders. Hi. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much for the raid. Oh, I've got so much on my head right now. He he he. It's stuck. It's stuck. No, come back. Come back. N no, I lost it. No. Come back, this way. Ah. On my jacket. <laughs> Thank you for the raid, Yuri raid, Yuri raid. Well, if, if you're here for Yuri, you are in the right place. Because I am having a little marathon stream today playing all of the, the new games from the Studio Elan uh, recent game jam they did, the Garden Variety Game Jam. Uh, the dandelion set. Um, I'm, I'm going to try and play all four games. I don't know if I'll manage all of them. We'll see how things go later on. But uh, I'm, I'm part way through now. I'm currently on the second game I'm playing, which is on Wings Bringing Sleep. And I'm, my heart, I feel like my heart is going to be broken by this game. I've got the impression this is going to break my heart. I'm a little worried, but I'm still here for it. It's such a great dark fairy tale. I love it so much so far. But uh, thank you so much for the raid. Oh, you were playing one yourself. Oh, which one were you playing? Because so far I've played Yuri Paddle and I've, I'm playing this one. I think I'm probably close to the end. And then I'm going to play Upwards Rain and then I'm going to play Witchy Wand. <laughs> But yeah, oh, I'm so glad you could bring the raid this way. Thank you to anyone who's new here. Hello, I'm Liri. I'm a pink haired cat girl from the UK and I love comfy games and puzzle games and women. Happy Women Wednesday. <laughs> oh, which you want? Oh, I'm excited to play that one. It looks so pretty. I'm so excited for it. But uh, thank you so much for the raid. If any of the raiders have to head off and... Look after yourselves, get some rest, get some food and drink. That is completely fine. But if you want to stick around for a bit, I'm, I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> I'll be here for quite a while. But thank you so much. Right, back to the game. Now, that glamour you showed me yesterday. How does it work? Is it just cosmetic? Ah, uh, before we do that... It's fine if you'd rather not, but I brought you something you might want to wear. Just in case... well... Yes, that's wise. I shouldn't crawl back through my window wearing clothes all dirtied from dancing. Right, definitely. You can change behind... a tree, I suppose. Huh, right. Just a moment, then. Somehow, I'm still terrified she'll be wise and take this moment to run. It's good to have one more moment without the sight of her shaping every thought of mine. Morgane? I appreciate the kindness, but I don't know about this dress. Oh, does it not fit? It does. I can hear her inhale from yards away. She steps back into the grove with her fists bunched into her pale skirts, her head lowered as I see... Ah. The neckline is lower than even her nightgowns, 
and the sleeves shorter than any I've seen her wear. Lurid violet fades into rings of pink and putrous across her collarbone and arms. Oh, the bruises. Ugh. It's not a revelation anymore, but I didn't see the full of it that night in her cottage. And she did say that she picked a fight with her sister. Oof. 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 Susan, we're here for a risky care package. Okay, don't look. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at the screen, but I will take the, the risky care package. Oh, it's on cooldown. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, I, I missed... Uh, I did the hydrate. I forgot the posture check. I didn't stretch. Let me... Let me have a big stretch. Thank you. Thank you for the redeem. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you, Suzume. Don't get spoiled. Bye-bye. Is she gone? Is she gone? Can I continue? <laughs> the flying visit to avoid spoilers. Ah, the glamour. Right. To use it. Do you mind if I touch you? She hesitates. One more way of reminding me that I only have an idea of what to do. But when she steps forward, I crush the charm beneath, between my fingers and bring it to my mouth. With the breath of my intent, I have to trust in my own will. I've only seen Mother make these charms, not how they're actually cast. Oh, I've only seen Mother make these charms, not how they're actually cast. But it's about seeing what you want to see. I want Ilsa to be unheard. If she's only enchanted to look like one of the folk, will she still be wounded so easily? I start with her left shoulder. I'd feel less alarmed to have someone lay their hands there, wouldn't I? My hand hovers above it for a long moment. It would be easier if magic could be absorbed that way, through space and will, and no touch was necessary. I hold my breath when my fingers meet her skin, and she exhales as I hold us both in place. Mend. I've watched Mother heal other folk in a hundred different ways. The magic wants more than memory, though. I can't fix Ilsa without feeling her, the alien bumps that rise along her skin, a sense shared between us that I can only describe as a cold heat. These are normal human sensations? I slowly slide my hand down the length of where the bruises cover her arm. I can't cut myself off from this tether, no matter how it tries to seize me. <laughs> Careful. Some of them are still... sensitive. Clearly I'm doing something wrong, I just don't know what. How cruel will I seem though, offering her a hope like the Revel and then failing to give it to her? Maybe... you can help me? Help? How would I... It's just an idea, but... No, I'm not imagining it. My magic works better when you're involved. I just need you to think about these bruises going away and about yourself as one of us. Well, I've let it slip that I'm not quite the all-powerful child of gods. What if her disappointment is less for the revel and just for me? But she lays her hand over where mine still covers one of the larger bruises. Don't erase all of them if it's too much. Focus more on my face or whatever else the glamour is for. It's a bit strange, touching her, but not exactly. Her hand is the one... Oh, her hand is the one that guides mine up the angles of her face, delicately presses her eyes closed, winding pieces of her hair around my fingers and teasing points out of her ears. I see now what was wrong before. I was too afraid to picture her physically in the way the spell needs. It's changing nothing deeper than her flesh, but I still have to shape the glamour around every freckle and mark. Where it's slightly paler, where her clothes usually cover it. What's shaped differently in her than it is in me. We move more quickly over her chest <laughs> and finish with a sweep down her right arm that leaves me huffing louder than I'd thought. Maybe the magic did take some small toll from Ilsa, too, for the quickening of her own breath. I didn't let myself look at the picture in progress, more than making sure it was changing. But now? <gasps> Whoa! Oh, look at her. A part of me sees what I know is Ilsa. 
but laid over the face I've come to know, she's almost a fairer mirror. Ears the same length and sharpness as mine, and horns... Why horns? Is that an endowment my magic gave her? How do you feel? She touches a hand to her chest, halfway to wincing, and flattens it across the smooth skin where pain never comes. Like someone different. You are tonight, whoever you'd like to be. It's still true, this is all I can give her for now. But if she ever said it out loud... No, not even. Let Creamhild come hunting in the wood one day and see who greets her. Here. The berries! With every step closer to the lungs, I wait for fear. Ilsa is barely even following me though, matching my pace so determined that her fists are bunched back at her sides. She's not afraid. So why should I be, either, of my own people? I know we're growing close when my wreaths begin appearing, nailed to every second or third tree we pass. I do stop to brush a finger over one's woven stalks, and I feel it. A flutter of response. It can finally take a bit of my magic with everyone else's. The heady crackle of it is already thickening on the air. It's all that outruns the music. The folk are not idle when it comes to our music. When our magic grows too overwhelming to be contained to a command, the rest blossoms into song. A song is something to be savoured, the last suck of marrow from the bone. It's simple, sh simple strikes now, measured beats. They waver on the air with a promise that I wonder if Ilsa can hear, a call to gather. This isn't my first ravel, of course, but it's hers. That sends a different rush through me, that I'll be able to watch her and see... She'll shine. Our hands will stay locked together like this, and she'll come the closest she ever will to magic. Hmm. Huh. Alright. Thank you for... Thank you for preparing me. I... This would have been too much if you hadn't. You still feel like yourself? Well, of course not. That's what's beautiful. What's the point of formalities? I've seen every one of the folk around us each day for 18 years, and no revel greetings will change how I'm received by them any other day or night. When we first step into the circle that's forming in the lungs, though, I expect every head to turn our way. I wouldn't wonder how they'd spent every day of eternity not noticing this radiant folk woman dressed in shades of the sunrise. Then I see her. Dahlia, literally glowing from the golden powder speckled over her skin, halts in her conversation with several of her mountain folk kin. For just a moment. This might be awkward. Hmm. Her eyes narrow on me and Ilsa before she emptily laughs at a companion's story. We've kept well out of each other's ways since... I'm not sure what's more vivid in my memory, the words we said to each other or the failed seduction. It's not as if I'm planning on letting Ilsa out of my sight, but... Oh no, I'm worried now, no! That woman, there in the red dress, you don't want any business with her more so than any other fae leading me astray into the woods. We have history. I spend so much time on my lonesome in the wood, it's easy to forget what a proper gathering of the folk feels like. What could Ilsa even compare it to? The largest of crowds she could possibly have been in still wouldn't have anyone with strips of fur down their spines, extra digits to their fingers and toes, cloven hooves and sharpened talons. The lungs is no small wooded hollow, but anywhere the, the rising moon's light can break through the trees. Five folk are practically climbing on top of each other to feel it brightest. The food and wine are already taking their effects. Best not to let anyone, uh, best not to let everyone else out piece us. Ilsa's sip is as measured as, and dainty as from my water skin back in the grove, 
But that sliver of Dahlia's attention knocked something in me ajar. When she kissed me, she felt right back into the script of our old dalliances. I need to be a Morgane that Dahlia can't expect anything from tonight. I barely taste the wine. It goes down my throat so quickly. So pretty. Mother will have to make an appearance sometime tonight. But it's still too early for her to be forced by duty from the college, from the from the cottage, cottage college. Oh, I'm gonna have some monster. Suddenly forgetting how to read. Help! <laughs> the folk who lead this first proper dance are among the oldest of the old who we remain, and it's not one that wills me to much more than tapping my foot against the grass. I promised Ilsa a like a night like no other. Not this. There we go. That's, that's more like it. Oh, this is loud. <laughs> the next dance is for younger women. The beating percussion quickening and joining up with softly clamoring bells. Follow my lead, you'll learn it like a natural. It does sound a bit like something from home. Yes, it's a dance for young women. So as soon as Ilsa and I join the edge of the crowd, Dahlia does the same. Be careful with this part. The rhythm changes suddenly in the chorus. Then just lift your arms and... Yeah, I don't know why this... I think it's just this song. This song specifically is quite loud. There we go. That's, that's a more reasonable level. But I think I'm going to have to turn it up again when the background music changes. I'm, I'm submitting a bug report. This can can you please lower the dB of this song? Thank you. <laughs> that that's that's more reasonable. I can I can hear myself think now. <laughs> it's it play again. Yeah, there there it is. <laughs> yes, it's a dance for young women. So as soon as Ilsa and I join the edge of the crowd, Dahlia does the same. Be careful with this part. The rhythm changes suddenly in the chorus. Then just lift your arms and. I think I'm starting to find it. Connect my hands to the arch. And then back down, yes! Even when the dance partners switch, I make sure to keep sight of her. But Ilsa is taking to this better than I could have ever expected. The dancers around her fall into her thrall, too charmed by her smile and light feet to think too hard about whether they've actually seen her face before. <laughs> I knew it, of course, but seeing the picture from my mind take flesh so perfectly... She's charmed them all within three choruses. The first human to grace a folk revel in what might be centuries. The dancing, as with the music, also serves a purpose. The op. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. It's off cooldown now. <laughs> there it is. There's the drive-by care package. Thank you. Thank you. Now look away. No spoilers. Big stretch. Ah. Thank you, Suzume. <laughs> All right, back to it. Uh, the full moon makes this year's midsummer even more potent, and combined with the cakes and wine, magic is already starting to slough off folk like an oversized dressing gown. The music quickens again, a lyre picking up from the bells. I'm less sure of where the pull of bodies around me is coming from, whether we all move as one or if this is how the lungs got its nickname. And the wood is what's breathing, trying to gasp us back to our full power. Something tickles the soles of my feet when I bring them up and set them back down. Ilsa catches my arm, and in a surge of selfishness, I pull her closer. Look at the ground. Did I do that? Watching the path of my feet instead of letting the dance carry them is harder than it seems. Ilsa and I stumble together, her shoulder colliding with my chest. But we both look down and then back at each other with equally silly grins. Several small, oh, small patches of flowers are blooming everywhere my feet land. Tomorrow, someone will be able to trace every dance between me and Ilsa. Two girls lost in the revel, leaving a memory that can only be ours. Oh. Song after song after song. Ilsa's breath starts to come heavier, heaving into every step but she never shows a sign of wanting to stop. 
She leans into when the harmony of twin fiddles soars its presence through the night, a need so naked that it's spelled clear as any command of magic. And I wish that there was a way that a body could meld into a song, and its sound could be all the flesh and blood it needed. Ilsa. What? What game? It's not funny, really, but for what felt like a moment there, I started to forget about you. Is it the song? I felt like I was all that existed in this entire forest. I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit now. There we go. There we go. Just for the dance. Just for the dance. <laughs> I saved this from yesterday. Do you want to try it again? I couldn't bring myself to finish off the plum Ilsa bit into after her story. I had the sense maybe the timing just wasn't right. Do you think? I don't want to think right now. Do you feel differently? No. We have exactly the same mind, you and I. The way she bites into the fruit is the same as before. More like watching a wolf tear meat from the bone. I try to match her as I watch her throat swell, my teeth just overlapping the ridge of where hers pierced the plum's flesh. Sweet, then sour. The same effect takes hold faster than before, although I still can't describe what it is. It's... It's like the haze of wild magic swirling around us when the moonlight hits my face and makes me feel like the storm-calling folk of old. Maybe this feeling is infinity, or wanting it. Dance with me, Morgane. We take hold of each other more fiercely than before, Ilsa's fingertips cling, uh, digging into my wrists. I shift one hand to her waist, tethering us together as the dance pulses around us. That zinging sensation beneath my skin is stronger, like some baser creature is trying to tear out of the prison of my flesh. Maybe it's me. Ilsa really is a quick study. This dance stomps, swerves, tries to blur your... Pl tries to blur your up from down. She holds our gazes together, what feels like a command not to falter. I... I know that look. What are you trying not to think about? What's right in front of me? Something heavier than understanding enters her eyes. As she presses our bodies closer, her hand cautiously brushes my neck. This isn't the night or the girl for caution. I want to drink her, open her up, try and know the taste of her secrets. I want every one of the folk in the world to have no illusion of what we are. If she sees all this in me and isn't afraid, I push a strand of hair back, and at just that soft brush of fingertip against the shell of her ear, she makes a little gasp of a sound and leans upward. When our lips first meet, it feels like its own test. Having to guarantee some invisible veil won't fall between us and stop human and folk from longing this openly. We pull back from the sheer shock of it, I think. Then she gasps again, her breath hot against my lips. Dahlia didn't make fun of how we would kiss, but she always wanted me softer. I tried to take control too quickly, went right from introduction to needing as much of her as I could bear. So I try to hold back to be, what did Ilsa call me that gave me a little thrill? A gentlewoman. She gives way against me though, no more pretense of keeping any space between us. I lick the last of the plum's juice from her lips and kiss her how I've been famished too. Something happens when her hand cradles the nape of my neck, her fingers teasing the ridge of my spine and all the world stops except for the music's beating drums. All the shivering sparks I feel from the fruit and the dancing, they collide in my chest, exploding through me. There's something moving beneath the muscles of my back. My body feels so limited, even as I use all of it to grab hold of Ilsa. Does she feel it too? Whatever this magic creators at a 
<laughs> Whatever this magic created as it squirms under my skin. Would she want that too? As I think it, she runs her hand right over the pulse of it, the center of my back, right between the blades of my shoulders. I faintly hear a sound like ripping fabric, but wetter, the push of something demanding to grow forth. And then, the feeling. A bit of pain, yes, but all at once, something of me is taking up more space. There's a sensation almost like tickling across my chest as well. And I look down as Ilsa gasps and pulls her hand back from it. Feathers? Oh my goodness, this is... Oh no. Oh my goodness, that is the most inappropriate moment for jopping to happen. <laughs> oh my goodness, I set an alarm for half six. <laughs> I forgot about it. Oh my goodness, that is the most inappropriate timing. Uh, my phone alarm is dropping, so just this beautiful moment, this incredible moment in the game. Suddenly my phone starts dropping behind me. <laughs> oh no, that startled me. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Oh, Feathers? Morgane, you look over your shoulder. She's not the only one noticing whatever's happened to me. I look. Wings. Half folded behind me, a pair of shining black wings nearly the same height as me. They pull slightly at my back, shifting my posture. New sensation, muscles, nerve endings, all suddenly grafted onto my former awareness of my body. I think. Flap. They unfurl faster than I realize, and the folk nearest to me have to stumble out of their way. More are stopping in their dance as they notice me, but the music keeps going. An odd dissonance. I flex my shoulders back, let the movement carry into the wings, and sure enough, they answer to me. Ilsa, I... So this is you, one of the Fae. She's right. This is my endowment, the reflection of my magic that manifests for every matured folk. And just like before, I have Ilsa to thank for it finally coming forth. Thank you, Ilsa, thank you. I can't help it, I kiss her again. More of the folk resume their festivities, giving us a bit more space. I feel a shift though. Regard as something that changes the air, and that air has never been so light. In every sense, this is where I belong. Morgane? Mother? I hadn't even thought about... Well, I've had more reasons than usual recently to avoid Mother. Speaking of which... Ah... Uh, Ilsa's already made herself scarce. And why wouldn't she? This is the horned queen of her childhood nightmares. And she just heard me call her mother. You've come into your own, I see. Yes, it hasn't been for long, but... You ought to have told me that you'd accessed your magic. I was going to help you when you did. She actually looks upset. Is it that black and white in her mind, holding her daughter at arm's length for years over something I couldn't even control, and now everything is just supposed to be... fine? And now everyone around us is stopping with Mother's arrival. She's supposed to sing the most important of the enchantments, say some words about maintaining the peace, but... Is my part the dutiful apprentice now? Funny. Just a handful of weeks ago, I would have longed for that. I've managed on my own so far. Yes, I can see that. Even so, our power requires a firm hand. Someone who understands. <coughs> no. That sounds like no. No, I swear to God. No. If I'm... No. 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 
No, what? No, there's blood everywhere. No! 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 I'm not really thinking as I spread my new wings again, but alarm turns a running start towards that sound into me lifting off the ground. It's far from graceful, but it carries me above the panic that starts. I'm the first one to make it to her, and I see... Ilsa, standing upright with wide eyes. There's blood. <gasps> no! The bodice of her dress is drenched in it, and I can hear how frantically her heart is pumping, but there's no sound coming from her. No! 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 No, no, no! No, this is the salt! No! No, this is the lullaby! No! I thought it was going to be the other way around, but Morgaine is the bird. No! No, not like this! No! No! What's she holding in her hand? Morgaine, I... Wait! She flees back into the wood before I can reach for her. When I move to follow her, my foot knocks into Dahlia's dead, right? Yeah. Oh no. Oh. Oh no, Dahlia? She's not screaming anymore, but even lying curled upon the ground, I see how much blood she's covered in. Her hands are clamped over her face, and what little sound she's making now can barely even be called whimpers. There's something other than blood on what I can see of her face. It looks paler, thicker. Morgan, what is... Move aside. But mother, I know her, let me help. Wait, there's something sticking out from between Dahlia's fingers. It looks like... Morgan, do you have um, any empty collecting vials in your bag right now? Uh, vials? Uh, I think so. I need two of them. Don't just stand there. If you want to help her, it needs to be now. Whoever put her eye out did so with an old human weapon. Daggers like these were only forged for the purpose of killing folk. Her eye? If she left her dagger behind, was that what Ilsa was... This... This has to be a misunderstanding, somehow. Maybe... Dahlia just got jealous and Ilsa overreacted, or...? You can't just stand there in times like this if you want your magic to be of any use. The vials, now! Yeah, yes mother. Watch carefully and hope that you never have to use this sort of spell yourself. Mother, how many times has she done this before to stay so calm? She crushes some sort of flower. From the glimpse I see of red and white, I think it's anemone petals. Then she slices open the pad of her thumb on the tip of her horn and bleeds it into the two small vials that clatter together in my shaking hands as I offer them to her. But when she takes out a smaller knife of her own and brings it to Dahlia's arm... No, don't hurt her any further! I'm not. This is our only chance at sparing her life. Is Dahlia even still breathing? There, a little bit, but... Mother is right, she doesn't have much longer. She does the same thing with Dahlia's blood into the vials, but before sealing either of them, she... she... Don't look so horrified. Blood magic is unpleasant by design. And with that, she swallows a sip of what precious little blood Dahlia has left. When she drips the second vial of their combined blood into Dahlia's mouth, I can't stomach it. As I told you, Morgan, pray that you never have to wield more than flowers. This is wartime magic. The slumber that it puts her into isn't meant for longer than a few days, but it will suspend her in this state long enough for me to properly heal her without worsening the damage. Only I can wake her up by drinking the rest of the blood, or someone else could make her do the same if I somehow waylaid my vial. Now, did you see who attacked her? A human shouldn't have made it this deep into the wood on their own, but I'm loath to su suspect a kinsfolk. I... No. They were already running off by the time I got here. 
I have to... Th there's some explanation for this that I just haven't figured out yet. The Ilsa, I know she wouldn't do this. Her hand was forced somehow. I know it. But that look in her eyes... And why would she have a dagger that's only purposes? In all the times we've met, she's never hurt me. There has to be something I'm not understanding. Or... Was Ilsa planning this all along? I should not have done this now. I, I love how it's, there's still blood everywhere. Even with the beauty of the the glade, the, the flowers, there's still blood everywhere. I should not have done this, Naira. There's not a single reason I should be waiting at this edge of the wood, hoping Mother believed that I'm just gathering what plants we'll need to try and save Dahlia's. Gathering plants. The same excuse I used every time I snuck out to visit Ilsa. Helpless in... what? Loneliness? Love? It feels like I shouldn't even be thinking that right now, but... When I told myself that I wanted her secrets, this wasn't what I would have expected. What's even my plan here, Naira? Corner her when she comes outside again? Break in and demand... Dahlia's eye? I can't get what was left of it. Not even... Who, whoever pictures that being all that makes up an eye? Mother made me clean her face before I slipped off. Breathe, damn it, breathe. Whew. My answer's the same as it was an hour ago, Ilsa. We're not leaving. Aren't you always telling me how I'm a child? How else should I describe the way you're acting, Creamhild? Do you think this was easy for me? What sort of sister does what you've done? Lying to her own family, taking their rightful chances. It seems that was all easy enough for you. It's not as if you had made your move in six months. I knew it. I knew it. Right at the beginning, I knew it. I knew it. I, I, oh, I didn't want to be right. I did not want to be right. But I knew it. I knew Ilsa was too good to be true. I was like, I don't... Uh, there's something up here. I found a fae and I claimed a trophy in just a few weeks. So maybe I deserve the throne. Did you see it that way? What? The throne? Surely with nothing more than your girlish wiles and cheer luck. And not any of the notes and research you've spent years spying on over my shoulder. No, it, it wasn't like that. Ilsa, what exactly did you do? Well, what was all the combat training you were giving me for if I wasn't meant to use it? Any young woman, let alone a princess, should be able to defend herself. Especially when the younger's role is to be married off to some stranger for the sake of an alliance. The test that father gave you was to kill a fae and bring back proof. So I don't see why you're so upset that I managed it first, when you're the one who insisted on bringing me along. Do you really think being two years older automatically means you deserve to be Queen more? I deserve it because I've spent half of your life being mother. And it only makes all those years fair if I can finally have her other title. Well, I'm sorry for destroying your life that much. And I suppose you'll just think of this as one more way. A sound cuts her off. One I don't want to admit that I've imagined. Short, sharp. The precise strike of a hand shot out before the person making the strike even realizes what they're doing. You've been wanting to do that for a long time, haven't you? Oh boy. Ilsa, I... Wait, Ilsa, I'm sorry! Footsteps rushed towards me, and I realized I'd moved like I was going to throw the front door open. It's the same camouflage spell that I use when Ilsa flings it open instead, cradling one hand to her reddened cheek and looking as devastated as I've felt since last night. Oh, you little... Oh, oh how dare she. She sinks to her knees right there in the grass and gives a closed mouth wail that makes every bit of magic within me sing to comfort her. But she's devastated about... What? 
lying to me? Or her sister? I look at her like this, still the human girl I held in my arms and kissed hard enough to transform into something new. And someone who I realize I don't know at all. I feel... Morgane, are you here? I want to go to her. I can't. <sighs> Dahlia? Can I talk to you? Looking, look at you. I never thought that you... That I'd be better off than you. You're here stuck under that spell mother cast on you. And would you know, it's terrible for me too. I don't know what happened that ended with you like this. You're asleep, you shouldn't look like that. No, I do know. I wasn't looking out enough and now you're like this and Ilsa... Ilsa... You couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? You never could. Was it seeing her or me? She's no different from how I was back then, really. I was surprised when you stayed my friend even after you fully changed. That was what really bonded us, wasn't it? The first time that we kissed, it was more than what I thought one of the folk would do. It was your first time too, wasn't it? You were so confident and I just missed every signal, overlooked every little touch until you had to grab my face that night up in the pine tree and kiss me. Well, no, I don't think that's true. I let you think that I was so naive. When I realized maybe we could be something more, I liked your attention. I felt how your eyes followed me everywhere we went. I knew it made you feel so hopeless when I ignored your hand brushing mine, when I laughed off your flirting. I'd never had that before, someone who wanted me. And I'd never been a person who could decide how much to give someone. I wanted you too, I really did, but the folk have always loved you. The first changeling in decades and you changed so well. Do you know how it feels to realize you have power for the first time in your life? and over someone who's everything you're supposed to be? I was stupid, I know. Saying it out loud, I feel... Well, I do know what I was thinking. I couldn't even explain myself to you without you having to be half dead in front of me first. I'm being a real coward now, Dahlia. This is what that actually sounds like from me. But when did I... When I did decide to love and be loved... I didn't realize how badly I'd hurt myself denying you like that. You wanted me so much by that point, I fell completely into you. I would go for walks in the wood at any time of day or night, and just suddenly think, there's someone in this world who loves me. I had to always be by your side so I could remember that. It's no wonder you stopped liking what you saw once I reached that point. I thought after you ended things, so that's love. I was fine with learning that from you. I didn't trust myself not to do the same things all over again if another girl somehow looked my way. Was that what really bothered you about Ilsa? Because with her, I'm more confused. Of course, I thought she was beautiful. I can't say there weren't signs. Oh, oh no, I did do it all over again, didn't I? But I, I couldn't have guessed. Oh, I'm sorry about your eye. I don't know what that was. I saw her with that dagger before and I didn't know. She never tried to hurt me. That I know of. I can't bear it, Dahlia. If, if there's no way that I can have love without someone getting hurt, it means all the folk have always been right about me. That I'm just wrong. But you do deserve to know. I met a human girl on the boundary in the wood. Maybe you were right and some part of me was beguiling her all along. I found my magic and used it to sneak her into our most sacred festival. And within minutes of me realizing that maybe I love her, she tried to kill you with a weapon of our worst enemies. Which makes this my fault, really. You wouldn't be sleeping halfway towards death if I hadn't started 
wanting. Is that so? Oh boy. Oh dear. Oh dear. Mother? I'm not a fool, Morgane. I knew about the human girl. I smelled her on you that day you first met her. I just didn't think you'd be rash enough to bring her all the way into our fold. Mother, I can explain. Can you? I believe that I just heard the most honest version. Yeah, yeah. You may have those wings on your back now, Morgan, but I knew that you were still a child. I could only warn you in words so much. I thought, let it all happen again, she'll learn as I did. Oh. Oh. Though I admit this was a higher cost than I hoped to pay. To pay. I'm... Mm. Okay, I think I know what happened. As you did? Hey, you know that story? That story, eh? There's one more story for you to hear. And hear it you will. Okay, story time. <laughs> yeah. Less than ja, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Welcome in. Oh, you're just in time for story time. I think it's going to be lovely and not devastating. <laughs> Do you know what it really takes to bring down a god? The god must open their arms to weakness. Hunger, some call it, as if it's so simple a craving. When it happened to me, I called it love. Aika was curious. Not like the humans that had been described to me or any I'd danced with at a revel. We carried on for nearly a year, long enough for me to believe that I knew her. Oh, you'll be lurking. Oh, thank you for the lurk. I appreciate it. But thank you for the follow. Very much appreciated. We carried on for nearly, nearly a year, long enough for me to believe that I knew her. She never told me of her lost family and loved ones. I didn't guess at all to her vengefulness until I woke by her side one evening to her trying to saw my horn from my head. Some human superstition, I believe, that if you steal something from a folk's body, it will grant you their power. I was more than humiliated. If the folk were ever to learn of the role that I played in our downfall, in a sense, I did give Ika a power. She forged the first of those accused the, those accursed daggers from that stolen fragment of my horn. <gasps> oh, whoa. Certainly, I would exile from these lands any of our kind whose betrayal was so complete. So yes, I know what it is to love a human. All the muck and mire that's darkening your heart right now, it always ends this way. <gasps> Thank you for the hydrates! Oh my goodness. Ah. It always ends this way. Oof. I had planned to step in and deal with her myself when she inevitably turned on you, but... Stop talking. I understand. It's not the picture I've ever presented of myself to you before. You think that's... You absolute hypocrite. What could there possibly be for you to teach me? There's nothing I want to learn from someone who sets their child up to be sacrificed just to teach them a lesson. I cannot deny that a fair description of my actions. However, that's fair. That's all you have to say. What about I could have done anything differently? If you're truly all about history repeating itself, then you know. I think that Dahlia was nearly killed because of the same empty belief that your Ica had. Something that could have been cleared up long ago if you hadn't insisted on keeping the folk isolated. She's done far more wrong than I have. She's right, she doesn't deserve to call any of this realm home. Yet I'm the one who can't get far enough away from her. Whew. I don't care where I go. There's nothing left for me at all in the wood. 
Maybe I'll fly west to the mountains. Or see for myself how far the ocean stretches. See if I keep making the same mistakes somewhere there's no folk at all. Naira, where have you... What's that you're holding in your talons? Flowers? But that doesn't look like a bouquet. Oh. They're far from full bloom. How long ago did Ilsa and I make this crown? What was she planning even then? But she's the only one who could have sent this back to me. It has to mean something. Ah, uh, something is tucked between two of the strands. I swear, if this is an eyeball... No, it's a note. Oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> a moment of worry. A note? Morgane, please let me explain. Meet me in the grove this evening. No weapons, no magic. I meant as much of what I said to you as I thought that I could. If you can believe that, please come. Mother was betrayed and chose war, isolation. I'm not her, I won't be. I've still got some of Ilsa's flowers in my hair. Naira, fly these back to her, please. I'm coming for you one more time, Ilsa, please. Please have reason that gives this all a purpose. I'm here, Ilsa. If you are too, please, please just show yourself. <sighs> Ilsa? Oh, Morgane. Ilsa, where are you? Morgane, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I don't see her at first. She's standing halfway in the trees and hanging her head down. She asked me to come, but can she not even stand the sight of me? Except... It looks like there's something in her hands. Something dark. Cream held make me do it. I only thought it right to bring her back to you. <gasps> no! No! Her hands cradle Naira's limp body. And when I move closer, I can see that my friend's head is snapped at an unnatural angle. No! Some phantom sensation prickles down my spine, through my wings. I use them to partially fly here, but they're still so new. Why didn't I realize how similar they looked to Naira's? Creamheld made her do it, she says, but can I believe that any more than... Give her back to me. Go on then, explain whatever you want. You didn't make the greatest entrance. I, well, there's no easy way to say it. Creamhild and I aren't any two ordinary humans. Our father is the king. So I've been swooning over royalty this entire time. I overheard Creamhild call her a princess, but... He's obsessed with the fae and your magic. When I was born, he even meant to offer me up as a changeling, but my mother died giving birth to me. She made him swear that he would raise me and Creamhild as ordinary sisters. I don't know when exactly he started to plan it, but several months ago he told Creamhild that if she wanted to succeed him on the throne, he had come up with a task for her. She needed to venture into this forest, the last domain of the once mighty Fae, and bring him back proof that she had met and bested one of you. I don't know why she wanted for me to come along, our relationship was better when we were younger, until around when I was nine or ten. And then, something changed about her. Maybe I seemed less of a child by then. She's always treated me like a sister, but she'd kept, kept me at arm's length for years by that point. I said that I would go with her, in part because I missed her company, but also because... Well, a kingdom only has so many uses for a spare heir. I'm 18, and I hold no illusions about my father's plans for me. My mother was a countess from a land north of here, and I can serve as just as much a return on some other alliance. But I don't want that. I want... love. When we arrived at the cottage, Krimhild took after our father quite well. She pored over centuries of journals and accounts of the Fae, said she needed to plan her course of action down to the last detail. 
Except, one month turned into two, then three. I almost got the sense that she was stalling. Even though one thing I've never known her to have is nerves. And then, I had a thought. Father issued the task to Creamhild, but could I alter my fate if I somehow... But what about your bruises? You don't have to defend Creamhild anymore just because she's your sister. All of them are from her training me to fight. She's a harsh teacher, pragmatic to a fault, but not cruel. Betraying her would have been much easier if she were cruel. Yet you still did. You don't understand. You're going to live forever. You have magic. You literally have wings. Me, I play research assistant in the forest for a few months, watch my sister hesitate at the thought of ruling an entire realm, and then have a lifetime to look forward to of being married off to some strange duke or princess. Acting like Creamhild could is the closest chance I've ever had in my life to saying no to that. Acting before Creamhild could, yeah. And what was I then? How long were you batting your eyes at me while planning how you would slit my throat? Did you ever consider I could have helped you? How, Morgane? Please tell me how. I'm too old now to be a changeling. Would your plan have been to keep casting that glamour on me every single night and hope nobody ever realised I was a strange face or wonder why I didn't use any magic of my own? Face it, Morgane. There is no world for feelings like ours. And you don't know what cruelness you showed me, making me hope that there might be one. So, that's it. We shared a few kisses, went against every rule and instinct that's been pounded into our manners, and now we just leave it all here? Take it from someone who ruined her own first love, Ilsa. If any of this was real for you, you're going to spend the rest of your life remembering this grove, and these words we're saying now. And every time you do, you're going to be the Ilsa that you are now all over again. Screaming at her from the other side of whatever choice you think you're making to choose something else. Creamel told me something else too, after we fought over what I'd done. She said that there's a way that I can make it right for both of us. Doubt? Is it death? Is it... Both of us? What can that possibly mean? Thought it might be death. Thought it might be death. I don't see whatever shoots out of the growth until the intrusion of something in my body that shouldn't be. A tug on my shoulder, except more like it's connected to my shoulder, and it's only when I try to flex my wings that pain erupts. <laughs> All that talk about how much I hesitate, but it matters once the crossbow is in your hands. That's enough talking things out, Ilsa, and don't go begging me for any more time. Whatever she shot through my wing, I'm pinned to the tree Ilsa got me in front of. It's no pain like I've ever felt before. The wing almost feels disconnected from the rest of me, until I try to pull free again, and every bit of skin and muscle and bone that's been pierced through howls, trying to heal itself around the object and failing. Up until that point, it was very good luck, babe. Cool. No, I, I was still very much like, I, I don't trust any of this. I did not think it could be helped. I'm like, if there's a way that it can work for both of us, I'm like, is that like, both of you dying? Is that it? I... Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Oof. Oof. When I squirm and then spasm more when that widens the entry wound, warm, uh, wet warmth trickles down my wing clumping through the feathers in its path. I try to lay my hand on the tree trunk and breathe, but no, it's like before when I was completely powerless. Pain is supposed to be a felt sense, but this thing that's torn through my skin and split apart muscle is stealing my hearing, my sight. It's through a haze of screaming nerve endings that I see Creamheld press a familiar dagger into Ilse's hand. Take all the time you need. That crossbow bolt is made of the same stuff as this dagger. Go on, Ilsa, just like we decided. 
two trophies for that dear old father of ours, and then we share the throne. Kremhild, I, I, I just think I already took my trophy. Shouldn't you be the one to... Even after our little heart-to-heart, -heart, you don't understand the lesson here, Ilsa? I try and thrash again as she takes the hand of Ilsa's that's holding the dagger and jerks it up to, to the level of my throat. The pain is only getting worse, the rest of my body responding to a delayed call of alarm now. And there's a sense that one of us knows very well, and one of us has been sheltered enough to never know. It's your turn to look someone you love in the eyes and decide to lose a little bit of yourself over them. I don't want to do this again, Creamhill, no! Okay, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Wow. <laughs> But then, that sense, Ilsa described it, that sense Ilsa described heralding me all those times we met. I feel it this time. Within an instant, a sound builds through the wood, rising like a clamour of out-of-tune birdsong into a roar. The tree I'm pinned to rattles, and my body with it, another wave of pain tearing through my wing. I feel the eyes of the oldest trees aligning me in their sights, and I am nothing. It's all the announcing that Mother gives herself. The wood exhales her in a great gasp, and with a stride towards us and a swipe of the claws lengthening from her hand. Ah. Ilsa! No! She's already falling. <laughs> no. I, I should have I should have disabled the sound alerts for this. Oh my goodness. Oh no, I knew it. Oh, I knew it. No. She's already falling as she tries to bring her hand to the gouge his mother carved into her neck. I move to try and catch her. The joint that connects my wing to my body screams. And this time, I hear some internal part of me squelch against the crossbow bolt pierced through it. I jerk against it again, though, trying to stretch my hand to Ilsa. If I'm free of this bolt, I can use my magic again. I can save her. Devastation, it turns out, feels a lot like a wing being ripped from my back. Oof. Through the keening in my ears, the sound of it is almost like ripping fabric, every determined pull to peel flesh from flesh and tendon from meat. It doesn't come off all the way. The mangled weight of it slumps from me, pulling me down sideways as I fall towards Ilsa. And... Morgane! What is... what? What is... You killed my sister, Ilsa! All the hundreds of humans you've killed and you had to kill my sister! If Mother weren't right in front of me, I don't think I would see it for the pain. The first bolt takes her in the thigh, but even that doesn't stop her. She lunges for Kremhild like she did at Ilsa. And the second bolt tears through her chest. Something twinges in my breast, maybe sympathy? She's finally feeling the same hurt as we- oh my god. Her hands even go to try and pull it out as she slowly sinks to her knees. It's not until the cushioned thud of her legs hitting the ground that a dark shape, which can only be cremilled, moves closer to her. Neil could show hello! Welcome, you've joined at the, 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 the right at the end of this game. Um, a lot is happening. Uh, don't worry about it, we're okay. Hi! Hi! Hey, Elsa. Mother is grasping... No, oh, Mother is gasping something out, even now. Although I think it's to Creamhild. Coming all the way here to save her hopeless daughter, and then only having words for her would-be murderer? I guess she and Creamhild speak violence better than me, though. At least... At least we're going to die in this grove, right? We won't ever have to wonder what happened to the other. It's us in this place right until the end. Oddly, 
don't feel it when Mother dies. Or maybe she hasn't yet when the sawing noise starts. I keep my face pressed to the sweet-smelling red and white flowers it's fallen against until I hear the crack of her horn breaking loose. Until I hear Creamhild exhale and then make a sound that's barely anything at all. Something that withers and dies halfway out of her throat and then her footsteps turning and running away. Heaving myself through the flowers separating us, I make it to where Ilsa fell. Blood is still spurting from her neck, but she's as drenched in it already as Dahlia was. She tries to say something to me, but it's all right. I know. And I think I mean that I'm content with this. Let whatever is left of the folk find their leader and her daughter dead at the edge of the wood with a human girl lying between them. Let whatever history comes from it guess to this moment however it will. I shift onto my side to press Ilsa's body to mine before I close my eyes and... Through the all-consuming pain from my crippled wing, a small pressure at my hip lights through. That's right, I have all my gathering supplies with me. The same supplies I had on me at the revel. And those flowers that I just dragged myself through, whose petals scraped off all over me. Red and white. I think it's time to sleep. It's like they bloomed as soon as I was free of the crossbow bolt when my magic was unblocked and my hands cushioned my form. Hold on just a little longer, Ilsa. I roll onto my back, nearly screaming when the half stump of my wing folds even more unnaturally over itself. But a scream might draw Creamhill back to finish the job she thinks is already done. My hand rummages through all the pouches and pockets at my hip, long enough for me to think maybe I just made a prayer out of some stray, pre stray pebble when I feel the tempered glass of my vials. What did Mother do next as she hovered over Dahlia? I brush as many anemone petals from my clothes into my other hand as I can, mashing them between my blood-soaked fingers. Half the pulpy powder it creates into one vial, half into the other. At least there's no shortage of blood. And yet, some repulsion still stops me when I know what has to come next when I take the vial from the weakening trickle from Ilsa's neck and try to bring it to my mouth. Mother was right about this magic. I barely know what I'm doing and it feels uglier than anything else I've worked. Ilsa and Creamhild sobs playing amplified in my head while I picture the pale arch of her throat opening beneath Mother's claws over and over again. I press a kiss to her wound first, then turn her head enough to kiss her properly. I think she tries to help me. There, now history's made puppets of us both. And I choke her blood down as I feel her heartbeat start to fade. It feels like a block of ice melting in my core, the insistent agony of my wing reaching a new level of fever pitch, only dwarfed by the growing cold that is Ilsa's little remaining life flashing through me. I writhe in the ruins of our garden, my back arching as I try to find any way of easing the pain. This time someone fails to not cry out, though I'm beyond telling whether it's me or Ilsa making one last grasp towards life. Either way, when I bring my blood to her lips, she knows what to do. The connection between us snaps tight. I'm responsible for it, I have to be, and I try to breathe for both of us, to guide her suddenly, violently shuddering body to somewhere a little less close to death. Her breathing picks back up, a moment of her lungs working double time. Her eyes flutter shut and her head lolls against the grass with a laughing gentleness. But I've done it, and I can feel her like I've opened up her chest and put my beating heart right beside hers. She's only asleep. <laughs> if I was asked, how would I even tell our story? Once upon a time, I... No, that just feels wrong. I've tried not to think too long on it for a long time. Well, Ilsa, perhaps I should start with right after. It's never felt right hiding you away in the bedroom I never use. 
that it was the only place that I could in those first days, where none of the folk would dare to go looking for answers. Or vengeance. Will it ever stop being strange, thinking of myself as the last of the folk, even if it was a choice of mine to wear that mantle? The rest of us departed for parts unknown to me, at least. I asked Dahlia not to tell me where, so that I wouldn't be tempted to follow. I think because we owed each other a debt, she didn't question my reasonings. It's for the better that someone stayed behind, anyhow. Too much old magic sunken into the trees, and when it gets its hands on you humans, all sorts of odd things can happen with a custodian for it. Ah, those refugees who came from the south last month might be putting down roots here. It's a whole standing village, after all. I can't say it won't be strange watching the lungs breathe again. There's a child among them, a year or two younger than we were when we met, I would say. She seeks me out. I can't say I don't appreciate her company. I think she's trying to put in good words for me with the rest of her people. Oh, the optimism of youth, I'd forgotten how it felt. Do you even hear me at all when I go on and on to you like this? I remember something Dahlia told me about while she was under the sleeping spell. That she wasn't quite there in the way that you feel time when you're awake. But anyone who talked around or to her, uh, talked around or to her, were the intervals of dreams. And yes, there is some significance to the date today. Fifty-six years since that sister of yours took the human throne in the north. I don't know if maybe Mother's Horn did some, did hold some magic that's extended her lifespan this long, or if she's just that lucky. Or unlucky, perhaps. I've felt every one of the years since that night in Grove. I have to wonder how she does. Whatever Mother's final curse to her was. I'm sorry for a lot of things about this, Elsa. Another year when I thought I'd have woken you up by now. But for as long as Krimhild is alive and on the throne, she has to think that we both died with Mother. If she ever heard word that I remained or that you were at my side, Besides, that child, have you ever heard what she calls me? A guardian. And what kind of guardian would let her charges be trampled on by some princess retrieval squadron of sent by the inf infamous Queen Kriemhild? And I'm sorry that I haven't touched you in all these years. It's not how I want to think of you, holding your limp hand or leaning over lips that barely even pass breath between them. Is knowing that I've always been here, standing watch, enough? One day, Elsa. Soon, I can feel it. When the world that the cruelty of my careless love made you hope for has finally taken shape. When that last remainder of the boundaries dividing folk and humanity is no more than a faint memory, and all that we are is Morgana and Ilsa. I couldn't stand to hurt you anymore by bringing you back before then. I once thought, like all the folk, that we don't dream how humans do. But that's what I picture every time my mind wanders, or just when I close my eyes, like now. I don't desire for anything more than to laugh with you in a field of flowers again, and sing nothing but songs of love that don't end in despair. I'm sorry, Elsa, but can you sleep for just a few more days? Can you sleep and dream of all my love? Oh my goodness. On wings bringing sleep. Ah! Created by Studio Nekamata for the Studio Elan Dandelion Variety Game Jam. Story by Rose Crowned. Art by Dakuma. Direction by Lexi. Programming by Theo Minute and Lexi. Faye Consultation by Fairy Co. Music credits. Sound effects credits. Backgrounds. <laughs> and the US Bureau of Land Management. I'm sorry, that, that caught me by surprise. <laughs> Thank you for reading this tragic tale. We hope to one day return to Morgane and Ilsa and tell even more of their story. But until then, there's more, more, more. Sleep well. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was powerful. Oh, that was so powerful. 
Oh my goodness, I love that. Oh, I want more. I want more, yes. I want more of their story. I want, oh, oh, wow. Wow, that was powerful. That, what, a, what an incredible, incredible story. Wow, that was a lot though. Right, two down, two to go. I've already been streaming for five, five hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> this is definitely gonna be a long stream. But oh my goodness, that was amazing. Uh, did anyone notice the other titles on the books? Yeah, I pointed them out at the very start of the game. <laughs> I noticed them immediately. Oh, no, we had to cut out a lot for time. Oh, understandably. That's the thing with a game jam. It's You've got to be like, you've got to limit it to the, the scope of what you can accomplish in the time. But oh, I love the idea of being able to expand on it later though. I want more. I want more of their story. This is so good. But oh, that was incredible. That was so good. Oh, I'm so glad. Right, I think now is probably a good time for me to have a tiny little break. I'm gonna go and make myself some food because I'm hungry. <laughs> it's uh, it's 7 7 20 p.m. and I've not eaten dinner. So I'm gonna go make myself a sandwich. I'm, I'll be back like 10, 15, 20 minutes. I, I don't know exactly when. I'll try and be as fast as I can, but I need food. So I'm gonna go stand up, stretch my legs, grab some food, and then I'll be right back and we'll be playing Upwards Rain. So this is the opportunity for everyone else too. Stand up, stretch your legs, grab a drink, grab some food, and then we will resume. <laughs> but oh, it's so incredible. I'm, oh, I, I love this. I love this game jam so much. Oh. All right, I'm gonna send you over to the BRB screen while I go and get some, I'm just gonna make a sandwich. I'll just have a sandwich, it's easy. But uh, see you in a bit. Everyone look after yourselves. I might run some ads and stuff. Enjoy seeing, I don't even know what the ads are at the moment. Um, maybe there'll be some cool ones. <laughs> Thank you, let me pop away. Sandwich time, be right back.
everyone, I'm back! I'm back, I've returned. I've eaten food. I've had a drink. I've had a- I walked up and down stairs to stretch my legs. I have returned. And I'm ready for the third game. <laughs> it's time for Upwards Rain and immediately I'm just like, this soundtrack is so good. This is so good. This this game has a full original soundtrack made for it. Well, I, I think full. I, I don't know how many songs are in, but like the, the music in this game was also made in the game jam, which is so good. Oh, thank you for the poster check. Yeah, let me have a big stretch. Wow. Big stretch. And a sip of my drink. Thank you. That's so wild. That is, like, that's so powerful, honestly. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so excited to play. Honestly, all of these have been so amazing so far, but uh, I'm, I'm excited for this just because I keep seeing, seeing the, like, the icons. <laughs> like, Caps, when I see your icon, I'm, I'm like, I, I want to play Upwards Rain now. I need to know. I gotta know. Eight whole songs. Wait, that's great. That is the full soundtrack. Oh, wow. In the space of a month, that is, that's so powerful. That is so powerful. But yes, uh, it is time for the next game, which look, look how cute this custom cursor is. Look at this, it's a little wing. And as always, I'm starting with the credits. Yes, yeah, Sarah cooked, served, and we are eating. Oh, I'm, I'm eating, all right. Oh, it's amazing. Thank you for the head do. Hi, 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 everybody, welcome. Ba, 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 here we go, Upwards Rain, version 1.03. I think that's the right one. I hope it is. Writing and UI by Caps, art and gameplay by Theo, scripting and art by Papaya, original soundtrack by Sarah Mancuso. I, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name. I'm so sorry if I'm, oh, wait, that's me, that's me. My name, oh, I'm, I'm in the special thanks. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, that's me. <laughs> that's my name. <laughs> Yay. But, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Oh no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for putting me in the credits. I, I love seeing my name there. <laughs> That's so lovely, thank you. I'm so excited to to start this. So uh, now begins the second half of my, my Yuri game marathon stream. Like this was such a, like a, a last minute decision for me. It was such a spur of the moment thing. I was just like, what if I just play all of the games on one day? Because I'm gonna be really busy, but I'm not busy today. So what if I take advantage of that day? and just do all of them. <laughs> we'll see if I regret it when it gets to like midnight and I'm still going, but uh, I, I'm having so much fun so far. I just want to keep going anyway. So it's, it's going well, it's a good sign. And yeah, so there's this one, Upwards Rain, the post office of farewells. And then after that, I'll be playing Witch You Want, which I'm excited for as well. But yes, let's start. Let us begin. I love this wing. I love this wing. Although every time I say the word wing, I want to go like, wing, 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 the phone's winging. I don't know why. It's so pretty. Oh, it's very loud. Hold on. Oh, the ambience is still up. There we go. Let's turn that ambience down a bit. <laughs> oh, but the music and sound effects were the right level. That's good. There we go, a, a little quieter for the ambience. Far from the hustle and bustle of the capital of Alchemica lies a small coastal village by the name of Vite. Or Vite, 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 Vite. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm just failing to pronounce anything ever. By the name of that. In the mornings, those who live near Earthfoot residences are awoken by the scent of fresh bread being baked and cloth being spun, magic imbued within every creation. 
Throughout the day, Seaborn work tirelessly, the hammering of nails and sawing of wood being telltale signs of their presence. Though few in number, you can seemingly find one just about anywhere you go. As the sun sinks low, the spark bounds make themselves known, the quiet humming of their devices serving as a familiar ambience, as well as a promise that tomorrow will awaken to some new manner of convenience or innovation, though whether it'll last till the following sunset is always an uncertainty. Oh, you don't know how to pronounce it, and he <laughs> said we'll use whatever pronunciation the streamers agree on. Well, I'm going to say Vite, like Vitality. I'm going to call it Vite, and I'm going to say that's now the, the, the canon pronunciation. I'm, I'll give you that gift. Thank you. <laughs> Vite. That's, I, I guess it's the joy of like being in like a magical world. It, you can just pronounce it however you want. Like if you create a thing, you can just be like, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's what it is now. I have simply decided it. You have the power. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm in the credits. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. However, on the far eastern outskirts of the village, there lies a place that seldom makes a sound. A gargantuan tree climbing so high into the heavens that the clouds hide its canopy from view. <gasps> and at its base... Mortem Post, <laughs> a modest little post office the Gale kind call their home. Hmm, Mortem Post, what kind of post is here? Hmm. <gasps> it's so lovely! Mortem Post, the village of Vitae. The chime of a small bell tied to the entrance rings out through the empty building, just as it had done for the past 20 days. Hello? Hi! And, just as they had done the past 20 days, two sets of footsteps follow soon after, belonging to a young seaborn girl and the botanist who, until a moment ago, was tending to the tree's exterior. The scent of wood is overpowering to most on their first visit, Though the girl still seems to struggle with it even after several weeks of daily check-ins. The office being situated in a tree's interior makes it inescapable, with no windows they can open in a feeble attempt to mitigate it. Oh, but I feel like that would be a nice smell though, right? I guess it depends on how overpowering it is. Rain, you're on shift today! We've got a visitor! Though the back doors conceal, uh, conceal much, they can't disguise the fluttering and tumbling as a flighty little courier clumsily barrels forth, eventually opening the door with a slam. <laughs> Hi! Hello! I'm here! Good morning. I was half worried you'd still be in bed. Ah, um, nope! Wide awake, just like every other day. Ah, uh, of course, of course. And you simply didn't hear the bell ring since you were too engrossed in your morning duties, I trust? Well, you know, the courier's work is never done! <gasps> oh. All too true. Ha! <laughs> they fell for it again! Missouri is so easy to trick. Nice. Anyway, I'll leave the both of you to it. There's still some branches that need trimming out front, and I'd like that sorted before the day's deliveries. Leaving rain with a wave, Mizori makes their leave, the chime of the bell above the door marking the end of the conversation and the start of Rain's current task. She finally turns to Morton Post's guest, her smile instinctively dropping as she does so. Oh? Oh. It's her again. I've only had front desk duty a few times the past little while, but it's always gone the same way. Her name is... Mila? Myla? I never know how to pronounce this name either, even though there are celebrities. Hold on. I'm really... I'm so bad at pronunciations. Mila. Mila, Mila. I should know that. 
I should know that. Her name is Mila. So he's expecting a letter. I say what the protocol tells me to say and tell her that no, it hasn't arrived yet, and no, I can't double check. She leaves the post office looking super sad, which makes me feel sad too. Aw. Oh. The little courier shakes the thoughts from her mind, a stray feather or two coming loose and floating away in the process. Once the ruffling stops, a smile returns to her face. It's okay, just stick to the script, Rain, word for word. Kyle will get mad if you don't. Hello, welcome to Morton Post. What's your business with us today, miss? Um, I think a letter from my friend should have arrived by now. It hasn't been delivered yet, though. I see. Can I get your name? It, it's Mila. <laughs> Gotta go through the same charade. Rain dips two of her wing feathers in ink and scribbles down the date and Mila's name on the list they keep behind the desk. She wonders how helpful this rule can be as she wipes the remaining ink off with the nearby towel, when the entire page is filled with nothing but Mila's name. Okay, I've got your name written down. We'll look into it as soon as we're available, uh, as soon as we're able, but unfortunately, if it hasn't arrived at this time, there's a chance we haven't gotten it in yet. Uh, are you sure? You can't check in the back, just in case? It's been a long time. This part is always the hardest. Oh, thank you for the dictionary redeem. Wait, yeah, let's let's see what word we've got. Let's see if we get a related word. Let me get my dictionary out. We've got the letter U. Dictionary re redeem. I'll open it to you. And the word we have is universe. I guess that kind of works. Universe. Noun. All existing matter and space considered as a whole. And the origin is the Latin universus, which is which means combined into one. Nice. What is uh, the one after that is university. <laughs> Nice! Thank you for the dictionary redeem! Oh, here we go. This part is always the hardest. Oh, thank you for the head part too. I can't. Sorry, miss. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't have. I... The girl goes off script, turning away to hide the tears starting to well in her eyes before she says her goodbye. I... I'm sorry for bothering you. I won't come back tomorrow, promise. Oh, is she crying? I know she's always been sad about it, but this feels way worse. Something in Rain felt heavy, as if she had somehow swallowed a paperweight, tying up and twisting her insides before settling heavy in her heart. Watching Mila drag her feet towards the door, a single thought enters Rain's mind, spurring her to jump over the desk and speak up before the bell had its chance. <gasps> if Kyle never learns that I broke a rule, that's basically the same as not breaking a rule at all. That's definitely how it works. You are so right. Just don't get caught. It's fine. Wait! Mila jumps so high it would put any self-respecting courier's fi flight to shame. Thankfully, however, she stays in place once grounded again. Rain leans in, bringing her voice down to a whisper. I'm going to ask something, but you can never, ever tell anyone I said anything, okay? Uh, okay? The rules say I can't go back and check for you, but what if you went back and checked for you. Then we'd be fine. Aren't there any rules about letting me back there? We wouldn't be whispering right now if there wasn't, right? Ah, she's good. <gasps> Thank you for the hair change. Wait, my hair kind of matches rain like this, huh? Very similar. I've, I've got like the, the ruffled rain style. Thank you for the hair change, Redeem. <laughs> I'm matching. Ah, she's good. Well, even if there is, it'll only be for a little bit. We just gotta be quick and quiet. 
And if I'm going to break one rule, I at least want it to be the one where she gets to see it for herself. get you in trouble yeah it won't we'll be super sneaky and be back here before you know it um you're rain right that's what Mizori called you earlier yeah and you're mila mila offers a small smile a new and exciting experience for rain <laughs> thank you rain oh she just wants to help it's lovely oh no problem! Let's get moving! <gasps> Exciting. <gasps> whoa! Oh, whoa. That's a lot of post. Is this meant to be organized? <laughs> Maybe this is organized. I shouldn't judge. Sorry, there's like random cars revving up right outside my window. It's extremely distracting. I think they've gone. There we go. To Rain, the back of the post office is a familiar, comforting place. The same is true for most all of the Gale kind. The insular people rarely leaving their nests and heading into the village safer when their work required as much. For Mila, however, she feels as if she's stepping into an entirely new world as she catches her first glimpses of the interior. I, lo oh, I love this place. A surprising amount of natural light provided by the numerous windows to the outside provide her with more than enough opportunity to take her surroundings in. A seemingly infinite amount of colourful letters float slowly down from the eternally tall tree, the messages from the departed reminiscent of confetti for a never-ending festivity. I guess that's why it's the Morton Post. I see. I see. She looks upwards towards their source, following a trail of stairways, perches, and doors along the outer edges of the trunk. Whoa. That looks like a lot. It doesn't take long for her eyes to reach their destination. A giant net several stories above, coloured as a rainbow through the gaps of rope. To be a courier, ground floor. Welcome to Morton Post! Uh, again. It's... wow. I know! It's the best place in the whole world. How high up does it go? I asked Grandma the same thing once. She's the postmaster, but even she didn't know. So I guess the answer is just really, really high? Oh. How do you avoid getting lost in a place so big? Well, the world outside the tree is bigger. How do you avoid getting lost out there? Oh, um... The Seaborn fidgets in place, a small hint of red tinting her cheeks. Aww. <laughs> ah, well, don't worry. I know this place like the back of my wing. The ground level, anyway. Okay, I'll follow you as best I can. Please don't fly away, though. <laughs> I know you Seaborn can't fly with those noodle arms. It's fine. Anyway, let's get going then. We'll find your box in no time. Rain does a quick about face, her cloak muffling the ruffle of her wings beneath, and begins marching to the opposite side of the room with Mila following close behind. Rain occasionally catches some letters midair and skims the names before filing them away in her cloak. All of the envelopes are really colourful compared to the usual mail we get. Yep. Grandma says she thinks it's so the letters stand out more and don't get lost. She thinks? Yeah, I love it. Like the back of my wing. It makes sense. You wouldn't say like the back of my hand if you don't have hands. If she doesn't know for sure, then a real answer just doesn't exist. She knows everything there is to know about this place. It's kind of scary how there's some things about how the office works that no one knows. Really? I think it's cool. <laughs> oh, I love them both already. Ah. The small talk between the two continues as they round one corner and then another. 
Eventually, the two find themselves in a large room with numerous outgoing boxes, one for each person in Vite. The more I say it, the more I think it should be Vite. I think it's Vite, actually. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm uh, retconning the, the canon that I imposed upon it. I think Vite. Vite feels better to say, I think. Humbly, in my onion. <laughs> Yes! Oh, is, is that what you were hoping for? Oh, you lost a bet! Oh, wait, I just like... <laughs> I just made you win the bet retroactively because I changed my mind. That's great. You are welcome. I did that for you, definitely. <laughs> Rain takes her time filing away the letters she int intercepted on her way over starting from the bottom, just as she was taught, while Mila is much more anxious to find her own box. Eventually, with her other letters put in their rightful places, Rain stops in front of a box. Mila assumes it must be hers, even if the vertical writing is unreadable to her. Rain gestures with her wing, confirming her hunch. So what's the problem? Oh. It's empty. Yeah, I'm sorry. But at least now you know, right? Mila sniffles. Oh no! <laughs> no! Oh no! I... I'm sorry. What for? It's not your fault there's no that nothing's there. I. Mom told me that Dandelion wasn't going to send me anything and I needed to stop bothering the post office workers. I lied and said I was going out to play instead. Her mom said her friend wouldn't have anything to tell her. That's so mean. Why would she say something like that? Just because it's been a long time? No, I don't think so. <laughs> she said the same thing at the start, too. That's so cruel. Were you and Dandelion super close? Yeah. Dandy and I did everything together. She was my best friend. I thought I was hers too, but she, she would have said something by now, wouldn't is she? I'm sure she cared about you a ton. Please don't cry. Sometimes things just take a while to find their way out of the office. I'm sure Dandelion's letter is somewhere in here. Mom said they usually come fast when I asked her, though. Yeah, well, are you going to listen to your mom or someone who works here? What's she know? While Rain thought it was a clever point, Mila's tears don't stop. The little courier looks upwards, looking for some sort of miracle solution that would ease her new friend. And there she spots a door that gives her just the idea she had been grasping at. I know somewhere else we can look. R really? And you think it'll be there? For sure, but we'll need to get you a disguise. <laughs> oh, here we go. Get your cloak. Ta-da! Home sweet home. You live in the post office? Of course, all of us do. The mail never stops, so neither can we. Wow, you couriers are really cool. <laughs> the coolest ever. Oh, let's get looking before someone shows up. We should find a cloak first. I think I left one in my laundry basket. Your dirty laundry basket? They're all clean, don't worry. Kyle keeps telling me to fold my clothes and put them away, but it's easier to just leave them in the basket. I, I don't really get it. Find a disguise. I'm ready. I'm ready to find a disguise, but also I want to have a look around. Ooh. Look, a cat, a little dog, a little bunny. I love the drawings. Beautiful. Right, I guess this is all I can do. Let us, let us inspect. <gasps> Stamp. Inspect basket. Send. Signed, sealed, delivered. Nice. <laughs> 
Oh, I love this. What? Nothing! But I really remember leaving it in here. You sure like that dress design a lot? Huh? Oh! Since we don't leave the tree much, we order all our clothes in big batches. I thought that's what they did outside, too? Oh, this is one of your favorite Sarah Toots. Yeah, I love this. There's something... It, the whole soundtrack feels so, like... It feels so familiar. It feels comforting. Just like comfy vibes. Like it feels like a hug <laughs> in song form. I love it. Not really. Mom and I live next to a little earth foot shop called Bell House Clothcraft, so we get new clothes all the time. Mom says it's important since we don't have any magic like everyone else does. Oh yeah, Big Sis told me about that. Did you know the magic you get from your clothes and food is what makes the letters come down from the top of the tree? Oh, I don't really like the apple treats they bring over for picnics, but maybe I should try and eat them more. I like your clothes though, they're super pretty. Oh, I... Thank you. Oh. Dandy liked them too. Mom even made her a bandana by cutting up one of my old vests. She wore it every day up until... <laughs> Whoa, okay, let's keep looking. <laughs> Rat row. Oh dearie. Okay, let's, let's have a look at the desk. There's definitely gonna be... It's definitely gonna be a, a cloak here, right? I just wanna look. This is my desk! I was practicing writing up until way late last night. It's a lot cleaner than I thought it would be. What's that supposed to mean? Anyway, no cloak here, let's keep looking. Boop. Probably in the drawers. There it is! Okay, Mila, put it on. It may be a little big, sorry. It, it's okay. Ah, the bow is the hardest part. Here, let me help. No. Oh, I gotta say, I love the character designs in this so much. They are so lovely. I love them. I also love how they're doing like this little like idle bounce. shoes too. I didn't realize how cool her shoes were until now. Wait. Nice. Well? Hmm. Well, it's a start, but we need to find you some barding. Your feet are a dead giveaway. Oh, sorry. Don't apologize for that! I can't really remember where I left my spare barding. Guess I'll just have to search every nook and cranny. Okay. Time to search. Warp oh, everywhere. Let's search. Mila. Hey, Mila. Thank you again for helping me. You're welcome, but you don't need to thank me until after we find your letter. But you're already doing so much. I wanted to say it, even if we, even if we don't. We will. We will. Don't worry. Please don't cry. I hope. What if we look in the drawers again? Hmm, nope. Okay. What if we look in the basket again? Well, that's the most obvious place out of the way, at least. Yep. Oh, let's check the toys. I want to have a look at the toys. Oh, Mila! Want to meet my friends? Huh? Meet Ollie, Mills, and Kathy. Um... Amazing. Oh, um, hello? Miss Ori and Big Sis got them for me last year. Sis said they were only gonna get one, but they, they all look like a big family together. Wow, lucky. I think they do too, though. They are a family. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh. oh, that's so good. <laughs> we live in a post twofold world now. We can finally self reference. Yes, I love it. It's so good. Right, uh, let's look at the desk again because I didn't do it again. 
Nothing here. I guess that makes sense. Hello. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Right. Let's have a look at my hat. Is it in my hat? My favorite hat! I already know the first stamp I'm going to put on it when I get promoted. Oh, is it like a... The first thing I think of is like the the girl guide sashes with where you like attach the badges and stuff. They have like little stamps on their hats. I love that. Right, well I guess it's going to be in, in the bed? In the nest? This is a lovely nest. Ah, there's nothing like throwing off my cloak and barding after a long day and just collapsing into my nest. Actually, where is yesterday's barding? I've looked everywhere! I know there has to be a spare set of barding somewhere in here. It's okay. I really appreciate you trying anyway. No, wait. We can still find it. Don't give up yet! But we've checked everywhere. That's what I thought too, but then I remembered my secret. Ooh! Behold, my stamp collection. Yeah? Um... This is where I put all my favorites. Their designs are so cool. They sometimes inspire me to think outside the box. Well, if they help. Hey, upwards below or oh. How about below the basket? Oh, maybe it fell out and it's underneath? Nope. Darn, I really thought that'd be it. I think it's gonna be under the bed, but I wanna try everything else under the desk. <laughs> I t Maybe I should have listened to Kyle about dusting my room more. Below the drawers? Hmm. I don't think that'd work. Below the Mila? Um, what are you... Just making sure you weren't stepping on it. Below the plushies. Mills, you didn't take my barding, did you? Sorry for not believing you below the hat. It's under your hat, right? Why would you keep barding in your hat? I don't know. Maybe it just fell in without me noticing somehow? Did it? Let's keep looking. <laughs> I'm just being silly now. I'm, I just want to try everything. Okay, upwards basket. Well, it couldn't hurt to check just one more rain. Never mind. Upwards. Mila. Look, this is my favorite stamp in my entire collection. Oh, it's nice. Isn't it? I think the long shape is super cool and the colors are so pretty. Oh, sorry. We should keep looking around. <laughs> Mari 360 no scoped all of the puzzles and missed all the flavor text. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. I'll always be like, I think this is the answer, so I'm going to try every other option that I can before I do what I think it actually is. <laughs> so I hope you're ready for all of the flavor text to be seen. Yep, let's check below the bed now. It's I, I figured it's probably here. There! Farting! Finally! See, this is like a different type of being good at puzzles, like being good enough to know what the answer is to do everything else first. It's, it's a skill. <laughs> but I, I love seeing like all the little details and things like this. I, I like trying everything. There, barding, finally. Wow, you weren't kidding about your stamps. Nope, here, quick, put them on. Yeah, it's like, if you get every single answer wrong on a test, like, especially if it's like a multiple choice thing, like, you have to know what the correct answers are to put the wrong ones. So that's like a special kind of skill in itself. Nope, here, quick, put them on! Didn't you already wear these yesterday? It's fine! I didn't do much yesterday! And they're super small, and they just go around your ankles. 
Okay, okay. It's fine. Looking good. We're almost there. There's more? Of course. What self-respecting courier doesn't have a hat? Hmm. They only give us a couple hats each, but I should still have one, another one somewhere. Rain? Are you in your room again? Ah! What's been sorry doing here? We gotta hide. I cannot think. <laughs> also, Suzume, hey! Wild, I'm still here. I said I'm playing all of them. I'm, I'm going for like, I'll probably do like a 12 hour stream at this point with how long it's taking me to play these. But yeah, of course I'm still here. Hi! I'm, I've got two down, two to go, and I'm, I'm going to keep going because these games are so fun. I'm having so much fun. And I can still think as well, which is the surprising part. <laughs> right, quick, hide. Hide her. You can actually watch some of this. Yes, fabulous. Watch up until the point that you got to. Aha, uh -huh. my intuition never fails. Masori, what brings you here? Same thing as you, I imagine. I'm on my break. I don't think you were scheduled for yours yet, however. Um, uh, I was... so involved with my work this morning, I forgot to tidy my room before starting the day, so I wanted to get that handled while the morning was still slow. You believe that, right? Yeah? 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 Yeah, you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see. Cleanliness is just as important as any other duty. Good on you for taking initiative. I feel like they know. It's just like, yeah, I believe you doesn't believe her at all. <laughs> I'm going to fetch some water then. I'll come by in a bit, to, a bit to check up on you. If you need any help cleaning so we can get back to work, feel free to let me know. Oh, see, you've got three. You've got three stamps on your hat. Pretty high up. Sure, thank you. Excellent. See you in a few wing beats. Hi. Hi, Mila. Hi. Phew, that was close. Are you sure I'm not gonna get you in trouble? Super sure, everything is fine, trust me. So we really gotta find that hat before they show up again. Or at least think of a way to buy some time. Oh no, I have turns, no! No, I wanna check everything. I need to check everything. I need to know if I try to put the upward stamp on rain. I haven't been able to yet, but I'm, I'm doing like everything that I can. Okay, there's no upwards here. Bunch of below. Hide. Hide hat? Oh, wait. I wonder. I wonder if I can hide my hat and then try and convince Mizori to find my spare hat. Oh, oh! you can't roll back on for the puzzles so we could go back for flavor text. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love that. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Time to look at everything. <laughs> I should be wasting my time looking around. Mizori will be back any moment. Now it's time for action. Yep. So I'm going to keep looking around. I think it's going to be the same for each one, but I got to check. Yep. Couldn't I just borrow your hat for today? Everyone already knows you're here, right? No way. Last time I went exploring the tree during the day without my uniform on, I got in trouble. Oh no. Let's keep looking then. Boop. Back we go. <laughs> Let's keep going. 
I'm just gonna keep looking around just because I want to try everything. <laughs> Have a look. I shouldn't be wasting my time looking around, but I'm doing it anyway because I'm a smart person. Yep, uh, let's have a look below drawers. <laughs> Maybe if I tip this over and make a giant mess, Mizorai will leave me be for the rest of the day? No, that wouldn't work. They'd probably just help me clean it up all day. All right, below the desk. Let's have a look. I guess I could clean here, but that won't help by any time. Plus, I just really don't want to. That's fair. Boop, boop, boop. Right, well, I, I want to try, like, seeing what happens if I just fail miserably, too. So next time, I'm just going to keep, like, doing things that I don't think it is. And then I'm just going to see what happens when Mizora comes in. Okay, what's under the stuffed animals? No hats here. In fact, nothing is ever out of place with these three. I think Mizora cares about them as much as I do. All right, how about below the basket? One last chance. Don't fail us now, basket. Don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Whoa, she laughed. Thank you, basket. Okay, now I'm not going to hide the stuffed animals because it could feasibly be that. If Missouri cares about them that much. So, for now, let's look below the bed. Or below the... Yeah, below the bed. I guess I could clean here, but that won't help by any time. Plus, I just really don't want to. Right, let's see what happens. I did save. I did save, right? Yeah, I did save. I'm coming in. Ah! Mila, hide! Hello again. How goes the cleaning efforts? Ready to get back to work? Um, the cleaning is going kind of bad. Oh, do you think so? It's looking rather tidy to me. <laughs> I want to try both. More time, please. Actually, would you mind if I took a few extra minutes? I want to try folding my clothes. Well, well, look at you. Finally graduating from the laundry basket. By all means, take your time. Well, I'm glad that worked, but now I'm going to have to actually fold my clothes later. <laughs> nice. I want to go back and pick the other one. Need a hat. I lost my hat. Do you think you could help me get a new one? <laughs> She says as she's wearing her hat. I think I can do you one better. Have you checked the top of your head lately by any chance? Um... <laughs> you're feeling a little tired. I don't mind waiting a few extra minutes. Oh, this is so kind. The game is so kind. That'd be a big help, thank you. They totally know. They know. They're, they're playing along with it. I love this. Right, let's hide the plushies. No, oh, I lost my glasses, wait! No, I didn't lose them, you just took them from me. My poor glasses. Oh, I have an idea! I feel bad separating the three of you. Sorry, you two. Ollie will be back soon. Don't worry, I'll keep you safe in my cloak and it'll just be until Mizori comes back. I'm coming in. Back, Mila, hi! Hello again. How goes the cleaning efforts? Ready to get back to work? Ollie the wet cat, yes. And I've got to say as well, having having Kathy as a dog feels like it makes a lot of sense too. And Millie as a um Millsy as a like a, a bunny rabbit also feels very appropriate. That's so good. Hello again. How goes the cleaning efforts? Ready to get back to work? It's awful. Well, that's certainly not the reaction I was expecting. What's wrong? I was th th doing my cleaning and I can't find Ollie anywhere. I thought they were still with Mills and Kathy, but... Oh, I don't know what to th do. Oh, dear. Well, it won't do for those two to go without their friend. 
I'll check the front office to see if they've wandered off if you want to keep searching back here. Oh, thank you, Missouri. Of course. Never fear, Ollie's bound to turn up sooner rather than later. Phew, that bought us some time. Thanks for the save, Ollie. Yeah, that's just buying time. The thing I have to do is hide the hat. Oh, but five turns now. I bought so much time with that. I could do literally everything now. But no, let's, I think I've done all of it. This is all just like that. I could, I could clean this, but I don't want to. So I think now it's time to actually hide the hat. There we go. That was fun though. I don't have any idea where it could be. Wait. Mazora said they'd help if I asked, so maybe? There. My hat's tucked safely away in my cloak. Now we just gotta wait for them to get back. <laughs> the fact I not only figured out the solution immediately, but also deftly avoided the extra interaction stunned you. <laughs> ah. I got him. I did it. Gamer, gamer moments. There, my hat's tucked safely away in my cloak. Now we just gotta wait for them to get back. I'm coming in. Ah, Mila, hide! Hello again. How goes the cleaning efforts? Ready to get back to work? I think it's going okay. It's looking a lot tidier. Well, true enough, but dare I ask what happened to your hat? so it wouldn't get dusty. Here it is. <laughs> Wait. Well, there we go. Should we get back to it then? Um, actually, can I get a few more minutes? If you think it's necessary, by all means. Phew, that was close. What was I thinking? Oh, you're so silly. I'm, yeah, I'm glad I did that. I love that I'm just like, this is the wrong answer. I must choose it. <laughs> uh, I lost it. Oh, where did it run off to? You didn't notice? Of course not. Um, do you think you could get me a spare? Well, I can't be helped. Give me just a moment. I love the, the pauses, the moments. It took some searching, but I found the hat you were wearing last year. It may be just a bit tight, but it'll have to do until we find your new one. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Of course. I'm heading back outside to finish my trimming. What's on the agenda for you now? I've got a letter I'm having trouble sorting and I need to ask Big Sis about, so I'm heading up there next. Oh, sorting woes are always a bother. I'll keep an eye on the front desk then. Thank you so much, again! Of course, see you this evening, Rain. Wait, no, I lost the pin message! <laughs> I love Seb! I'm guessing that was an accidental click. <laughs> Hello! Welcome, welcome! Hold on, it's okay, I, I wrote the, the message. I wrote the message, we can repin it, there we go. <laughs> Hello, welcome, welcome. <laughs> I hate this part so much. <laughs> hate what part? Don't hate things, it's fine. Bye. Whew. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're in the clear. You can come out, Mila. Phew, I'm, I'm guessing the sprite's not meant to still be here. <laughs> here you go, one hat. It should even fit you perfect. 
There we go. It's fine. They're gone. Yeah, the the pinning is so easy to misclick. It's it's like it's such a big button too. Like at least if you click reply, you can then just like delete it and be like, oh, I didn't mean to click that. But if you just click pin, it's just an immediate thing that uh, there's no like confirmation. <laughs> But it's no problem. Hello, welcome. Welcome to my my super long stream where I'm trying to play all of the games because I'm very smart and not giving myself a break. It's okay. It's all right. I'm giving myself a break tomorrow. I'm going to the cinema. <laughs> Look at you, Morton Post's latest courier. <laughs> well, I do feel kind of cool wearing the entire uniform. The sparkles. You should. I feel a lot like Miss Neve. Oh, do you know about her? She's around town all the time and is super nice. She always looks amazing in her uniform. <gasps> what? Oh my god, the face. The face. D. D. Oh, I'm so glad. I need to make like an asset so I can also have the face. I want the face. <laughs> what? Neve isn't cool at all. She's super lame. Huh? <clears throat> we should get going. Oh, okay. Where are we headed? <laughs> Hello, Caprice Shiffin from Twofold. Hello, Rain from Upwards Rain. Face. Face. <laughs> Okay, where are we headed? There's a department up above that handles letters that need some extra work to deliver. If mail is going to get lost, it'll be there for sure. That does sound like a good place to look. Yep, just follow me onwards and upwards. Up we go. I'm ready. It's so pretty in here. I love the colored letters so much. The little flowers. The ascent starts easily enough. Two little steps of footsteps marching up the spiral stairs, in and out of connecting rooms, and up, up, up the stairs again. After some time, the pair of footsteps fall out of sync, one trailing slightly behind. The distance between them continues to grow, until eventually Rain can't hear her friend at all. Huh? Hey, Mila, are you all... The courier turns around, quickly spotting Mila several paces behind her, back against the wall of the tree. She takes a step forward, then slowly drags her other foot upwards to match the first, before repeating the process again. Okay? Onwards and upwards, the rainbow canopy! It's such a pretty name, too. Oh, I, I love the music. Uh, I... I'm, I'm coming. Sorry. It'll be supper time by the time we get to the department at this pace. We've got to keep moving. I'm sorry. I'm going as fast as I can. Why don't these stairs have rails? We're so high up. Wait, that's all? There's so much space on the steps, though. Besides, I heard you Seaborn can break your bones and they'll heal right back up. You'll be fine. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Rain, please. Please, just because they heal up from broken bones doesn't mean it doesn't still hurt, probably. <laughs> I, I don't want to break my bones. I like my bones as they are. Jeez. You could hold on to me if you want. That way, if you fell, I could fly us right back up. Not if she's going to hold on to my wing, but anything to help her feel better. If you don't mind, I don't know how much higher I can go on my own. I would also be terrified, I think. As proof of her confidence and bravery, Rain skips downwards, extending her wings, uh, her wings slightly to float past a few steps. Wing wing. She soon finds herself next to Mila, keeping one wing slightly stretched open. The Seaborn gets the intention quickly, or perhaps is simply over-eager to ground herself to another, and links her arm with Rain's. Oh, the little smile. Oh, the scared smile. She's trembling a lot. I feel kind of bad for teasing her so much. 
You're safe and sound now. Are you good to keep going? I think so. Th thank you. Again. You're welcome. Again. And so the two continue onwards, arm in arm at a pace slower than before, but comfortable all the same. My big sis can't fly either. Even she has to take it slower on the stairs sometimes, especially if her delivery bag is extra full. The arm interlinking wasn't originally a thing in the script. It was only added after all of the jokes about them wing holding in the debut street. <laughs> yeah, holding wings. Wing wing. I'm, I'm so glad that got added. That makes me so happy. <laughs> wing in wing. Is she okay? I didn't, I don't know how anyone could work in here and not know how to fly. Yeah, she only has one wing, but she's been working here forever. So even, if even she has trouble sometimes, then you shouldn't. Wait, one wing? Do you mean Miss Neve? Miss Neve is your sister? Well, we're not related, but she's my big sis. That's so cool. It's not that cool at all. What do you mean? Miss Neve knows everyone in town. When she comes to drop off our mail, she can always tell if I'm feeling sad too. It's like she's a mind reader. It's not super hard to tell when you're sad, Mila. Psh, big deal. I can read minds too, better than sis even. Really? Can all of you do that? What am I thinking right now? How lucky you are to have such a reliable guide like me, obviously. Oh. Was that wrong? <laughs> Surprised? I told you I could. Actually, I was thinking about how much cooler Miss Neve would be if she was really able to read minds all this time. Uh... Mm, sorry, myth busted. <laughs> the, the harshness of reality. The two continue their climb, the giant net of envelopes serving as an ever-reliable reference for how far they have come. Soon enough, it stops serving as a distant waymark above and instead rests just below their feet. Phew, finally here. The net seemed so far away on the ground level. It was far away, and now we're as far away from the ground as the net looked. Oh, please don't say that. Rain lets loose a laugh as they approach an unassuming mailroom door, but mutes herself as she places a feather over her mouth bidding whisper from her companion. Okay, so, I hope she isn't here right now, but Neve is actually the head of this department. Really? Then the letter's gotta be here. She's probably already found it. Maybe. Uh. Rain opens the door as slowly as she's able, remembering its dire need of some grease the last time she had made the climb several nights before. While the door is cooperative in its silence, the view inside dashed any small victory welling within her. Oh, there we go. Oh, I love the owl. Within stands Neve, back turned, jotting down some... Oh. Hold on a second. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, my iPhone is on low battery. I'm, I, may, I may have to turn into a PNG. <laughs> oh no, I didn't think this through when I was doing a long stream. My iPhone is suddenly like, hey, um, y you used all the battery. Can you stop? Can you stop tracking your VTuber model? Hold on, let me, let me give it a break. Let me do this. I have to turn into a marketable PNG now. <laughs> You both made the same joke. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Right, hold on a second. I can I can do this. I can do this. What's the easiest way for me to do this? I think probably if I just if I just uh It's time for me to hide, but I don't know what this is going to look like. Bye-bye. Oh, here I am. 
Hi. Hi. I'm now a selfie PNG. Hi. Yeah, this will do for now. Let me let me let my iPhone charge for a bit. Oh, it's so painful because even when I have it still plugged in, it still uses so much charge. Like it loses charge even though it's plugged into the power supply. Just because well, it's it's because it's it's terrible. I I got a second-hand iPhone that was already outdated when I got it just for VTuber tracking. But it's okay. I'm now a PNG. Supermarketable, right? I mean, wouldn't it be cool if if this was a, a keyring? I mean, wouldn't it be really cool to make this as a keyring? Maybe I should do that. Maybe this will be a keyring. Uh, not saying that this will be a keyring at some point in the future, but what if? What if what if this was a keyring? <laughs> Wait. Oh, you'd buy a pillow of this. Oh, that would be cute. Wait. I want to see... I'm pretty sure I have, like, a different program that's better for PNGing. I'm just doing, like, Discord Reactive at the moment, but I have to pause between words, otherwise my mouth is just open forever. Hmm. Maybe I can sort this. Maybe I just stick like this. This should be fine. It's okay. Hopefully I can get a bit of charge now that I'm closing everything. Oh, it must be a really hot iPhone right now if it loses charge. No, it's not even warm at the moment. It's just bad. It's just bad. Oh, yeah, I should turn the redeems off too for the, the model redeems. Can't do those at the moment. Let me... Let me disable those. Ba -ba -ba. You should still be able to drop things, but it might, like, drop into midair. I'm not entirely sure how it might work. There we go. Okay, turn the model redeems off. <laughs> it's so quiet. Why did, why did I have to do this at a moment where there's no background music in the game? Why am I like this? <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate, too. Yeah, it still throws it. It throws it pretty decently. Zippies. They whoosh past. Oh yeah, the emotes won't drop on my head anymore, sadly. But that's okay. We can do without the emotes for a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, they, they just whoosh past, they just go. They're just flying. Anyway, back to back to game. Within stands Neve, back turned, jotting down some notes as she files envelopes into her bag. Hi. Exercising a level of care she often never uses, Rain closes the door again. Bad news? She's still here. Oh, that's good. We can just ask her about it then. Mm, if she had found it already, don't you think she would have filed it by now? Ah. I'll try and talk to her. While I do, you should look around and see if you can find it yourself. Maybe you'll be able to recognize something about it that Sis won't be able to. You want me to sneak around in the mail? Miss Neve is nice, but we'll both get in trouble if she catches us. I know, which is why she won't catch us. What do you mean? We just gotta be extra sneaky around her. How about when I say cloud, you hide? <gasps> ah, when I say water, that means it's safe and you can go back to searching. Oh no. Oh no, this... This might go badly. I might not be good at this. <laughs> PNG can't catch the monster. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Okay, cloud to hide, water, you can keep going. Water and cloud. Okay, I'll try and remember. Are you sure, though? I really don't want you to get in trouble or for Miss Neve to get angry with me. Fix this doesn't scare me, so she shouldn't scare you either. Just listen close and we'll be fine, okay? Okay. Oh boy, okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. 
With another careful opening of the door, the two friends make their way inside, Mila quickly ducking out of sight as soon as she's able. I can hear you back there, Droplet. Step into my office. Rain shares a quick glance with Mila before heeding her big sister's invitation. Perfect timing! Fetch my water, would you? What are you talking about? You already have a glass! Yeah, but it's on the wrong side. You know I can't grab it from there. Ugh. I'm just gonna drag the cup across her desk. If something spills, it's her own fault. One serving of water, your majesty. Thanks as ever, my ever-reliable retainer. How could anyone ever think she's cool? No, she is cool, though. I'm, I'm sorry, Rain. I disagree with you here. I think she's incredibly cool. <laughs> this is the kind of character design I love. I'm just here like, oh, yeah, this is... This is the woman of all time. Oh, my goodness. I'm... 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 Yes. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. She's searching... Oh, come on. Don't give me that look. I've got a surprise for you, actually. Check this stamp out. <gasps> Whoa! What's that? Oh, I like the shapes. I thought you might. I just found it this morning. I've got another batch to give you, too. Don't let me forget before you leave. No, <laughs> what if we played several? <laughs> no, no one-winged angel. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. On the subject of stamps, have you put any more thought into what the first one on your hat is going to be? I told you already, I like the long one I have with the stairs and the sky. If you say so. It's a bit of a weird shape for a first promotion, though. Don't you at least have any standard shape stamps as a backup plan? Oh. Actually, I was thinking the stamp with the cloud on. Hmm? <laughs> Suspicion bar. Uh oh. Oh no! She's looking towards Mila. I need to tell her to hide. <laughs> Maybe what this shit. I, I want to do the wrong options first. <laughs> Hold on. I, I'm going to do everything wrong. I'm doing everything wrong first. How about one with the sky filled with water? Keep looking. Oops! Cloud! 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 Oops! Yep. What? What in the world has gotten into you? Um, I forgot to tell you and just remembered. Yesterday I went outside for a little bit and saw a cloud that was shaped kind of like a pigeon. Okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry for interrupting. You, you were saying? Right, let's see. That was way too close. Big Sis is going to catch on for sure if that happens again. Oh, like rain, you mean. Clever. But it doesn't matter, because I still like the long one. Sure, sure. I'm sure your first promotion is still a long ways off, so you've got plenty of time to change your mind. Well, no, oh, it's going to happen any day now. I've been doing all of my chores right on time. Oh, so you're off duty right now? It's still pretty early in the day. Ooh, busted. Oopsie. Okay, she's looking at me again. I should let Mila know she can keep looking now. <laughs> I feel like there's a big great cloud over me now. Yeah, I'm just doing it wrong. Uh oh, a cloud. Wait, or was it water? Rain? It says? Pull up a branch. We've got to have a heart to heart about what's really going on here. You aren't as sneaky as you think you're being. Rat row. <laughs> oh, it just gives a retry button. That's very generous. I just wanted to see what would happen if I failed miserably. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's, it do, do a little skippy. Right, you gotta hide. Maybe one that shows a cloudy day. 
Oh, like rain you mean, clever. But it doesn't matter, because I still like the long one. Yeah, boop, 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 boop. Right, no need to throw water on me like that. Hey, what's with the pity party? You'd normally be ready to shout at me right about now. Well, we got a visitor this morning. Oh yeah? Yeah, she always seems so sad whenever she comes in asking about her missing letter. Ah, uh, we're talking about little Mila, I assume. Well, she can keep looking at the moment, I think. Yeah, she's not suspicious. She's not looking back. So that's water to continue? Yeah. I actually think her name was Water. Wait, no, that's that sounds weird. Is <laughs> Well, I, I saved. I saved it? Yeah, I saved it. I'm gonna go Cloud. Make a stop. No, I'm gonna do this one. Uh, I actually think her name was Water. Wait, no, you're right. It had to have been Mila. No, that, yeah, that is the right one. My memory's a little cloudy, but... Blah, blah, blah. I'm just making a stop. <laughs> I just want to pick all the wrong ones. Big sis didn't turn around there. Mila needs all the time she can get. I can't make another mistake like that. I've got to ask, do you need a refill on water? No, I'm fine. Thanks though. Okay, I was just making sure. Anyway, where were we? Oh, right. I just want to know what happens when I do the wrong options. There we go. Uh, now that you see the fang on the PNG, yeah, my, my model has fangs. I've got two little fangies. Like, I I can't show it off right now, but I, I, I've got two fangs. I have pointy fangs. I use them to open cans. No, I, I don't. <laughs> fangs for bite. It's good for a spooky season when I become dracula -y, which shall be soon. Soon. Maybe Friday, maybe Sunday. When When I can do it. Is the Redeem coming back for Spooky Month? No, I'm actually just going to be dracula -y all month. Because I I just want to. <laughs> It'd be dracula -y month. So it won't be the Redeem anymore. I will just have the palette swap. Well, I guess, like, depending on the game I'm playing. When I'm playing, like, the, the spooky, creepy games, I'm going to have the black and white... The black and red uh, palette swap. <laughs> yes, it's thanks to bite into chicken nuggies. For dinosaur nuggets. It's perfect. I've just been thinking about it all day and I really want to help her somehow. <laughs> Young love digging its talons into your droplet. Oh, she's about to look, I think. Yeah, she's about to look, so I'm going to pick the wrong option. Have her keep going. What? I bring you your water and you're still trying to bully me? Oops, cloud, cloud, cloud. No, okay, that's, that, yeah, that's the same. All right. What cloud do you have your head stuck in if you think it's okay to say something like that? Yeah, there's nothing there, don't worry. <laughs> Calm down, it's just a joke. Uh, I can't stand her. I agree with you though. Poor Mila's been crying for far too long. Do you talk to her family a lot outside of the post office? Nearly every day I'm out in the village, yeah. Not so much in the past few weeks, though, what with the lack of outgoing mail and all. Yeah, she's still looking this way, so we're fine. So if what about if I tell her to hide? Uh, the village is really nice, I hope I can visit again soon. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Okay, yeah, it's, it's the same thing there. No, I just, I just had to make sure. I just had to check. Just got to check for the flavor text. Yeah, dracula -y doesn't open monster cans normally, but bites two holes on the side. I <laughs> see the problem with that would be it sounds really cool in theory, but then you have to drink the whole can in one go. And I don't think I'd be able to do that. Right, uh, I want to go out there more often too. I love looking at the water. 
I'll add it to my to-do. Wait, hold on. I'm. I mean, let me try something quickly. I've got my little soundboard. Is this gonna work? Water. <laughs> Water. 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 Yeah, I have that as a soundboard thing on Discord. It's it's from Avatar. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. I know like all of the theory of how to like shotgun a can. I can't drink a whole can in one go, so I I can't do it. Oh wait, have a fancy custom can holder to put cans sideways. Wait, yeah. Like a cool little display thing to 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 prop it up in the right position. Ooh, that would be cool. If it would be for Draculary, it would be like this fancy wrought iron thing probably. Ooh, much to think about. An air for cloud. Cloud just cloud. Wait, I just realized cloud and one winged angel. <laughs> I love Final Fantasy. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> I'll add it to my to-do. Really? Maybe this weekend? I think we can make that work. Have I been forgiven for the young love thing yet? Yep, she's about to look again. The clouds have parted. For now. Yeah, perfect. Back to the topic at wing then. <laughs> oh, it makes sense. It makes so much sense. Also, I want that. I want that letter. This letter. This letter makes me want to take it. This letter right here, I just want to pull that out of the shelf. I want that. I want it. Also, I just realized the plushie only has one wing too. That's so cute. <laughs> That's so cute. You may be interested to know that I've been doing some digging the past few weeks into Mila's situation. Oh! Oh, you have? Really? Have you found anything? Naturally. What? We have to tell Mila right away then. She's been coming in every day. She's got to be worried sick by now. Slow down there, Droplet. What I've learned is... This one's above your pay grade. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, no. See, a little part of me is wondering, is this going to be a situation where it's like, Dandelion isn't going to be sending a message because Dandelion's not actually dead? Like, maybe Dandelion's in a coma or something instead? Hmm. I'm theorizing. I'm thinking. I'm thinking, thinking. And that would be why Mila's mom is so certain that there won't be a letter because... Dandy's not actually dead. That's okay, that's my current theory. I'll be very curious to know what happens. Yeah. The plushie must have been a nice gift from someone. Yeah, it's such a sweet thought. I love that. It's a lovely thought. It's like it's such a, a charming gesture. It's lovely. R ruffle. No, don't worry, don't worry. What are you talking about? <laughs> No, don't say that. Don't say that. She's about to look. Don't say that. Rain. Rain. What are you talking about? Oh, she just misheard, honestly. That's, that's, that's an easy mistake to make. That's a very easy mistake to make. Huh? Huh? What is she doing? Clouds, you're, you're trying to overshadow me again like a great big great cloud. You saw that too, right? Saw what? I, I saw nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> nope, not at all. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't let my water sit out so long. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this was the worst code. This was the, the worst code imaginable. Oh dear. Cloud! Someone's found a new favorite word. Look, I just really love clouds, okay? I just I just really love Final Fantasy Final Fantasy 7, please. Please, Dad, it's 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 good. It's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. I've gotta get away from this. Um 
Lisa. Oh, anyway, you don't like my long stamp. Do you really think the cloud one would be good? I kind of want to see what happens if I do water now, because this feels like more of a moment. Don't look that way! What is going on with you today? Is something clouding your mind right now? Do you need to sit down? Uh, nope, no brain fog here. I'm in the brain cloud, I mean. Wow, she's so good at hiding it in a sentence. Uh, uh, cloud. Yeah, cloud. Wait, I think. Um, <laughs> it's gone out of the box now. <laughs> Wait, no, Cloud, actually, didn't I just say... <laughs> How far can I get this? How far can I fill this up? Cloud? That's how far I can fill it. I've broken... <gasps> I've broken the stamp! <laughs> oh my god! Oh dear! Oh wow, that's so funny! Oh no, the poor stamp got ripped! It didn't even make its way back to my room! Ugh, my entire head is spinning. Ah, I see. Sorry for sending you into a fit there. I think you misunderstood what I was trying to say. I wasn't trying to make fun of you. The fact of the matter is, Mila's case is impossible. Huh? Rain, I'm going to be serious for a sec. Listen close, okay? Okay? It feels so heavy in here all of a sudden. When you were talking to her this morning, I presume Mila told you she was anticipating a letter from her friend, yes? Uh-huh. Did she happen to tell you her friend's name? Dandelion. Mila calls her Dandy a lot, though. Right. It's not that uncommon of a name, especially as you get closer to the capital city. However, a curious little wrinkle. No one named Dandelion has ever lived in Vitae. What? But that... that doesn't make any sense. I thought the same thing, so I did a bit of extra legwork. Double-checking aliases, looking through our older files and so on. And... Nothing. But you visit the village all the time. You must have met her at least once. So you'd think. I don't get it. Big Sis knows everyone in town. Did she just forget about Dandelion somehow? As Rain grasps for a simple solution to this complex mystery, Neve pulls a couple envelopes from her bag. Does Dandelion exist? Does Dandelion actually exist? Hmm. I know I don't need to tell you this, but this department focuses on the stray thoughts from those who have left us. The ones that may seem half-realized or unclear for their intended recipient. Here. To the regular who always visited my cafe on the weekends. And another, for thee, mine treasure. But you go to the village all the time, so you're always able to find out who they belong to. Hmm. God, that sounds like such hard work. God, that must be so difficult. Oh my goodness. I really like Neve. I really love Neve. Neve tucks the letter safely away once more. She proceeds with her usual routine before she does her daily rounds. The brace on her wing is loosened and eventually removed. She nonchalantly grabs her hat, though it goes into her bag for now rather than its rightful place atop her head. The break from her usual motions comes from her picking up a plain white envelope and offering it to her little sis. The rest of the stamps, as promised. Oh, thanks. I've got a theory I want to visit with you. Walk with me. Oop. 
I guess we're just leaving Mila in there for now. Well, she can she can have a good search while we're off on our walk, I guess. The door swings closed behind Rain. For a mercy, Neve didn't seem to notice Mila as she exited the room. I wonder, like, if breaking that stamp is going to have repercussions later on. I'm going to keep going. But uh, I did, yeah, I did make a save file. So I can go back. If anything goes wrong, it's save file six. And I got to go back and not be silly. <laughs> Maybe. But I'm just going to keep going. The same couldn't be said for Rain, catching a glimpse of her friend curled up tight before following Neve out. Oh, that's got to be so hard for her. No. So, tell me, have you gone exploring any further up the tree? Be honest. No way. It's all just old storage and other rooms no one uses anymore. There's nothing fun about that kind of stuff. Not to mention Kale. If she heard I ever went higher than where the lights are on, she'd get mad for sure. <laughs> right you are, about that part at least. Yeah, sorting the letters probably gives a small view into people's lives even without opening them. Yeah, even just seeing like how they're addressed, who they're addressed to, how many things someone has to say. Like if if someone if someone passes away and there's like 20 letters as opposed to someone who passes away and there might just be the, the one of them like that says a lot just in itself too like there's there's so much that can be gleaned from something like this oh i don't know what i would think i don't know if i'd like a letter like that or not it's so much to think about yeah yeah, the idea was since she only has one wing, she's forced to walk more. So she naturally knows more about the villagers than the others. Yeah, and it's like, obviously, like with just the one wing, she's probably limited as to what she can do. So the actual delivering part and being in the village and all that kind of stuff, that's stuff she can still do on the ground. So it makes sense that that's what she would prioritize as her work. But wow, that's got to be really emotionally draining as well, though. That's got to be so difficult. I have so much respect for her. Whew. Whew. Neve tilts her head upward, looking for something she has no hope of finding. Rain follows her gaze, bringing her neck back as far as it will go. Ugh. Where do they come from? Not far from where the two stand, the lights become more sparse before disappearing entirely allowing an absolute darkness to steal the space away. Below the rainbow canopy, where light sources are plentiful and comforting, the bright coloured envelopes bring with them a sense of joy and whimsy. I love a bit of whimsy in my life. Oh, a final gift from those who had left, both for the recipients as well as the couriers themselves who had the honour of delivering them. But now, floating down from infinity... They instead take the form of lingering specks of life, swimming in a sea of endless black. Where wings can't reach forgotten heights. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, the music's so good. Oh, this is your favorite track. Yes. This is it. I love this. This song is so... It's so perfect for this this moment. This moment, like, it it just fits. It just hits. Sarah is so incredible at soundtracks. Like, every single soundtrack she's done, the music always fits so well. It's like the absolute perfect fit. I'm always so blown away by it, honestly. <laughs> so good. Oh. oh, I'm so excited to have more music to listen to as well. <laughs> Somewhere up there is where we store letters we're unable to deliver for one reason or another. The undeliverables. Not our most creative showing. Huh? But we never fail a delivery! That's what makes us couriers! That's the aim, at least. I'd like to think I'm pretty good at my job. Sometimes, though, things just fall through the cracks. 
What do you mean? These letters are the most important things in the whole world. Grandma says so. Kyle says so. I say so too. Fact of the matter is, though, it's impossible to deliver everything. Occasionally, a letter will drop without any writing on it whatsoever, or will even obtain entirely empty envelopes from time to time. There's also less dire issues like illegible handwriting or red herrings in the context clues that make it difficult to find its intended recipient. You name it, it's happened. We've managed to keep the amount of deliveries taken there low, but it's not quite zero. Whew. I can't believe it. I always thought that all of the mail eventually made it to where it belonged, even if it took a little while. The idea that there are people out in the village who kept waiting for words from their loved ones to arrive, only for them to never come, and that it was our fault. But it's not your fault. It's no one's fault. That's not the kind of thing that's anyone's fault specifically. I don't get it. Hmm? Kyle can be really scary. Scolding me when I wake up late, or if I file something wrong, or if I don't tidy up the front desk, or forget to smile when greeting a guest. But even if she's strict, she always says it's because we have to be proud of our work, because it's super important, and we have to do it perfectly. But if this room really existed all this time, we can't be perfect. Never ever. Why would she say that stuff? Just have an excuse to boss me around more? No. Oh, Rain. No, oh, she doesn't understand this. It's like, even if you can't be perfect, that doesn't mean you, you necessarily have to stop striving for perfection. Like, even if it's unattainable, you can still aim for it still and do your best. Like, she's obviously saying it to make her work her hardest and do her best. Oh. Yeah, well, that's an easy one. Your dear mentor Kyle heads the undeliverables department. The only staff there, actually. Huh? She never told me that! Not even a hint! Well, you didn't even know the department existed, so... Yeah. Yeah. She's speaking truth when she tells you that us couriers have a lot to be proud of, and we always need to strive to do the best we can. But there's no pride in what she does, Rain. I know she can be a stickler, but try to give her the benefit of the doubt, okay? I had a theory I wanted to share with you, if you remember. Oh, yeah. I stand by my earlier findings. Dandelion never existed. I couldn't find anything, neither documentation nor my own memory, to prove otherwise. But Mila... Believes the opposite, yeah. Even with overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Talking about the undeliverables got me thinking. You accepted its deliver... You accepted its existence as it was. Even though it may have hurt and with nothing concrete to back my words. Just a few minutes ago, the undeliverables didn't exist for you. From your perspective, the department was never there. But now, it is. Where better, then, I wonder, for a letter from a phantom to find itself? Oh, She's helping us. She's helping us. She's helping. Yes! So that means... We should head up right away! <laughs> That's a nice thought. Unfortunately, there's little reason for them to maintain the stairways heading up from here. And, well, you know... Oh yeah, you can't really fly. But Rain can! Oh, you know what you gotta do? You gotta go upwards, Rain! Ah. 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 Only someone with two good wings would be able to make the climb. And getting an escort to take me up would take far too long to schedule in, I fear. This 
music's making me feel really emotional. What the heck? <laughs> Not to mention Kale. Not to mention Kale, Kyle. I keep like changing the pronunciation I'm doing for this name. I, okay, from now on it's Saley. Saley. Just because I, I can't seem to decide on my pronunciation. Let's try a new one. Saley. No doubt I'd be in for a verbal lashing if she caught me up there. No thanks. No, <laughs> no, boss. <laughs> Saley. Saley is like the, the weirdest way you could possibly pronounce that. I don't think you could even do like a soft C with an A after it. I don't think that makes sense. But maybe it makes sense in this world. You are welcome. You're welcome. I'm I'm here to ruin everything. <laughs> no doubt I'd be in for a verbal lashing if she caught me up there. No thanks. Ooh. Rain turns her eyes to the looming darkness once more, scanning the unknown. <gasps> the song reminds you a bit of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Honestly, I can hear it. Me too. Like, oh, the, the Mystery Dungeon music's so good. Oh, I want to replay those games now. It's been so long. It's been so long since I did any mi mystery dungeoning. I, I didn't even play all of the games. I've only played one of them, but it was a very long time ago. But I love the music. Scanning the unknown. In that instant, she thinks of Mila curled up in the other room and how she'd feel if Dandelion's final words never found their way home. I think there are scarier things than Saley. <laughs> no, I can't do this. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I can't. <laughs> How else could it be pronounced? I think just Kyle makes the most sense to me. But every time I say Kyle out loud, I'm imagining like K-Y-L-E, which just feels wrong. Oh, the rest are like weather names, so maybe like hail. Oh, kale. Like kale, like hail. That kale would make sense. It'd be like gale, like how you'd write gale as well. Kale. That makes more sense, I think. Yeah, kale. Oh, it's the, the Gaelic form of hail, and it's technically pronounced the same, but everyone uses a hard C for it. Oh, that makes sense. So, so yeah, Kale. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah, I, that feels that feels right. Uh, anyway, so it's a uh, Saley. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, the four Gale kind in the story's translated names are rain, snow, sleet, and hail. I love that. I love that. It's perfect. It's so perfect. I love it. It's so good. I think there are scarier things than kale. Like coriander. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Neve briefly releases the grip on her bag to ruffle Rain's hat. Well, a courier's work is never done. I've got some leads I'm optimistic about today, so I'm going to head off. Follow me down once you've wrapped up any official office business. You'll make Mizori fret if you take too long. Rain watches Neve slowly disappear from view as she begins her descent. <gasps> Mila's name is an anagram for male too! Oh my goodness, it is! Oh my goodness, it is! Oh, oh there's so much thought going into this. And I'm just here being silly. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. Like, all of the, the designs and the names and stuff are so perfect. It, I, I love this. Once entirely gone from view, she turns back to the door, slowly swinging it open. Mila is waiting on the other side and steps out with nary a word. It wasn't here either, I'm sorry. I know. We've got one more place to check. I know I've said it before, but I'm sure it'll be there this time. We don't have to. No, we do, we do. 
I'm sorry, we do. Of course we do! Come on! I feel like Mila's going to have given up now. But Rain's not. Rain doesn't know how to give up. I love her. I love this game. Rain extends her wing outward, silently beckling. Be beckling? Would it hurt her? Beckling? What, what am I on about? Sli silently beckoning Mila to intertwine once again before resuming their journey. Beckling sounds like a cute word. I don't know what it would mean, though. It would be like beckoning someone towards you, but also heckling them at the same time. Just be like, yeah, I bet you can't get over here. Meh. That's such a niche term. But it just feels nice to say beckling. It's like speckled, I guess. That's also a good word. Mila hesitates for several long moments, though she eventually obliges. Like taunting, but in a supportive way. Just like, yeah, you, you do. You, do you really think you can get up these stairs? I, I don't think you can. Can you prove me wrong? Nah. No, that's still kind of mean, honestly. See, I'm so sorry. I'm just. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. This is why I don't tend to stream late at night or for long periods of time, because I start just coming out with the weirdest stuff. <laughs> And I don't know what I'm talking about. It's fine. It's fine. I'm having a good time, though. I know she can't fly, and this is going to be tough. <laughs> negging positive. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so positive negging is beckling, I guess. That's, I, I, I don't know what I think about that. <laughs> But I want Mila to be there to see the end of this. The letter has to be there. We've got two good wings between us, and that's all Big Sis said we'd need. I'll make it work. I'll just, yeah, just get Mila to, like, hold onto your waist. Or, like, put, put her arms around you, like, around your shoulders. And then fly. That might work. It might be scary. It might be dangerous. You'll make it work, Rain, I believe. Here we go. Oh, this is terrifying. The two continue up the stairs in relative silence. As Neve had implied, however, the ease of the journey eventually comes to an abrupt halt as the girls are met with an impossibly wide gap and strong winds from holes to the outside on far sides of the chasm. Ooh. Ooh, this is scary. The wind is kind of chilly. Yeah, we must be pretty high up by now. Hmm. I could probably carry you over if it wasn't blowing, but now... Really, we don't have to. No, it's all fine. Don't worry. Just give me a minute to think of a plan. Now, where to start? Figuring out the wind currents, I guess. Reach the top! Okay, oh, I wonder if this would be different if I hadn't, like, messed up so much and if I had, like, an extra stamp here. Mysterious. Anyway, let's inspect everything. Inspect the sign. Oh! Warning, only those with two stamps or more be on this point. All other couriers forbidden entry. Well, it's not like I'm able to right now anyway. Let's have a look at the... Oh, the flowers, the plants. Can we make like a, a vine bridge thing? Oh, look, there are some dandelions growing here. Oh, dandelions. Oh, Mila. I thought it would cheer her up, but she looks even sadder now. All right, let's have a look at the gap. Hmm, maybe there's a way we could make it across from below? Uh, I don't see anything. Um, what are you looking for? Ah, I've been thinking to myself this whole time, Mila deserves to be part of this too. Just wondering if there was some way across that we overlooked. Do you see anything? I can look. 
Mila approaches the chasm, looking down at the lower levels of the post office. As she does, her courier cap is stolen away by the wind. Oh, no! Oh my goodness! Ah. She reaches for it, leaning further still into the pit. No, be careful, be careful. Whoa, be careful! Oh, goodbye, hat. It's okay, we've, we've got one hat between us. Yeah, technically I have three stamps. Uh, what if what if Rain just attached them to her cap and said, yes, these were definitely officially applied and I've got three promotions? Yeah, that would work, right? Oh, pa pausing. Pause? Oh, to pause is to wash clothes or sheets by agitating them with water with a stick. Huh. I did not know that. Hold on, I want to. I want to see if "poss" is in my dictionary. Let's have a look. <laughs> Agitating them with clouds, you mean? Yes, uh, uh, clouds. Uh, water, water, cloud. Clouds. Why is? <laughs> okay, I'm looking in my dictionary, and I was just looking for just like "poss" or "possing." And the, the first thing I see is there's an entry in my dictionary that's apparently a British term, a British noun, and it is positive discrimination. And apparently positive discrimination is a British term for the policy of providing jobs or other opportunities to people who belong to groups which suffer discrimination. Positive discrimination. See, to me, the word discrimination feels like such a, a bad thing. You don't just make a bad thing better by putting positive in front of it. Like, surely you could just think of a, a different word instead of just being like positive discrimination. Like, we're discriminating, but it's okay. It's in a positive way. <laughs> but also I realized as well that the page with all like the, that begins with like POS, it's got all the post entries as well. I've just opened my dictionary to loads of post, which feels quite fitting for this game. Right, anyway. <laughs> As Mila feels Rain's embrace pull her back, her outstretched arm goes limp. The hat drifts down, far out of reach. Phew, that was a close one. Are you okay? The response Rain receives isn't the one she expects. As tears start to overtake Mila. Oh no! Oh, she's gonna be so upset. She's just gonna be here like everything's going wrong. Um, I've been told my friend doesn't exist. The letter's not here. There's a big gap we can't get across. I just lost your hat. No, oh, I just I want to give her a big hug and tell her it's gonna be okay. <laughs> oh, bless her. Tears start to overtake Mila. As soon as rain releases Mila. The young Seaborn sprints off, turning a corner and ducking into a nearby room they had passed on the way up. Rain considers chasing after her, but she finds herself unable to move her feet. Poor Mila. I can't even imagine what she's feeling right now. I wish there was something I could do or say to cheer her up, especially when we're this close to the top. Unsure of what else to do and in dire need of a guiding hand, she retrieves the envelope of stamps Neve gifted her from her cloak. <gasps> New stamps? Yeah, told that her friend doesn't exist by the coolest person on the planet. Right. Right. And then lost her hat. I would also burst into tears, I think. After giving each a glance, realization creeps onto her face. Inspiration strikes. I have an idea. I don't know if it'll work, but... Maybe she'll appreciate the thought, at least? I should grab something for her before I make my way down, too. Right, I didn't get to try everything here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save. I'm going to load this. Because I want to inspect everything. Let's inspect the stairs. That's the way up. If the wind wasn't blowing, we'd be over there by now. I inspected that. Here's a sign. I inspect that. And upward sign? 
even if I found a way across, I still wouldn't be allowed past this point. But if I got rid of the sign, I could just say I didn't know that it was a real rule. Oh, you're a genius. No, I shouldn't. I think Kale would be even more mad about tampering with the sign than she would be with trespassing. Oh, really? I see. Upwards gap. <laughs> Wait, let's check below first. Below the sign? Aha! Maybe there's a secret switch that will block the winds or build a bridge or something. Nothing. That would have been such a cool find, too. Alright, how about below the gap? No, because I, I just inspected the gap. Will below the gap do the same thing? What about upwards gap? Well, maybe it's worth seeing if I could get there by myself first. Here goes. Look, I almost got blown over before I could even take off. Oh, well, can't say I didn't try. All right, below gap. Yeah, that's the same thing. Same as inspecting. Okay, that's good to know, though, at least. And now we're back at this point. But I did a few more options. Nice. And I've used all the save slots. <laughs> Retrieve. Oh, but I'm gonna... Oh. I'm gonna bring her a dandelion. Oh. Feels so sad. Hello there, dandelion. You're not the one Mila's looking for, but hopefully she'll be happy to see you anyway. I got you a flower. Oh. Yeah, this isn't going so great. Oh, she's crying with the pigeons. No. Oh, look how cute these pigeons are, though. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. You're so round. Ooh, I love them. I'm a big pigeon fan. I yeah yes I've played Heart of a Boyfriend. I I actually have a um <laughs> uh, I have a pigeon body pillow. <laughs> I have a Heart of a Boyfriend body pillow, and it's like there's a, there's like a human form on one side, but the other is just a pigeon, a pigeon lying on the pillow, and it's it's, it's great. It's such a good pillow. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> Red and blue pigeons on the left, green pigeon on the right. That's oh. Slaps top of post office. This bad boy can fit so many twofold references in it. <laughs> I love it. Rain slowly descends the stairs, arriving at Mila's room with nary a sound. It's a cramped little space, serving as both a storage closet as well as a pigeon roost. Despite the clutter, the first thing Rain spots is her friend curled up into a ball, weeping gently. Oh, Mila. Uh, I'll overwrite. I'll overwrite this one. Okay. Hide. Is that like hide the feed? Okay, I'm gonna inspect the pigeons. It's good to see they're all getting their rest in. They work just as hard as any of us couriers. Yeah, the pigeons do a lot of work. I love them. Let's have a look at the feed. Hmm. I wonder who feeds the pigeons this far up. Mizoro, maybe? I guess they could just help themselves, too. I guess we have a look. Inspect Mila. Save before I do. It looks like she hasn't noticed me yet. I should probably make my presence known. Okay. Can I retrieve a pigeon? I want to retrieve a pigeon, please. Hey there, little friend. Hope you're in the mood for a headbutt. Yes! Yes, I got to headbutt the chickens. There you go. It's helped me feel a little braver, too. Thanks. Oh, the headbutt doesn't work. I forgot about that. The headbutt doesn't work when I'm like this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me... I can make this work. I can give myself a manual headbutt. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to figure out how to give myself a manual headbutt. I know I have it somewhere. Where did I save this? Where is my gif? Where's my head pack gif? Uh oh. I can't find my head pack. Oh no, I found it. There! Yeah, there we go. Manual head pack. I've just got to hide and show it myself. But this also means I can do this. 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Also means I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It also means I can steal the food. <laughs> hey, there we go, manual headpad. It's there. If anyone headpads again, let me know. And I will manually toggle it on. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. I will make it work somehow. I mean, I could just, like, keep it on permanently. I could be permanently headpad. No, it's it was quite a fast headpad. I think that would be too vigorous. Right, what to try next? Retrieve food. Let's get some food. Maybe just a nibble. Oh, don't rain. No, I meant to like feed the pigeons. Don't don't eat the pigeon food. No, I can't. Well, I mean, I could, but now's not the time to be snacking. Okay, thank you for not eating the pigeon food. What do I try now? What happens if I do retrieve Mila? That doesn't feel like what I want to do. Oh, there's more down here too. There's a pink one. There's a pink pigeon. Important. Important details. Yeah, there's no hair ruffle option with PNG either. There isn't, sadly. But it's okay. My hair stays ruffled because we're so high up. I can't do upwards. I can't do below. Yep, I guess, I guess I just have to retrieve Mila now. I was saving that until last, because I figured that's what I have to do. But I can't do anything else, so... Hi. Um, hi, Mila. <laughs> hide feed! Oh, I forgot to hide feed. Oh my goodness, hold on. No, I can't. I don't have the hide. No! It went away when I inspected Mila. I'm going back. I need to hide. I need to hide feed. I need to try it. Thank you. <laughs> I must get everything. Um, maybe I'll just grab a handful for later. Oh my god, yeah, I've got food now. Nice. Nice. Okay. Now I'll just inspect it again because I can. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, baby. I'm doing everything. Wait, yeah, you got to change it to wingful. It just said a handful. It just said a handful of food. Or you could just change it to like a, a pinch. A pinch of food. Just a pocket full. <laughs> or a hat full of food. <laughs> just have her like put it on her hat, on her head. Under her hat. I think that's where she'd keep it. Anyway, retrieve Mila. Um, hi Mila. I brought you a flower. Do you want it? Mila shakes her head, still resting in her arms. Well, that didn't work. Time for my second idea. to go. I promise we'll find a way across, so please cheer up, okay? It's not about that. I don't want to go farther. I'm sorry. Huh? But we're getting really close. This is higher up the tree than I've ever been before. Oh my goodness, Bob! Hello! Oh, thank you for the raid! Thank you for the Bob raid! Welcome! Welcome on in. Welcome to what turned into a marathon stream. <laughs> Hi. Welcome in, Raiders. How was the new model debut? I'm going to be watching the VOD afterwards. I'm so excited to see it. I mean, I, I got a little sneak preview ahead of time anyway, but I can't wait to see it. I hope you had a fun stream. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in, Raiders. To anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK. And um, I'm currently a PNG because my iPhone has run out of battery. Because <laughs> I've been streaming for seven and a half hours. So I'm just a PNG at the moment, but I'll, I'll be back to normal soon, hopefully. We will see. 
But uh, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in. It was great and people were lovely. I'm so glad. Also ignored the merps in the VOD. I, I'm not sure what that means. But uh, thank you. Thank you for the raid. I'm glad it went well. I can't wait to see it. I, I hope you had a lot of fun and also fun with um, Werewolf, the Apocalypse, Earthblood. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds cool. Uh, you lost your soul in the gamble and you're out for more. <gasps> no, can, I'm sorry. I, I don't have a soul. I, d I don't have a soul. You can't steal mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> but welcome in. You have no brain cells. That's completely fine. I, I also have no brain at the moment. I've been inventing new words, so... <laughs> it's completely fine. Thank you for bringing the raid this way, though. I really appreciate it. I'm, a, I'm on game three out of four of the, the Studio Elan Garden Variety Game Jam games. The Dandelion set. And uh, I'm, I'm like three... Like two and a bit, two and a lot out of four... I'm in the third game at the moment, but I'm, I think I'm probably close-ish to the end. Like, I don't think I'm right at the end yet, but I, I think I'm, I'm approaching it. Oh, it's an RPG game based on the, the tabletop roleplay. Oh, that's cool. I hope you had fun with it. You're having so much fun being a mean big wolf. Nice. <laughs> that's the power of RPGs. I love that, but thank you so much for the raid. And uh, I do realize it's it's quite late, so if you have to go get some rest, get some food and drink, please don't feel like you have to stick around. Or like if you want to play these games too, like if, if you don't want to be spoiled, then it's completely fine to not stick around. Because this one's so good. This one's really good. I love it. For no reason at all, what is the twofold font? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got it. I've got it. Hold on. Let me answer this. I'm not looking at the screen. Um, the twofold font is called, it's not South Belgian, that's my logo. Which one is it? Set Fire to the Rain. It's called Set Fire to the Rain. And I know because I already had that font, and then I played twofold. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have that font. <laughs> it's called Set Fire to the Rain. But yeah, thank you for the raid though, Bob. If you... If you got a head off, that's completely fine. But if you want to stick around, we're, we're figuring things out. We're trying to find a letter. We're trying to find a misplaced letter. Oh, tomorrow's a holiday in Germany. Oh, so you got the day off. Nice. So you can hang in the back while you... Oh, good luck with the animation. Wait, no, don't set... Don't. No, no, no. Don't set fire to the rain. That would... That would be mean. <laughs> No, not rain. Oh, your next game protagonist has to be named Stone? Or Wall? Or Well? Oh, Well! Well could be good. Welly. That's like a, like a Wellington boot. Welly. That would be a cute name, actually. Oh, the rain font is Stonewall. Wait, oh, Stonewell even. Yeah, it's a Stonewell as... The next character name and then whatever font you choose for that game that will be the name of the character in the next one you can have this little relay going that's a really good idea for not having to think of character names <laughs> you'll set fire to no don't set fire to the rain rain is the name of the main character in this game and she's a sweetheart she is a lovely little sweetheart who's trying her best so we're not allowed to set fire to her i will i will not let you I refuse. I'm like the, the rain defense squad now. <laughs> oh. Okay. Anyway, back to the game. But thank you for the raid. Huh? But we're getting really close. This is higher up the tree than I've ever been before. But I'm getting close to what? It's not going to be there. What are you saying? Of course it will. Can you nom then? Oh, you can nom some of the, the pigeon feed if you like. We've got loads of that. We've got like bags full of it here. You can help yourself to as much of that as you like. <laughs> what are you saying? Of course it will. No, I don't think so. Mom said Dandy wouldn't have left a letter. 
We couldn't find it at any of the other places you said it would be. Miss Neve doesn't even think Gandhi is real. The way up is scary, and me not being able to fly is only going to make things more dangerous for you. And even if we do make it up, we're looking for a room that you didn't even know existed until just now. <laughs> Mom and Neve are right. They have to be there. It won't be anything there. And it's not worth it. Thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> Let me have a sip of my monster. You can't see it because I'm a PNG, but I'm drinking. Thank you for the hydrate. The, the cans still show up. They just kind of keep flying. <laughs> oh, poor Mila. Poor Mila. Please, Rain. Let's just leave. Mila, hey! Up with Mila. It'll be there, I promise. And if it isn't, we'll keep looking. Why do you keep saying things like that? Daddy Lion didn't send anything. Everyone knew that already, except for me. I keep saying it because it's true. I don't know why your mom said those things or why Neve mentioned not knowing her, but Dandelion is real. With the way you talk about her, how could she not be? And if she loved you even half as much as you loved her, she would have left something for you. You never even met her. That doesn't matter. I trust you 100%. And that means I trust Dandelion too. I just want to like wipe her tears away, give her a big hug, adopt her. <laughs> I can prove it too. Here, look at these. These are the stamps Neve gave me earlier. They don't print with these colors much, so they're super rare. I don't know how Neve got so many. I'm going to add them to my collection when we're back on the ground floor, but I think you should take them for now. I understand. I want them back later. So how about you trade them to me for Dandelion's letter? Oh, that way, that's so sweet. Oh, Rain. Oh, Rain. So Rain is just like here. These really cool stamps are, are now collateral as proof of how dedicated I am to find this letter for you. I'm so oh, blessed. Bless her. I'm not too worried. They'll be mine by the end of the day. <laughs> She's smiling. She's smiling. Good. A smile. What's so funny? It's just... Oh, another one. It's just... Dandy used to do the same thing. Oh, I love when we're getting these stamps of Dandy. Because we had the one earlier as well with the clothes and the bandana. Ooh. It's just, Dandy used to do the same thing. It's like she could always tell when I was sad. Whenever I started feeling bad, she'd come, always come over with some of her favorite toys so we could play together. Hey, these aren't toys. I know, I know. Thank you, anyway. I'll keep them safe for you. Good to hear, I'm trusting you. I do think I'm going to keep one though. Oh, can I see? <laughs> That's so cute. That is so cute. The trust. Trust, Mila. Oh, I love that. Ooh. <laughs> Hi. Trust. I trust Mila. Hi, Rain. Oh, it's a pretty one. If you keep the nicest one, doesn't that kind of ruin the point? Oh, look at these three together. They're, they're so comfy together. I love that. <laughs> Consider it an upfront payment. I'm still prepared to put in the work for the others. All right. If you're sure. Mila. I know it can come off as silly, but I mean it. I trust you, and I'm not going to stop looking for Dandelion's letter. I love that we're seeing Rain here. 
Two reds and a blue, what could it mean? What does it mean? <gasps> oh, parents, wait, yes. Yes. Yes, perfect. I love it. I love it. I love how much meaning there is in these pigeons. I'm obsessed with them. When's the pigeon game happening? Are, are you going to make a pigeon game? Can you make a pigeon game? I mean, this one has like a bird, like the gale folk and stuff. Can we have pigeons next? Can I put in a humble request? <laughs> I'm going to file my humble request so that you can throw it in the bin. <laughs> I know it can come off as silly, but I mean it. I trust you, and I'm not going to stop looking for Dandelion's letter. Can you trust me too? When I say that I'll keep, that we'll keep going until we reach the very tip top of the tree if we have to? The pigeon DLC. It's like the pigeon add-on and everything, like it's just the whole game as it usually is, but all of the images are replaced with pigeons and all of the text is just changed to say, cool, cool. And that's, that's all that it is. It's not even like a game anymore. It's indecipherable. <laughs> this, is, this is why I don't stream for eight hours straight. <laughs> or maybe this is why I should stream for eight hours straight. Maybe I'm cooking. I mean, I'm cooking something. I don't know if it's edible, but... You've made another meme. Oh, I can't wait to see the memes after. She smiles through so much that I wonder sometimes how much of it is real and how much of it is just for my sake. But even if she's just smiling for me, that's still more proof than I could ever need. I can. Great! Then let's get back to searching for a way up. Oh, um, actually? Hmm? And there has to be a Leary pigeon as well. Okay, can I be this one, maybe? Maybe maybe I'm a pigeon that's like hiding behind the food. <laughs> oh, I was going to have a look at these pigeons more and check the colors of them more, but Rain's kind of standing in the way at the moment, so I can't do that. Afterwards. Hmm? I'm not sure if it means anything, but I saw a sign like the one outside on the side of the bookshelf earlier. I should show it to her. Oh! Mila found something? Maybe a widgeon. Wait, I've still got the, the widgeon picture. Have you ever heard of a widgeon? I discovered it the other day when I got a dictionary narration redeem for the letter W. And um, apparently a widgeon is a type of bird. But it's, it's just written as a pigeon, but with a W. And it's like a water, it's a water bird. So it's basically like they went, oh, this is like a pigeon, but it's in the water. What do we call it? Water pigeon. Widgeon. Widgeon. That works. Anyway, that's a widgeon. You're welcome. Ed educational streams. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save. Inspect. Inspect the pigeons. So, this is where all of the pigeons sleep? One of the places, they have roosts all over the tree. You see them all the time in the village since they pick up all of our mail. I was wondering why I haven't seen too many so far. They work even harder than we do. They spend a lot of time sleeping when they're back home. Poor little pigeons. Have a good night. Aww. I love them. What is that? Oh, there's the bookshelf. Yeah, I don't want to look at that yet. Let's have a look at the food. Wow, there's a lot of pigeon feed stored here. I haven't eaten all day. If it's good enough for them... No, I'm not that hungry yet. <laughs> Maybe just a nibble? Maybe just a nibble? No, not just a nibble. Okay. Let's inspect rain. We've come a long way from the bottom. Sure have. We can't stop yet, though. I don't know how you can always have so much energy. 
I've said it before and I'll say it again. A courier's work is never done. <laughs> You're really cool, Rain. Ah, uh, well... I'm nothing compared to Big Sis, I'm sure. I think you're even cooler than Miss Neve. Bless. Bless her. That's the best compliment for Rain. <laughs> oh no, why are you crying? That's the, that's the biggest compliment she could get. Anyway, let's have a look at the bookshelf. Look, there's a switch on the side here. Okay, you leave now. This is as far as you got. Okay, bye, Suzume. I'm glad you were able to join for some of it at least. Bye bye. Take care. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the hydrate. And before you leave. And the posture check. I'm I'm stretching. You can't see it because I'm a small beam. Oh wait, before you go, before you go. Ah ba ba ba. Thank you for the gym. Here's another one. My physical gym button. My real life button that I can press and it says gym. I love this thing. I love it. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, I love how it looks like I'm the one saying gym. Like. That's just what my voice sounds like. I'm just really that good at voice acting. <laughs> Look, there's a switch on the side here. Whoa, good find. I'm going to flip it. Rain, wait. That's what I would do. Oop. Whoa, there's a secret passage. There's a secret passage. A secret corridor? And it's coming up. What if that sounded an alarm or something? Well, it didn't. And we have a way up now. You're the best, Mila. But what if we go in and it closes behind us? Or if it's a dead end? Or... Then we'll find a way out. But it'll be okay. Trust me, Mila. Wait. Oh, no. It's... The they're like matching trust stickers. Wait, I love these. I love this sticker. Oh, they're like two parts of a, a set, the stickers. I bet that the, the string connects. Oh, I love this. And we're back around again. Oh, I love it. Okay, you're right. Then let's get going. Just hang on for a little longer. We'll be there before you know it. I can see these pigeons now. Hello. Blue, green, pink, purple. Hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Then let's get going. Just hang on for a little longer. We'll be there before you know it. Let's go. We're going up. The two continue onwards, arms interlocked. Higher, until the stairs merge with those from the other side of the gap. And higher still. The wind is just about gone. There's no more windows to the outside from here. Yeah, the, the stamp printing company had like a whole plan set out. Can you imagine like being in charge of the stamp printing and just being like, I'm going to connect this like this. And then I'm going to make a stamp later on. Nobody's going to suspect it. It's going to match so perfectly. I'm going to be a genius. And then nobody would ever notice. And the person would feel disappointed. <laughs> no, if, if that was me, I would, I would then just be like, hey, look what I did. It would be cool. It's getting pretty dark, too. I don't even want to think about how I have a have a have a her how high up we are now. I know. I can't believe Kale's office is even higher. Maybe she has a secret way to get there? I can't imagine having to do this every time she needed something. I bet there's just an elevator in the middle of the tree. I bet there's like a 
a high-speed elevator in the middle that nobody's noticed. Nah, she could do it. She could fly super fast. It's almost scary. Just like almost everything else about her. <laughs> I heard Neve call her your mentor. Unfortunately. She's so mean. If anything ever goes even slightly wrong, she's over my shoulder in an instant to scold me. I think she does that because she believes in you and she cares and she knows you can do better. It's like she can just sense whenever I screw up, even if it's something tiny like not washing my feathers after I write something down or sleeping in for an extra five minutes. Um, both of those sound like things you shouldn't really be doing though. <laughs> well, yeah, but... You know... Well, it's, it's other things, too. A lot of things, actually. I know our job is important and we always have to do our best, but I just think she takes it too far sometimes. I'm still just learning. I wish she, should, I wish she would remember that before being so strict and upright about it all the time. Either way... It doesn't sound like someone we want to meet up here. Yeah, probably not. After sneaking in. <laughs> you can say that again. Let's hurry up a little. We can't be far from the department now. Ah. Whoa! Wait, this is gorgeous. Oh no, not again. After a long and tiring but otherwise unopposed climb, the two companions are met once again with a large chasm separating them from their goal. But why it purple? <laughs> I love it. It's so pretty. I'm, I keep. I'm looking at this up here. I'm like, oh, oh, look at that. It looks so different this high up. It doesn't even look like the post office anymore. There's not much air up here either. Maybe that'll make getting across easier at least, since there isn't any wind to make flying harder. Oh, but you, you, you need a bit of wind. Like, that's how flying works. You need the wind under your wings to, to go anywhere. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. It's hard to get much height when it's like this, though. I could probably do it if I had to, but... Then we'll think of something else. We can't stop when we're so close. Oh, how the tables have turned. How the turntables. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's take a sec to catch our breath and then see what we can come up with. Oh my goodness. Oh, trust. Oh my goodness. Oh, can I do different things as each of them? Can I use trust to swap between them? And they have different things that they can do. Below, onwards, upwards. I love the onwards one. See, that's my kind of stamp. I like that. This one is my stamp. All right, I guess we start by inspecting. Let's inspect the support. What are these? What, this old thing? It's a perch. They're a lot more comfortable to stand on than flat flooring usually, but these are too narrow for even my claws. Must be pretty old fashioned. Ooh. Wanna do stamp stickers for a merch run? You say stickers, I'm 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 buying twelve, please. <laughs> that would be so lovely though. A little stamp sheet, like a sticker sheet with stamps on. Oh, I want that. I would love that. Please. I am like the biggest sticker fiend. Like any kind of stickers if anyone does like a sticker run of anything um just know that you don't have to worry about not selling them all because i will buy them all i will buy like 20 sheets i i love stickers stickers are my favorite it's like the whole reason why for my first my first my first merch set i wanted to have a sticker book purely for like my own selfish reasons because i love stickers <laughs> That's the whole reason why I've got the sticker book from my, my anniversary bundle. I just love stickers. I wanted a sticker book. I was like, what if what if I had my own sticker book? And, and we made it happen. 
thank you, Verpro Squad. <laughs> and it's so good. I love having a sticker book because every now and then if I'm bored, I'll open my sticker book. I'll be like, oh, actually, this would look better if I moved it a little bit. I'll just like unpeel the stickers and put them back in. There's something so satisfying about it. Like, I have to be careful not to do it too much because then all of the stickers are just going to like lose their stickiness if I do it too much. But it's so satisfying. It's so nice to just pull them out and put them back in. Anyway, let's inspect the wind chimes. Isn't it sort of weird to have wind chimes way up here when there's not any breeze? Maybe they make a sound when a courier flies near them. Sort of like the bell over the front desk door. Yeah, that's that would that would make sense. Oh, I'd really like to hear them, but they're so far away. Hmm. She could probably hear them from here if I fly over. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Let's inspect the gap. I, I can't even see the bottom from up here. I won't let any. I won't ever let anything bad happen to you. Don't worry. And what, what's this? Inspect Mila. Okay, I think I'm good. How about you? A lot better, thank you. There were so many stairs. Okay, let's get right into it then. So I think I could get you there, but it'd be kind of risky. I don't really want to try it if it could put you in danger. It's a really big pit. I think no matter what we do, it's going to be dangerous. I guess you're right, but still. Maybe if we could just make it a little bit easier somehow, that would be okay? That might be easier than trying to think of something entirely new. That could work. It'd still be a little scary though. Are you sure you're okay with that? Yeah, I trust you. Well, okay, in that case, let's see what we can do. Can I inspect? Okay. I uh, Rain cannot inspect herself, but if I do trust. Trust Mila. Boop. Hmm. Right, let's put that back for now. Right, I guess it's time I actually should start, like, trying things. Let's see below what's below the wind chimes look there's yeah there's a there's a perch below the wind chimes as well there's one here there's one down there hmm be an awkward perch to land on huh there are large tiles here the rest of the post office isn't like this there are scratches on the floor too probably from kale all right what is below the gap Nope, no getting around it. We'll actually just have to cross it this time. What's below Mila? Hey, can you climb? What? My talents are pretty good at grabbing hold of things, so I was thinking maybe if we only got most of the way there, you could climb up the other side? That's asking a lot. Um, can we think of something else, please? Yeah, no, that's terrifying. <laughs> Climb on what? Climb on what, Rain? Right, what's what's below Rain? Maybe we should just try and have you fly us over there after all. I really don't want to risk it until we can make it a little easier. We just need a tiny bit extra help to make it across. We'll think of something. I think, like, if there's a way we can use the wind chimes, maybe... Hmm. Right, so I'm down to onwards with either of the two of us. Or upwards. Or upwards Mila. What would upwards Mila do? What would this do? Maybe you could get a running jump. No, that's... Never mind. <laughs> then I could catch you and we wouldn't have to fly as far. That sounds more dangerous than just trying to fly normally. It's worth at least thinking about. Give me your best jump. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that's... No. Yeah. 
Yeah, me too, Mila. All right, this won't work. <laughs> uh, yep, me too. Yeah, so I guess... I guess we just go onwards. Let me save. Onwards, onwards rain. Trust Mila. Oh, I can't do them both at the same time. Okay. Onwards, Mila. I want trust Mila. Hmm, I'm stumped. Oh, is it? This might give me a hint, actually. I'll keep going. But this. I, <laughs> if I can get any ideas. Oh no, yes! I just had to actually click submit. That, I never clicked submit before. I just put the stamp on there and expected it to work. I didn't actually click OK. So yes, it is different for Mila. I, this is what I thought. This is what I thought it might be. I was just silly. I was just a silly bean. Connect? Oh. Connect the perches? Wait, I want to inspect first. Inspect the wind chimes as Mila. Those wind chimes are kind of scary. What do you mean? We have some invitae, but we make them out of beads and hang them over our doors. Those look way bigger. Stronger too. The ropes there look huge compared to the fishing line we use. <gasps> oh, I'd love to see some seaborne wind chimes someday. Okay, I know what I have to do now. <laughs> Maybe next time you come to the village, we can make some together. Well, I can watch at least. Crafts and wings don't mix. No, I bet she could if she tried. Oh, you added the, the Mila point of view to this puzzle in last night's update. Oh, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Like, like seven hours before mine and Mari's streams were due to start. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. <laughs> See, you do all of these things and then thank us in the credits and it's like, you deserve all of the thanks here. Like, yeah, the thanks are for you. Thank you. <laughs> but also, thank you. I like seeing my name there too. <laughs> okay, so I, I know what I have to do now. I'm pretty sure it's going to be onwards rain. Rain gets up here, throws down the rope, which Mila can bring down to here and then we get across. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Anyway. Inspect the gap. I need to be brave. I need to be brave. As long as I don't look down, I'll be okay. Inspect. Inspect rain. Any ideas? No, I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I'm totally clueless right now, too. Usually that would make me worried, but the way she's smiling at me... I think we'll be okay. All right. I want to see what happens if I do connect rain. I'm going to save again. Just because it's easier. Rain, I... I just wanted to say, if we can't make it across... Nope, I don't want to hear it. But we'll find a way for sure. Trust me. We can do it. We will. I'm doing like the last things that I think it will actually be because I just want to click all of the stamps. <laughs> Connect support. Hmm. No, no matter what I do, these don't budge. Maybe we can use them somehow. Yep. Okay, I think I've looked at everything now, so... Onwards, Rain. Rain. Hmm? If you go on ahead, maybe you'll have more luck. And leave you here? No way. There's got to be something we can do. She's so positive. There doesn't seem to be anything on this side, though. I know. This way that I want to get the, the wind chimes. <laughs> Onwards, Mila. Oh, she's moving forwards. Oh, sorry. I just don't think I can do it. <laughs> All right, back over. 
Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I just started coughing then. I've got water. Why am I not drinking my water? There we go. Stop choking on nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. I don't think there's anything over here we can use. That's okay. Even crossing out possibilities is a big help. <gasps> Thank you for the hydrate. Yes. That is what I need to do. I just, I just suddenly had a coughing fit out of nowhere and didn't even think to take a drink. That is much better. Thank you. <laughs> I think this one is all up to me. Yep. Onwards. Come on, onwards rain. Yes, here we go. Stay right here. I'll be right back. Whee! Look at her go. Ling. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, they have such a pretty sound. It's sort of um, twinkle, twinkle. It is. She's so cute. Ah, I gotta focus. <laughs> just like I just have water here. I should be drinking that. Uh, my coughing fit had uh, kind of clouded my vision. I didn't know water I was doing. No, that was that was just bad. That one wasn't good. Never mind. <laughs> just like, why am I not having my water? Truly, my thoughts have been clouded. But the clouds have parted. And now I can see the water. <laughs> oh, I gotta focus. <laughs> so right, Rain, I do. Ah. Right, so now... I can't do upwards rain. Okay, so now I think... It's something with the wind chimes. Look at the wind chimes now. Just plain ordinary wind chimes hung up by thin ropes. Wait, maybe we could use the ropes to make some kind of bridge. Yeah, see, that's what I said right at the start. I'm proud. I'm proud of myself. See, I I feel like, like the fact that I'm taking so long on these puzzles probably makes it seem like I don't know what I'm doing. But the thing is, I figure out what I should be doing and then I want to click every other option before I actually do it. So I'm actually big brain. <laughs> Please trust me. I am, I swear. Hey, Mila, I've got an idea. Uh, okay. Let's see. I should bring these over to her. Yes. Retrieve wind chimes. Yoink. Got him. Now to get back to Mila. Wait, no. I've got the retrieve stamp now. I need to click on everything with the retrieve stamp before I go back. Oh no, that's all I can do anyway. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I got him. Got him. Now to get back to Mila. They have been retrieved. Onwards. Onwards, rain. On my way. Whee. Look. Maybe we can use the rope on these wind chimes to make you a bridge? It'll be narrow, but you could hold on to me while I fly above you for support. You want me to walk across something as small as that? I won't let you fall, I promise. You won't get in trouble for taking these down? Not if we put them back where we found them, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm willing to try. All right, you attach it from this side and I'll handle it on the other. Be back in just a moment. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Oh, it's, oh, it's a pretty bridge. It's such a pretty bridge. Ah, I'm done. Me too. Good job. I really hope it's secure on these. Are we ready then? Hmm. Actually, let me test it first. If something goes wrong, I can just fly back up. That's true. That's a good, good plan. Whoop! 
I'm glad she tested it. Ah! It takes only the slightest touch for the rope to come undone. No! It was such a good idea! No! This was all we had left, but if it's not strong enough... Oh, you struggled to concept this puzzle for so long. Yeah, oh, I love it. It is so iconic looking. It's so pretty. I love the thought just like, yes, wind chime bridge. What if? It's so, it's gorgeous. I love it. That, that image as well, like seeing rain sitting in the middle, like I'd make that a wallpaper. I kind of want that as my wallpaper. Just the the image of the wind chime bridge with the rain sitting on it. It was so pretty. This was all we had left, but if it's not strong enough... I'm sorry, Mila. I'm out of ideas. Ooh. What if we made it stronger? Huh? Look, have you ever made a daisy chain before? Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh my God, yes. Have you ever made a daisy chain before? Mila retrieves her courier's, uh, from her courier's cloak, the dandelion Rain had gifted her at the start of their ascent from Neve's office. She carefully splits the stem in two, then braids the two halves back together. Maybe we could do the same thing with the wind chimes? Whoa, that's so cool. You're the coolest. <laughs> it's just something my mom taught me how to do. It's not that hard. Easy for you to say. I can't do anything like that with my wings. If you think it's worth trying, I can handle it if you can get me the wind chimes. Sounds like a plan. Leave it to me. Ooh. Retrieve wind chimes. Let's get them. Um, uh, I used I used to make daisy chains all the time when I was younger. Like I'd just sit in a field and pick daisies and make like a really long chain. And like I'd always have the intention of making a necklace, but I'd get so carried away with the daisy chain and like the split the stem, put one in, split the stem, put one in. I'd make it like way longer than a necklace would need to be. And I'd have to wrap it around a couple of times because I just I just kept doing it. Like I'd, I'd just keep linking the daisies. <laughs> I like daisy chains. Hello again. I'm going to need to borrow you just one more time. Sorry. Mila, I know you can do it. Strong bridge. Boop -a -doop, boop -a -doop, boop -a -doop, boop -a -doop. Just checking. Trust me. The rest is up to you. <gasps> Connect. Oh. Here we go. Connecting them. This part goes under and then tug. Just getting started. Okay. Oh, actually, I, hold on. My, my iPhone's on 50%. I think that should be enough now. I think I can un-PNG. I think I can start moving again. Hold on. Let me try. Let me test it. My iPhone charges so quickly whenever I don't have VTube Studio open. But as, whenever VTube Studio is open and connected, it, it just eats the battery. It's okay. I can move now. The power of the wind chimes. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Oh, I guess I can turn the redeems on again now as well. Let me grab them. Thank you for the dude! Let me put them back on if anyone wants to give me my glasses back or anything. There we go. Got him back. Right, now, keep connecting. Keep connecting. Connect the wind chimes. 
keep weaving them. Thank you for the hydrate! Thank you, I will have a sip of my drink. You can actually kind of see me taking the sip now. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, thank you! This feels pretty tight. I think this might work. Almost there. Keep going, keep going, we got this. Done. It's still scary, but I think this is as safe as I could have made it. Now to just tie them to the sides again. Okay. Connect. Okay, I'm finished. Can you get the far side, Rain? Yeah. Trust Rain. Rain time. You got it. Ah, they're weaving it together. Ugh. I love this. I love this wind chime bridge. I. It's it's very dangerous. It's very terrifying from the point of view of a bridge, but it's so pretty. I love this. You think you managed to do the animation? Oh my goodness! Let's go! Nice. All right, I'll fly right above you. Hang on tight to me, okay? I'll keep you balanced, so just keep being brave and we'll be on the other side before you know it. I don't know if I can stop being scared, but I trust you. Mm. Onwards. Onwards, Mila. Oh, look at the... Ah. You're doing great. One foot in front of the other. I'm trying. That must be scary. I would be terrified. Onwards, Mila. We've got this. Just keep looking forward. We're almost there. Don't look down. Don't look down. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing so well. You are doing so well. Keep going. Did you hear that? The rope is starting to snap. Go fast. Fast. But we're so close. Jump as best you can. I can get us the rest of the way there if you do. Upwards, Mila. Das! Oh, they made it. They made it. Yes. Whew. Oof. With the extra bit of distance offered by Mila's jump, Rain is able to fly the two the rest of the way. Their landing is one without much grace, but that is the furthest thing from their minds. You did it! You're amazing! You did all the hard work. Nuh uh. I bet you're the first person without wings to ever fly like that before. Probably, huh? No. The girls take a much-earned rest, lying on the tiled floor until their heartbeats return to normal and they can stand without trembling. And once again, they climb. Stairway after stairway, hall after hall. Until they turn one final corner. Whoa! Does a big door. Whoa! But Wyatt Earple. <laughs> I need to stop saying that. <laughs> Is this it? It's gigantic. It has to be. Something's not right, though. Huh? Look, the door handles. We don't have those anywhere else in here. They're hard to use with our wings. Hmm. Hmm. That is mysterious. Oh, now that you mention it, the front of the post office is the same way. Either way, it looks like we can still push it from this side. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, on three. One, two, three. The two girls push and push and push until the aging wood of the door begins to creak in protest. Oh. There's all the wind chimes around here, too. Slowly but eventually, the hinges give way, offering Rain and Mila the victory as the door opens and the two take their first steps inside. Whoa! Hmm. 
the undeliverables repentance roost. Whoa. Whoa, this feels so ominous. Ooh. <laughs> when you made the tweet about being able to make super anime sounding location names, you're talking about this. I love it. I love it. Because I saw that tweet too and I was just like, yeah. Yeah, the power of fantasy. Just like you can call things whatever you want. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, this is this feels so ominous. I'm I'm scared. Though not as bright as the lower floors, the scattering of lamps and lanterns are a welcome reprieve from the darkness they had just finished navigating. The room they serve to light, however, is much less comforting. With a bare floor and no furniture save the tables for the lamps to sit on, the undeliverables would make for the most unremarkable room in the entirety of the tree's endless trunk save for two very important aspects. Wow. Whoa. The room's incredibly tall ceiling, reaching so high as to be all but immune to the numerous light sources, and the wall of outgoing boxes that matched its grandiose heights. Tandy's letter is somewhere in here? Yeah, it's gotta be. Let's start looking in the bottom rows. Kale always tells me to sort lowest to highest, so I don't have to waste my energy flying as much. Okay, but, um, how will we know which one is Dandy's? Hmm. Maybe we can just empty all the boxes for now and make a pile of letters? It might be easier if you can look at them all at once. Messing up the order of things will definitely get you in trouble, though. <laughs> if we get caught now, I'm going to get in trouble no matter what. We should probably still hurry, though. Yeah, this is past the part of worrying about getting in trouble. This... <laughs> Eager to find their prize, Rain quickly makes her way to one end of the wall and begins her search, with Mila following close behind. Okay. With every box she passes, however, her energy wanes and heart sinks. Empty. I thought they might be empty. 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 What? Didn't Miss Neve say that there were letters that she couldn't figure out? There should be something, even if it isn't Dandy's, right? Yeah, so why isn't it there? Did someone steal them? Maybe they empty the room after a while? No, I don't think they'd do that. Especially not with like a room this big. With so much space, they wouldn't have to empty it. Which would probably mean... It's gone. Oh no, Rain, what's wrong? I, I'm sorry. I really th thought thought it'd be. It's okay. No, it isn't. It is. No rain. No. Why aren't you sad about this? I am sad, but maybe it's better like this. No. Uh -huh. I was really scared that we wouldn't find it, because that would mean Dandy didn't feel strong enough about me to leave anything. But if they just get rid of the, the letters eventually, then we don't know if it was ever here or not. If we don't know for sure, then I, I can just keep pretending that she did. Oh, that's so sad, though. That's so sad, though. Don't say that. But more than that, I'm sad because you're sad. You did so much for me. You don't deserve to feel like this. I really want to cry too, but I, I feel like I can't if you already are. So please stop crying, Rain. <laughs> well, how can you keep crying after that, right? <laughs> oh. Rain isn't sure if she feels better. 
but attempts to refocus herself with a couple deep exhales regardless. She wipes away her remaining tears, staining her wing. Oh. We, we should probably leave before Kale shows up. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 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 I think Kale's been here the whole time. If your aim was to avoid me, you'd have done well to keep your feet to the earth and wings in your cloak. That it. Hi. Hi. Or, barring that, closing the door behind you so the light doesn't escape. Your lack of basic etiquette has proven your downfall, just as I warned you multiple times it would. Kale! How is she always able to sneak up on me? Please wait, I can explain. I very much doubt that, but feel free to try. Let's start with an easy- Oh my god, she's doing the shaft head tilt. <laughs> Let's start with an easy inquiry. Why aren't you attending to the front desk right now? Um, well, that's... Afterwards, we can discuss the missing hat from our ground floor storage. Coincidentally, the same hat that was assigned to you last year. Well, technically, that was... Or, if you prefer, we can put that aside for now and discuss the mess that was made on the path up here. Alternatively, we can skip to whatever excuse you could possibly have for bringing a guest of the post this far up with nary a concern for their safety to this specific room where you are nowhere near the appropriate clearance to even dream of holding access. She, she's not a guest. She's a courier. Look at her uniform. Please. Her frown unflinching, Kale lifts her wings to the air. Her wingspan makes the girls feel smaller than they already are, but that sensation is only compounded upon when Kale brings her wings down with terrifying force. Oh. A gust is released that effortlessly blows Mila's cloak and barding loose with a couple poor lamps falling victim as well. Enough of this rain. It, it was my fault. Please don't be mad at her. No. Uh -huh. Oh, I love the head tilt. I love the head tilt. Kale shifts her eyes to Mila, holding them on her for what feels like an eternity to the girl, before eventually shifting the rest of her body as well. I don't think I've had the pleasure, miss. She does. Kale raises a wing once more, bidding Rain silence. Um, my name is Mila. My best friend. Well, I'm expecting a letter from her. But Rain is my other best friend, and all she did was help try to help me find it, so please. Get angry with me instead. Mila. <laughs> she looks so confused. <laughs> She's just like, huh? All guests of Morton Post are to be treated with the utmost request. Uh, with the utmost respect. I'm afraid, however, that I can't honor your request. This is a place of work. There are rules, traditions, expectations, Countless examples, nearly all of which Rain has managed to break within a short window of a few hours. I'll unfortunately have to inform any guardians you may have of your presence here today, but rest assured that you'll still be welcome to the post with open wings in the future, miss. Mm. Mm. As for you, Rain... 
I doubt I need to tell you that there will be severe consequences for your little adventure today. Needless to say, the postmaster will be informed of every last detail. I doubt Mila's mum will ever let her come back here. And even if she did, I'm sure whatever punishment I get will make sure we can't see each other again. This is it. My time with Mila is over. No, it's not the end. I believe. I understand. I don't care if you want me to polish the floors every single day for the rest of my life or if I'm stuck on the front desk forever. Even if you asked me to leave the post office, I would. Rain. Hmm. I promise I'm telling the truth. You won't have to worry about me, no matter what. But before that, can I ask you something? That depends entirely upon the question. Even if we never get to talk again, I can still leave Mila with something. A clue to keep chasing after to find Dandelion's message. She may not be able to get to it right now, but I know she'll be able to find it someday. Maybe Big Sis would even be able to help. Where do the deliveries go after they leave this place? I know there should be at least a few things here. There should at least be a few things here, but all of the boxes are empty. Well, that's a curious piece of knowledge you found for yourself. Am I to assume you at least know the general purpose of this department? I think so. Very well. This is a lesson you ought to learn sooner rather than later in any case. You're operating on two incorrect assumptions, however. Allow me to clarify before continuing. One, not all of the boxes are empty. Kale looks upwards into the darkness. She stays unmoving for several minutes, leaving Rain and Mila uneasy and uncertain. Oh. Oh. At long last, however, the topmost box on the far left begins to emit a faint glow. One, two, three, four, five. Rain counts Kale's wing beats as she prepares to take off, her mentor bending her knees with every flap. Yup. On six, she takes flight. The girls watch in amazement as Kale speeds through the air, skillfully slowing herself as she approaches the ceiling. At the apex of her ascent, all that's visible of her from the floor is what the glow illuminates. She floats expertly to the ground, letter in wing. With just as much fit uh, with just as much finesse, she opens the lip of the envelope with the side of a feather. Hey! You can't just... Yeah, she can. Like she had before, Kale again raises a wing to Rain, demanding her silence as she quietly reads the contents of the letter to herself. Her eyes subtly shift back and forth, absorbing each written word to memory with precision and care. As she does so, the intensity of the shine continues to increase, forcing Mila and Rain to look away. And in an instant, the light is gone. When Rain turns her head back, Kale stands there, empty winged, with only the faintest of glimmers escaping her grasp before disappearing to nothing. Two. No delivery ever leaves this room. Oh. Where did... What happened to that letter just now? Mm -hmm. Miss, have you been taught about the cycle of magic yet? Huh? Me? Um, our food and clothes have them, right? And they have something to do with the letters? A good enough foundation. For the sake of being thorough, allow me to walk you through the rest. Ooh. 
Oh, wow. All of us, outside of Euseborn, are born with at least some amount of magic. The Earthfoot people are special, with them having and generating a much larger quantity. As such, they imbue their creations, meals or clothing, with excess magic. By wearing or consuming these, we take their magic into ourselves. Said magic is a subtle thing, however. In truth, its only practical function is to lengthen our lifespans as far as they can reasonably go. It's not infinite, though. When someone passes on, whether through natural causes or otherwise, that magic remaining within has to go somewhere. And, for reasons we have yet to uncover ourselves, that location is the top of this tree. And the magic turns into letters? Or rarely a package, but yes. Thoughts, feelings, unfinished business, imprinted directly onto the soul, made manifest in our humble mortem post. Does that mean if you don't have a lot of magic, you won't get to send any letters? Oh. Oh. Seaborn usually only get one, but the other races can send multiple before the last of their magic dissipates. We have records of a few Earthfoot who sent down well over a hundred deliveries. Oh, wow. Magic is an impatient thing, however, and it isn't keen to wait. If we fail to do our duty and deliver these messages to their intended recipients on time, well, you have first-hand experience with that now. Why don't they just disappear after they get delivered? A good question, and one without a satisfying answer. Our best guess is that the delivery is tied to its recipient in some form. Once a letter or package reaches its intended destination, it's able to maintain a tangible form. In any case, I apologize for the long-winded explanation. I hope you'll see that it was necessary to fully answer the question at hand, however. So I couldn't even give Myla... I couldn't even give Mila another thread to pull out. I'm so sorry. Um, that letter you just read. Is there any chance it could have been from my friend? Her name was Dandelion, but I called her Dandy. Also, you spell my name like... The contents of the message are strictly confidential. Sorry, miss. I can assure you that nothing in it implied that it would have been for you, at least. Oh. So long as your friend has imprinted the appropriate information, you needn't worry. The delivery doesn't expire for a full three weeks after it is initially left in our care. A more than sufficient amount of time for it to go through our system. Three weeks. All Mila can offer is a gasp and a small, sad nod. Three weeks? Then... Oh, this is just so frustrating. Everything we did and we're just going to end like this? With not even a tiny bit of good news for Mila? And we're probably never going to see each other again? And Kale's just standing there talking like nothing's wrong or even weird and talking about following rules or whatever while breaking just as many as me? Ah. Why were you even reading it anyway? Not opening mail that doesn't belong to you is the very first thing we're taught. Did you forget? And sorting top to bottom. You said we start at the bottom and then it's just to not stress your wings, even though I think it's easier to remember. You always get so mad at me whenever I start from the top, but you get to do it with a much bigger set of boxes? And that treating our guests with respect, if the letter wasn't important, we wouldn't have come all this way. And you're just going to pretend that doesn't matter? If we respected our guests, we wouldn't need to break the rules to help them. Rain. Have you gotten it out of your system? Are you satisfied? No, but what else can I say? 
At least when Neve bullies me, it feels like she still likes me. You're just evil. Evil, am I? And who are you to place that judgment on me? I... This room operates on a different set of rules than the rest of the post office. I'll have you know I've performed my duties to the letter. Honestly, if... If Kale is reading the letters that are undeliverable... I'm just here like, that's... That's a lot to take in. That's a lot of baggage. That is a lot of stuff to absorb. And take in. That's got to be hard. That's got to be so difficult. Oof. Surely you noticed how difficult the journey was to reach this department. How, even if you could simply fly up by yourself, you'd tire yourself long before making it here. Or even the size of the door and how you must have struggled to push it open. These were deliberate choices made by the first generation of couriers. Sorting from the top, too, was a specific instruction left behind. These three things all serve an identical purpose. I don't think I understand. It's to exhaust and fatigue the head of the undeliverables department. Ooh. Huh? What? Why would the post office do something like that? As I've told you countless times before, we have what I consider to be the most important job in the world. We have a duty to every person in Vitae, alive or otherwise, to deliver the final words of those who have left us. To fail in this duty is unforgivable. And so, it is the responsibility of this department, my responsibility, to shoulder the weight of our office's sins. Whoa. Oh my goodness. That's horrible. Rules like that shouldn't ever exist. What good does hurting ourselves do for anyone? On that point... You, myself, and everyone else who currently knows of the, the department can agree. But the traditions of the post are sacred. And so, every time a delivery becomes impossible, I make the trip. In the rare case where two appear at the same time, I make it twice, each getting the proper attention it deserves. And three weeks later... When it is time for these people to die their second deaths, I return to hear their whispers. For no one deserves their final thoughts to go unheard. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow, that's so much. Also, yep, we're at nine hours and I'm not done yet. It's, I, I was joking about maybe ending up with a 12-hour stream, but I genuinely think it might get to that point. Like... <laughs> I still have another game after this, and I'm not stopping yet. She is so cool. I'm on. She's so powerful. Kale is so powerful. I am just. God, that is so much to go through. That is, that is so intense. To shoulder all of that. It, whoa. Wow. I want to say something, but I don't know what. All the while, far below on the ground floor, I push, aiming for perfection in myself and those around me. So children like you can grow up and remain proud of your home, hoping you, need, you never need learn of this room, nor inherit my title. If that makes me a villain, then I shall gladly clip my wings and fall to the deepest depths when my time comes. Whoa. Whoa. Hmm. Kale, I... I'm... 
Out of questions, I should hope. Mm. Very good. Oh. Mm. I've still some business to attend to. I would appreciate li um, I would appreciate it greatly if you two were to step outside in the meantime. I'll arrange for an escort party to see you safely to the bottom. Wow. Ooh. No longer willing to allow the conversation a chance to continue, Kale turns her back on the girls. Rain is caught in stasis, unable to think a single thought or move a single step. It's faint, but the sensation of the feathers on her wings being stroked breaks her from her trance. She looks down, finding Mila's hand. I think we should go, Rain. Yeah. The two make for the doors, arms intertwined. The fear of falling never once crossed Mila's mind in the safety of this room, but the act had become habitual after their time together. Neither pulled away when they realized how silly it was. It's not silly. It's not silly. They need each other at a time like this. That's a lot to learn. That's a lot to know, to have the burden of knowledge. I'm sorry. I took us as far as I could. Maybe if we were just a little faster. You did so much more than I thought anyone would for me. I'm sorry too. I've gotten you in so much trouble. Rain shakes her head, a single feather falling to the floor as she does so. We shouldn't be talking like this. We may not see each other for a while. So we should save some nicer things instead so we can leave on a happier note. Thank you for all the fun today, Mila. When you called me your other best friend, you made me so happy. I'm really glad you came by the post office today. Th thank you, too, for believing in Dandy all the way until the end. I don't know how long Mom will be upset, and I also don't know what kind of punishment they're going to give you. But even if we have to wait until we're grown-ups to see each other, I'll keep reminding myself of you so that we can be friends again. I can't start crying when she's close to... Keep it together, Rain. Yeah, me too. We'll probably... We'll both probably have a lot of fun stories to share by then, so maybe the wait won't be all that bad. Morton Post is a special part of the village of Vite, a place where people are offered the chance to say goodbye one final time. Today, however, Rain and Mila chose to part with a promise to see each other again, no matter how long it may take. So as they prepare to make their leave of the undeliverables, they say their farewells for now, knowing it won't be forever. A glow. Faint. More a suggestion of light than anything else. But enough to make its presence known all the same. Rain stops in place, turning to find its source, her companion following her lead and doing the same. There. And there, in the top row, second from the left, the small cubby gently shines, its glow already beginning to intensify. Another one? As Rain utters her whisper, Kale notices the light as well. As she did before, she bends her knees. One wing beat. Come on, you know what you gotta do, Rain. You know what you gotta do. 
Three weeks. Three weeks! But even if it was, it'd be impossible to tell in time. Two. No delivery ever leaves this room. Kale's accepted that as how things have to be, but... Three. If I'm right, and we can prove it before Kale opens it... <sighs> Maybe Mila and I can perform a miracle. Perform a miracle? Okay, okay. Let me save, let me save. It's time for a miracle. Trust, trust, trust together. <laughs> Hold on, I need to check. I can inspect and do onwards. Inspect together. Mila, I need you to trust me, okay? Huh? What's going on? I need you to hold on to me as tight as you can. Tighter than that if you're able to. Trust? Trust together? Oh, thank you for the lurk! Yes, it's super late. Please get some rest. But thank you for lurking! I hope you have a good rest. And thank you for the raid again. See, trust feels like it's, it's going to be upwards as the last thing. I think we're going to have to do all three and then it will be upwards. So trust. Trust together. Mila considers her friend's request, eyes darting around as she tries to piece together Rain's plan in the midst of the urgency she's being presented with. It doesn't take too long for things to click. All the way up there? I, I can't. Yes, you can. Onwards. Onwards together. Please, you have to be there too. I promise we'll be back on the ground in no time. Dandelion too. Although hesitation initially overtakes her, Mila steals her resolve with a firm nod. Throwing her arms around Rain's dress and clenching her fists tighter than she ever has before, Mila holds on tight. Thank you, Mila. Let's give it all we've got. Upwards, here we go. Upwards rain. There it is, there it is. Four. Quick, quick, I thank you for the headbutt. In that same instant, rain throws her wings to the air then downwards with every bit of strength she can afford to muster, knowing a swift takeoff would be her only chance of outspeeding Kale. We're going. <gasps> there. A moment later, the two are airborne, Rain's sight set on her guiding light. Don't you dare. Five. Though swift, Rain is far from subtle in her first moments of flight. She can't afford to look down, though. Every microsecond of advantage over her mentor, a priceless treasure. Reach out for it when we get close. Don't be scared. Okay. The box continues to shine, growing brighter and brighter every passing moment. Rain grits her teeth, pulling everything into each flap of her wings. The strain pairs with the additional weight, driving her to exhaustion far quicker than she ever had before. Six. Rain had lost count of Kale's wing beats prior to now, but her heart begins to race as she hears her take off, going so fast as to sound like she's cutting through the air. Come on, come on, Rain. Come on, Rain. Rain hurts all over. She shuts her eyes to drive the pain away. The light above now so radiant as to pierce her eyelids regardless. Higher and higher, brighter and brighter, closed in her own world, but still bombarded with countless sensations, all begging her to stop. Higher and higher, brighter and brighter. Even with eyes slammed shut, the light still overwhelms. Rain's vision is that of nearly pure white. And still, it only continues to intensify. Until suddenly, it's gone. 
Rain's eyes shoot open, disoriented and confused. Her head swivels down to check on her friend, heart beating out of her chest. Mila isn't holding a letter. Oh. Rather, in her free hand, she clutches a small parcel. Though its metallic orange wrapping may glimmer in the distant light of the room's lanterns, its radiant glow has faded. An indescribable relief washes over Rain, their journey together at long last finally finding its happy ending. <laughs> we... <laughs> we... As Rain allows herself to let her guard down with her job finally done, her muscles relax and the immeasurable exhaustion she put herself through over the flight catches up to her all in an instant. The world goes black once again and the two begin to fall. Dandelion. As rain comes to, she finds herself still mid-flight, though not due to her own wings. Uh, you're awake. No sudden movements, we're almost there. Keep holding on to her, miss. Ooh, Kale. Oh, it feels so bad. Like, the whole reason Kale acts the way she does is because she, she wants to, like drive rain away from this it's a protective thing she's trying to protect them she's trying to protect everyone but i think she's probably realizing now yeah yeah she and mila lie on the back of kale wings outstretched and cloak held as tightly as her wings can grip forming a makeshift net it's unstable, but good enough to provide a small sense of safety as they float gently to the bottom. The soreness throughout her body is nigh overpowering, but the feeling of one of Mila's arms holding her close feels even stronger, almost managing to dampen the pain. <sighs> True to Kale's promise, the three eventually make their landing. Kale kneels down, allowing for the girls an easier disembark. Mila falls first, eager to have something beneath her feet again. Rain follows soon after, though her landing is considerably more wobbly. Freed from the additional weight, Kale stands upright once again and turns to face her previous passengers. Lie down if you need to, Rain. But thank you. I'm okay, though. I think. Uh, um. Kale shifts her focus to Mila, only to find the seaborn girl offering up her parcel. I'm sorry. I don't want to you to get in trouble either, Miss Kale. If you need to look at it first, then... If only for a split second, the tiniest trace of a smile finds its way to Kale's lips, though it's quickly dispelled with a shake of her head. It's not my mail to open, miss. <gasps> That's true, it manifested. When Mila took it, the glow went, it manifested. That... Uh... The energy in the room shifts as Mila pulls the package back down. Nary a sound echoes through the room, save for the gentle flicker of flame. Mila visibly shakes as she takes her first tug at the twine, the adrenaline of her flight intermingling with her nerves as the two couriers watch intently. Time moves slow, agonizingly so, as the string eventually gives way 
and she begins to carefully peel back the glimmering orange wrapping. Finally opening the box, Mila releases a small gasp. She scoops one hand inside to grasp its contents, allowing the box to fall to the floor with a quiet thud, masked by the crinkling of the wrapping paper. In her hands rests a small knapsack, made with the same material as Mila's vest. <sighs> Tandy's pantana. Tears begin to well in Mila's eyes, satisfied just by the gift's wrapping rather than its contents. Keep going, keep going. Mila, reminded that there was still yet more to go, responds with a nod. Though her hands shake even more intensely than before, she pulls at the cloth with, with as much care as she can muster. At last, the fabric comes loose, covering Mila's hand as it falls. Rain and Kale share a confused look. Mila's reaction is much more severe, with her trembling worsening and her tears quickly escalating to sobs. It's a little mouse. Little mouse? A small plush mouse, smelling faintly of mint. <laughs> Mila instinctively tightens her grip on Dandelion's gift as the flood of emotions escape her body. The two gale kind watch in silence, trying to piece the puzzle in front of them together. I can't believe I didn't guess this. I can't believe I didn't realize this. I can't believe I didn't realize this until now. I can't believe this. Oh. <laughs> I know who Daddy Lion is. Oh my God, how did I not? Oh. Oh my, I'm. I'm a sham. I'm a sham. Oh my. Kale is the first to make some form of realization, bringing a wink to her chin. Miss, is it possible, by any chance, that your friend never knew how to write? <laughs> Oh my god, I just started crying. <laughs> How is it the realization that Dandelion is a cat that's gotten me crying? Like, <laughs> this whole game has been incredible. And now I'm bursting into tears. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I didn't realize. I can't believe I didn't realize this. Oh my goodness, how did I not realize? How didn't I know? How could I not have realized? Oh my... <laughs> Mila! Now I know why you went out and spent a fortune on Biko the other day. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> this game just got even better. Like, it was already amazing. It just got even better. I'm actually crying. Like... <laughs> oh, oh, tears. Oh, tears. Oof. Oh my god. Oof. Oh. Wow. Uh. <laughs> Mila hears the question, but can't even begin to form a word. Thankfully, Kale is able to intuit the answer all the same. I see. So that's the way of things. <laughs> Rain still hasn't got it. <laughs> Bless her. Wait, huh? 
Kale's question proves just enough to give Rain the extra help she needs to reach the truth. So, Mila's best friend who she did everything with? Who would bring her favorite toys along to cheer her up when she was sad? Who had a bandana made of matching, matching clothes? <laughs> oh, the, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but I've never heard of anything like this happening before. Kale just told us it isn't possible. Only people have magic, and you need that to send mail. Dandelion would have had to... Wear clothes with magic imbued, by any chance? Ah! The final piece slides neatly into place. Intentional or no, little Dandelion was given the gift of a tiny amount of magic, courtesy of the Earthfoot's magic-embedded cloth craft and Mila's mother's handiwork. Okay, I've just got to say, <laughs> you know how you mentioned, like, stamp stickers before? You need to do this. I need this as a sticker. I need the other one as a sticker. I need them in my life. Um, I, I will pay you. I'll, <laughs> I'll pay you to make it real. Like, not even kidding. I, I need them. Oh, I, oh, my heart. My heart is so full. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the hydrate. I need it. I need to replenish the tears. Ah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're all so weeping. Yeah. Oh, I love this. I love... Mm. And when the time finally came for Dandelion to make proper use of that gift, she knew in her heart what she wanted to do. Though she was certain Mila would be sad, Dandelion hadn't the words to tell her how much she meant to her. And so instead, her final act was a familiar one. It's what she always did. She'd bring her toy. <laughs> did Twitch update the points menu in the span of you running away in this? Um, no, it might be because um, I turned off some of the redeems earlier when I had to be a PNG for a while because my iPhone ran out of battery, and then I turned them back on again so that the points menu might be a bit wobbly. Oh, I'm... <laughs> Sharing her favorite toy with her favorite person, hoping it'd once again bring a smile to her face. Mila brings the plush close to her chest, holding onto it as if it were at risk of flying away. Grief, love, joy, loss. Mila's tears are aimless and show no signs of slowing. She chokes as she catches her breath and Rain spots her opening. She closes in on her dearest friend, wrapping her wings around her in the closest to Gale kind can manage to a hug. For the first time, the two are comfortable enough to cry together. <laughs> Me too. I'm joining in. Uh, oh, oh. <sighs> okay, give me a sec. I'm okay. I'm fine. <sighs> Whew, I'm gonna have to hug Tiffany after this. <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna have to hug Tiffany after this. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love it so much too. I, mm. <sighs> I'm deeply sorry for the severe clerical error our office has made and the trouble it has caused you. Nevertheless, it fills me with an abundance of joy to see your parcel safely delivered. I'll see to it that you make it to the ground floor whenever you're ready. The head of the undeliverables readies for the door, though turns back briefly to address her subordinate. Unfortunately, I can't go against protocol. 
I'll still need to report this incident to your grandmother. That was a smile. That was a smile. That was a smile. That was a smile. Somehow I don't think her grandmother's going to be mad. I think it's going to be okay. Rain doesn't respond, nor does Kale wait for her to. Whatever may come of this will be an issue Rain can handle tomorrow. But for now, all that matters is this moment. She manages a smile as her tears continue to fall. You did it, Mila. We did it. Thank you, Rain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I owe you more thank yous than I could have ever give. How about one more and we'll call it even? Oh, okay, one more. Mila takes a moment, trying to hold back her tears just long enough to make this last thank you special. Thank you, Rain. <laughs> and farewell, Dandelion. from the hustle and bustle of the capital, the capital city of Alchemica lies a small coastal village by the name of Vite. In the mornings, those who live near Earthfoot residences are awoken by the scent of fresh bread being baked and cloth being spun, magic imbued within every creation. Throughout the day, Seaborn work tirelessly, the hammering of nails and sawing of wood being telltale signs of their presence. Though few in number, you can seemingly find one just about anywhere you go. As the sun sinks low, the spark bounds make themselves known, the quiet humming of their devices serving as a familiar ambience, as well as a promise that tomorrow will awaken to some new manner of convenience or innovation. Though whether it'll last till the following sunset is always an uncertainty. However, on the far eastern outskirts of the village, there lies a place that has proven to be unusually noisy today, with a small crowd of residents and couriers alike engaging in small talk around a wooden stage. A gargantuan tree, climbing so high into the heavens that the clouds hide its canopy from view. And at its base, Morton Post. A modest little post office the Gale kind call their home, and where a small ceremony is scheduled to take place today. Kale stayed true to her word. Rain's grandmother, the postmaster, was informed of her granddaughter's exploits down to the last detail. <laughs> Love how that's the scene you tab into. I'm so glad to. What what the the perfect moment to tab in. What a moment. I, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't realize it. I can't believe I didn't get it. Ah. How she immediately shirked her duty, leaving the front office almost as soon as she was to start her shift. How she brought in a guest into the inner workings of the post office entirely unauthorized, and how she coerced said guest into digging through the letters of others. How she put the guest through unimaginable danger, climbing to heights of the tree that not even many couriers reach. Mila's mother was told much the same. They were also told of Rain's unbending determination to do right by Mila, stopping at nothing to help a guest in need, going above and beyond what any courier could ever be expected to. How, despite the danger, she treated her with the utmost care and attention, matching her step for step and always putting Mila's welfare in front of her own. How she performed a miracle and became the first courier in Morton Post's long history to deliver an undeliverable.
the crowd hushes itself to a whisper, eventually falling to silence as Rain and her grandmother take to the stage. Rain reaches into her cloak, retrieving a simple envelope and passing it to her grandmother. The postmaster opens the lip, revealing the small vertical stamp held inside. With all of the care someone at her age can manage, she gently peels the back off. <laughs> of course, she needs the upward stamp as her first one. She needs it as her first one. She ushers for Rain to bow slightly, and Rain obliges. She carefully finds a spot on her granddaughter's hat and pushes the stamp firmly onto it. When Rain lifts her head, she is officially recognized as a one-stamp courier. The crowd offers modest applause, with her numerous co-workers being notably louder than the rest. Even if she doesn't make much noise, Rain's proudest supporter stands front and center, smiling as wide as she's able. Rain meets her eyes and returns with a grin of her own. On its surface, this post office offers the opportunity for loved ones to say their final farewells, giving those who still walk with us the strength to keep pushing on. However, Morton Post doesn't assist in the severing of connections. Instead, it stands as a testament to how unbreakable the bonds between us truly are able to transcend the border of the before and after. A celebration of all who hold the love for others in their hearts. A place Rain is proud to call her home, and one Mila is forever thankful to. I've got to say, I've got to say one thing. It is a little bit embarrassing about how much more emotional I got as soon as I realized Dandelion was a cat. Like, I was, I was already like, I was fully invested. I was fully emotionally invested. But like, as soon as I realized that Dandelion was a cat, I just started crying. I just, I just, I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> the crying just happened. I'm... I'm, I'm like a parody of myself. I'm like, things happen between people. That's really sweet and lovely. A cat being involved. And I just, I, a cat being involved just makes everything different to me. <laughs> and I said I figured it out. Yeah, no, I didn't figure it out at all. I can't believe how long it took me. Like, I'm really glad that I, I did realize it before it was, like, actively said out loud. Like, bef before it was, like, fully explicitly said in the game. I'm glad I did realize before that, at least. But, oh my goodness, I had no idea. I had no idea. It reminds me of, um, 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 another game I played which is amazing and has a twist involving a cat that I didn't realize until the very end which is an amazing game that I'm not going to say the name of in case anyone hasn't played it and it spoils it. Um, but that game as well. The way I get so much more involved and invested in things when there's a cat. <laughs> it's, it's a, it, I, I'm, I'm so predictable. I just love cats. Oh, that's probably the game that inspired this game. It might be. Might be. Maybe. I'm curious. Maybe it is. Things to find out. That are scaling the post office and risking everything for your childhood friend. Yeah, anyone would do that. But doing it for your cat? Yeah, I would. I would. If it was for a person that I knew, I would just be like, okay, maybe maybe they just didn't leave me a letter. But if it was for Tiffany? If it was for Tiffany? Then I would. I, I would do the same. I'd 
I'd be the ex I would do the exact same things that Mila did. I would be so invested. I would be like, no, the, there's no way it would happen. <laughs> it's just like, oh, what a cool twist! Wow, who'd have thought this was a cat all along? Yeah, the best kind of twist. Oh, is it time to have like a, a trend of games where the twist is that they're a cat all along? <laughs> I'd be down for that. I'd be so down for that. Bring it on. Bring it on. I want more cats. Cat twists. Oh, that was incredible, though. That was so good. It was so good. Thank you. Thank you. What an incredible game. What an incredible team. Wow. Who's that? The special thanks. Thank you so much. I'm... Oh... See, I'm just, I'm just so predictable. Add a cat. I'm just, just so. Uh... Yeah, interestingly, the other game you think of also had the mention of not being able to read or write. That's, yeah, that's. I, th I think we're thinking of the same game here, but none of us are saying it out loud in case anyone has not played that game and it's not the, the, <laughs> the twist. It's how I always am. I'm like, I'm as vague as possible with games with cool twists in. Because I never want to spoil it when when it's like a such a an, a good moment in a game, I'll always dance around spoilers. <laughs> but oh, good game, good stuff. Oh, I think like the pure love for an animal friend as part as like a friend and part of the family is something you miss in media. I want more of that too, honestly. I want stuff too. I I want more like family with pets. More emphasis on the pets being the family as well. I love that. And COVID for like 80% of development time. I know I knew you were ill. Oh, I'm I'm so sad. I I hope you're feeling better now at least. Uh, remember some twofold things from a decade ago, but can't remember anything about Rain Death. Yeah, honestly, this being able to create this in a month is wild. That is wild. It is ridiculous. And I am so glad you did. I'm so glad you did. Thank you. Right, well, with that, I've done the third game. So I guess it's time to play the fourth. What? It's, it's already half 11 in the evening. But I said I was going to play all four of them. And I'm not a coward. I'm, I'm not a wimp. I'm not going back on my word. I really hope this game isn't super, super long as well. We'll soon find out. Let's play which you want. Let's let's round off the the game jam games. <laughs> All right, I can hear it. I can hear it. Can we see it? Hello? There it is. Here it is. It's time. It's time for game number 4. <laughs> the the end is in sight. Let's see how long the stream ends up being. I can't believe I've been streaming for this long and I'm still going. <laughs> oh, East Skedaddle still got to play this one. That is completely fine. Yes, please don't spoil us yourself. But uh, thank you for stopping it. I love that you tapped in at that moment. That was the perfect moment. But yes, it's time for Witch You Want. And look how pretty this is. I'm so excited. All right. Hopefully I'll be okay at this because I'm pretty sure this has like... This has like a potion making mini game. Let's see how good I am at that after um, like nine and a half hours of streaming. Let's see if I have any brain left whatsoever. Oh, you think I'll like this a good bit for other reasons? Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited, right, about. Here we go, here's the team. A game made for the garden variety Dandelion set game jam. Directed and programmed by Arumia, written by Natasha Luna, illustrated by Danny. And oh, colorized tools, got all the credits here. Nice. Right, let's start, I guess. This is so cute. Every spring, the village I live in holds a huge festival. It's a really big deal. Almost everyone participates. There are, t are a ton of stalls and activities, and people come from all over just to attend. So what am I doing to prepare for all of this? Well, I am... 
job hunting. Oh boy. <laughs> Some celebration this is, but I need the money. Every afternoon I go to the job, uh, the, to the town center to see if they're Oh my goodness, I can't read anymore. Right, let me finish my monster. I've only got a little bit left. My last sip of monster. Let's make it count. I finished. I finished my monster. Goodbye, Peachy Keen. Nice. Every afternoon, I go to the town centre to see if there are any jobs on the bulletin board. Even odd jobs are better than nothing, but I haven't had luck finding any of those either. A couple days ago, I even had someone snatch a job posting off the board while I was reading it. Rude. I hope they get fired. <laughs> I wasn't expecting today to be much different, but I spot a new flyer on the board. Urgent help needed. Looking for assistant to help make potions for festival preparations. Previous experience useful but not required. Sign your name at the bottom of the flyer for more information. I do have a little bit of potion making experience. This might just be right up my alley. Oh, I'm signing it, okay. Leary. Wait, who did I just sign up to work for? Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that, huh? I just, I just fully signed it without even thinking. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, okay, okay. Sign for more information. Um, did I just accept the job already? <laughs> Wait, who did I just sign up to work for? Before I can read the shop name, I feel a strange sensation. And the next time I blink, I'm no longer in the town square. In the distance, I can hear a delighted gasp, followed by footsteps running toward me. This sure looks like a witch's shop, all right, and not just any witch's shop. Welcome to Mirabelle's Miraculous Mixtures, but I'm sure you already knew that, right? <laughs> not really. I just, I, I didn't pay attention. I, I'm going to be honest. I may as well be honest. I don't want to lie from the beginning. Not really. Honesty is the best policy, right? Um, well, I didn't get a chance to see the name of the shop, but I'm really happy to be able to get a job here. Oh, she's pouting. Oh, uh-oh. I think I've already upset her. This is a good start. Well, I'm happy to get a job anywhere. Close enough. For a moment, it seems like the smile on her face doesn't quite reach her eyes, but it's over quickly and she's back to seeming bubbly. So you can start today, right? Yes. That's a bit short notice, but I'm not going to look a gift witch in the mouth. Even if that witch owns, oh, the worst potion shop in town. Oh, oh, she has a reputation, huh? Marry me a hi. Hello, I'm ready to make potions, maybe. Um, I've been streaming for nine and a half hours. It's uh, almost midnight and I finished my monster, so I can't wait to see how well this goes. <laughs> but hi. Do you have any experience brewing potions? A bit. Great, then you shouldn't have any trouble. These are all very simple potions, I assure you. The only issue we're having is quantity. There's so much to make and only one little on me. But that's about to change, Lyrie. Come on, let me show you where you'll be working. She grabs my hand and leads me away from the front of her shop towards the back rooms. Normally, I'd be ecstatic over getting to hold hands with a pretty girl, but well, maybe it's best not to dwell on that for now. Uh, this really is me. I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it either. But see, the problem is, I saw, like, I saw Nui streams, and I was like, oh, I can probably do this all in one day. And I fully forgot the fact that whenever I play a visual novel, I take twice as long as a normal person, because I get distracted at every single point. And that was my mistake. But uh, look, I said I would do it, and... I'm still feeling okay. Like, I'm, I'm not feeling like I need to head off and get some rest or anything. 
so I'm I might as well keep going. I'm I'm gonna play them all. Play them all in one day. I'm, I'm my power. <laughs> Oh, happy you could stay up for an unexpected long Leary stream. Yeah, I thought it would be quite long, but I didn't expect it to be this long. I thought I would already be done by now. But uh, I'm I'm not complaining though. This has been really fun. I'm glad I did decide to try and do all of them. Because I wasn't sure about it. and I was thinking things through. Because I think the thing that made me decide was I'm, I'm trying to like plan out the month for like the games I want to play specifically in October. And my schedule was getting pretty full. So I was trying to figure out where to fit everything in. And I had a thought of, well, if I can just play all of these games in one day, that makes it easier to make my schedule. So what if I just do it? <laughs> what if I just have Yuri Day, Women Wednesday, the marathon extravaganza? And honestly, I'm so glad I did. This has been so fun. This has been amazing. All of the games are so good so far. I'm, I love it. Your brewing station doesn't have as many ingredients stocked as my personal station, but I promise it'll be enough for you to make plenty of potions. Honestly, I'm thankful for that. I don't want too much. If, if you gave me too many options, I would suffer. <laughs> I'll be handling the more complex orders, so the simpler stuff will be your responsibility. I can do simple. I can do simple. Simple is good. Mirabelle takes me to a small enclave downstairs with a cauldron surrounded by tables and shelves of different herbs, flowers, and other materials. On the wall above the cauldron is a small mirror. That teleportation spell sure scuffed you up a bit, didn't it? You can take a moment to gather yourself here if you'd like. <gasps> Customization! Customization. Well, I'm super pale, so let's do that. Perfect. Eyes. Look. Oh, yes. There. That's my eyes. That's my eyes. Look at that. Oh. Oh, wait. There's... Oh. There's toggles. Okay, there's two to choose from. I guess stick with this one. Eyes. There was eyes. Oh, sad face. Oh, the makeup. He... <laughs> that one. Oh, and then that's back to the beginning. I, I might stay with this one. I like these eyes. Front hair. Oop, little ponytails. Ooh, which hair? Okay, which of these five would be for me? Maybe this one? Or this one, maybe this one. It's like a center part instead of like the, the side part, but I think that one. And back hair, boop. Yes, yes, let's do that. And then hair color. There we go, oh, that's really close actually. Oh, what do the other front hairs look like? Oh, I kind of like this one. I like the little braids, actually. I'm going to go with this. Outfit. Ooh. Oh, I think it's like undershirt or no undershirt. Well, I, I don't need the undershirt. That is fine. Accessory. <gasps> Eye patch. Little heart. Glasses. Oh, those glasses are cool. Freckles. Okay. I'm having the cool glasses. I like those. And a hat. <gasps> I want a hat. Yes. Oh, or ears. What? Oh, wait, wait, is that a little... Oh, that's a little cat hat. Oh, oh no, these hats are so cute. I'm going to have this one. This is me. This is me. The, I like this. There we go. Perfect. Oh, sad face fits with a specific hat. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, like, play around with that afterwards. It's nice and cozy, isn't it? I guess? I'm glad we agree. We're going to get along super well. I can just feel it. Can't you? Um... Of course you can! I should know better than to ask questions I already know the answers to. Silly me. 
that energy is something else. Those one-star whelp reviews couldn't have prepared me for this. Whelp. Since this is your first day, I've made sure to start you off with a really simple potion so you can get in the groove. I have a customer who's in urgent need of a strength potion. She's really strong on her own, of course, but there's a lot of stuff that needs moving. So it would help her out if she had a potion that made her even stronger. All you need to do is put the ingredients in the cauldron, stir the mixture, and voila! You have a brand new potion ready for drinking. I don't really remember any strength recipes, though. Oh, don't worry about that. It's really simple. All you need is some cat's eye, some peach seeds, a peach, and... and... Mirabelle and I stare at each other. The smile on her face doesn't crack even once. Well, it would be too easy if I just gave you the whole recipe, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, she's forgotten, hasn't she? Great. <laughs> Think of it like a puzzle. Those two ingredients plus something soft. If you can figure it out on your own, that proves you're able to think on your feet and make the quality potions my... our shop is known for. Well, I've got plenty of orders to take care of myself, so I should go. Ta-ta! She flitters away before I can say anything in response. What have I gotten myself into? Cat's eye gems, peach seeds, and something soft. Let's see what's here. Oh, it's potion time! Hold on, let me save. Potion time! Potion. Uh, rose petals, cat's eye gems, bluebird feather, lavender, dandelion, of course, beeswax, peach seeds, and mint. Okay, so cat's eye gems, peach seeds, and something soft. Mirabelle's grimoire. Oh, oh, okay, this is handy. Mirabelle said the potion needed cat's eye, some peach seeds, and something soft. Beeswax, as if bees weren't already useful. When combined with a rea uh, re reagent, re reagent, I don't actually know how to pronounce this. I've only seen it written down. Beeswax can be dissolved to use as a potion base with nearly unlimited uses. It usually provides mild effects and isn't very reactive. Some witches use so much beeswax in their potions that they raise their own beehives just to cultivate it. You don't want to make a beekeeper, a beekeeper witch mad. Not the bees. Bluebird feather. Bluebirds are a common sight in the area, so it's no surprise that there's quite a stock of their feathers. Feathers have different effects based on the type of bird they come from. Bluebird feathers in particular are especially useful in enhancing the user's attributes. Ooh. Be careful not to confuse these with blue feathers from other species of bird. Many a shop has been ruined by unfortunate feather mix-ups. Mix-ups, yeah. Lavender. Famed for its scent and calming properties, lavender is also often used as a stabilizer in potions. Ingredients which may otherwise be incompatible or explosive can often be safely combined if you place a pinch of lavender in with them. Just make sure you don't get your lavender potions mixed up with your nightly lavender tea. Cat's eye gems. Gemstones might seem a strange thing to put in potions, but it turns out that cat's eye gems act as a potent intensifier. Ooh. Just make sure to include a reagent to re reagent, reagent, reagent? I think it's reagent, right? to help dissolve the gem, and you can turn a small effect into a dazzling display. And don't worry, cat's eye refers to the shape of the markings on the gem. No cats are harmed, hurt, or placed in boxes in the making of any potions. Peach seeds. You might not expect it from peaches, but their seeds are extremely potent at- Oh my god. Energy peach real. Energy peach real. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I joked about it. I joked about it in the first Bellflower stream. When we were talking about ingredients for the potions, I joked about an energy peach. 
This makes- I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This- I did this. <laughs> but their seeds are extremely potent at affecting energy. Depending on what other ingredients are used in the potion, they can give a tired person a wake-up boost, give an insomniac a good night's sleep, or even shift elemental energies in the air. There's the energy beach! Oh no, and I just finished my can too! <laughs> I finished my can of monster right before starting this. Oh, I'm so happy the energy peach is real though. I do still have water at least. I will have water. Oh, energy peach, my beloved. As a bonus, potions made with peach seeds taste delicious. Rose petals. How romantic. Roses aren't just a pretty flower to give your lover though. Their petals are a common ingredient in anything that affects passionate emotions. And they're effective at it too, so make sure not to put in too many. Legend has it that a witch once used rose petals to make a hate potion. Nobody's ever figured out the recipe they used though. Maybe that's a good thing. And mint. Brr. Mint's coolness carries over to its use in potions. It's used to help relieve a variety of ailments, numbing pain, lowering fevers, or even cooling tempers. Its versatility also uh, almost makes up for how easily the plants spread when you don't want them. Unfortunately, mint potions taste far, far worse than mint desserts. Oh, I can imagine. Dandelion. One would think that dandelions would be more common as a potion ingredient with how common they are. In fact, however, there are very few potion recipes that explicitly include them. Like wishes, dandelions may not always help you reach your goal, but when they do, they have a big effect. Ooh. Interesting. Okay, so we've got the cat's eye. We put in the cat's eye and the peach seeds. Oh, and it says here for the cat's eye, be sure to include a reagent, so we're going to need a reagent. So beeswax? So it's going to be beeswax, right? To be the the reagent for the, the cat's eye, because beeswax is soft. I hope. I might be getting my first potion wrong. Who knows? Let's see. Oh, disclaimer. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I hear about like seeds having cyanide and stuff. It's okay. This is a witch's potion. It's different. We're we're neutralizing the poison effects. <laughs> um. It didn't say that there was anything else that that's a reagent. It it only it only mentioned like in the cat's eye gems and the beeswax being one. But beeswax is soft, right? I guess it depends on the beeswax. It can be soft. I'm gonna try it. I put in all the ingredients and stir them in. The cauldron bubbles reassuringly at first. <laughs> but when I try to bottle it up, I notice that the potion seems awfully... sludgy. I don't think I, I did it. I don't, I don't think I did the right potion, but that's okay. This is the first time I've tried be brewing a potion in a long time. It's not too surprising that I'd need a bit to get back into the swing of things. I just need to throw this out and try again. But before I can, a telltale voice barges in. Okay, I don't know if this has multiple endings or not. Um, think I'm already on path for the bad end. No, it's this isn't right. No, I messed it up. It's probably gonna be the feather. It's just like soft or the feather. It's it's obvious. <laughs> I over I was overthinking it. Yoo-hoo! The customer's here! One strength potion to go! Ah uh, wait! No! I messed up. Well, that's where you get at midnight, it's fine. It's <laughs> I did I did ask her to wait. That's on her. She takes the dud potion out of my hands before I can protest, practically flying away to the front counter. She's moving so fast that I listen in the hopes that she drops it on the ground and I have to redo it, but her grip seems annoyingly strong. No wonder her shop's reviews are so bad. 
I just hope that whatever's in that bottle isn't toxic. All I can do is wait for Mirabelle to come back with the knowledge of my own screw up haunting my stray thoughts. Will she fire me immediately? Will she yell at me? Will she insult me? Is she a terrible boss in addition to a terrible shopkeep? After a while, I hear footsteps approaching, slow and steady. Am I going to get fired? This is it. The moment of truth. Lyri, are you still here? I can't get a handle on her tone. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yes, I am. Good. Mirabelle appears as if emerging from the shadows, with a soft smile that doesn't quite reach her eyes. I think I'm about to get fired immediately. That potion you brewed? It was bad. I wasn't going to be that blunt, but yes. I am really sorry. I promise I'll do better. You don't have to sound so scared. I'm not mad at you. Just a teensy-weensy little bit disappointed, that's all. I think that's worse. <laughs> What should I do with you? She looks at me thoughtfully. Let me get you a list of ingredients I need. I'd need to go out and get them anyway, and the cauldron needs to be cleaned out before it can be used again. <laughs> yep, okay. I spend the rest of the workday doing odd jobs for her. At one point she sends me on a literal goose chase that nearly results in me losing a finger. When I finally get to go home, I decide to spend some time studying one of my old potion books. I want to do the job I was actually hired for, not get my limbs chewed by angry waterfowl. Okay, well I didn't get fired, that's okay. I just, I just gotta do better. To be honest, yesterday still kind of feels like it was an elaborate fever dream. One moment I was just job hunting at the bulletin board like usual, and the next I'd signed my soul off to the worst potion shop in town for a week. Okay, so I didn't sell my soul to Mirabelle, but with how badly everything went, it sure felt like I did. On the one hand, by this time next week, I'll be completely free from this job. On the other, Mirabelle is so exhausting to be around that even just a week actually not even a week now. Feels like it'll be an almost insurmountable slog. I open the door to the shop, the bright tinkle of the bell mixing with the bird song in the air. It's me, Mirabelle. Welcome back, Lyri. I hope you got a good night's sleep yesterday. We don't want to repeat it. Well, yeah, don't worry, I'm feeling fine. If she'd just let me redo the potion instead of giving it to the customer, that wouldn't have happened. But I guess I can't change the past. I made sure to study up on some basics last night. Just in case, you know. Yeah, at least the shop owner seems nice, just maybe not so good at brewing potions either. Yeah, it'd be different if she was just like a horrible, awful person. But she seems sweet, she seems nice. She, she seems like she's trying her best. Maybe um, struggling a little bit on the way, but I don't know. I I trust her. I trust her. I I wish she had let me redo that potion though. <laughs> now that's the kind of forward-thinking preparation any shop keep values in an assistant. Yeah, I studied up on the basics. So I take it you're ready for today's first order. I hope so. I did some reading last night to help brush up my skills. Great. I'm really depending on you today, Lyri. I won't have any errands to send you on if you mess up again. Good, good, good to know. And I'll make sure to check the potion before giving it to the customer, too. I couldn't bear to give someone a pain relief potion that doesn't work. Oh, pain relief, yeah. Pain relief. Yeah, I'd be pretty mad if I got a defective potion, too. There are a lot of different types of pain remedies with different recipes. But luckily, what we need today is a pretty simple one. Does it need something... something cool, something blue, and something... yellow? I don't... know. <laughs> it actually says something cool! I said that because I was thinking about the mint. 
It contains lavender, beeswax, and something cool. All stuff you have at your station. Well, it's, it's lavender, beeswax, and mint then, right? You sure about that? Absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. A lavender, beeswax, and something cool. I like that it shows me in the mirror every time we're doing the potions. Right, I, I, I want to double check just in case. Mint. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, numbing pain. So it's going to be lavender beeswax. Oops. Lavender beeswax and mint. Immediately. I'm confident in this one. I say as I save. <laughs> there. This should be right. I hope. Let's see. I put all the ingredients in and start stirring. I don't want to jinx it early, but it seems like this potion's going just as well as the previous one. Maybe I have a talent for this. I, I think this maybe was a leftover line from if you do well on the first potion, because um, I, the, the, the previous one didn't go well, but that's okay. Like before, when the brew is done, I bottle it up. Okay, it didn't say anything going wrong, so I think I did it. Yeah, the mirror makes sure I know I look good. Like, look good, make good potions. It's good motivation. And also like before, Mirabelle is here to take it from me before I can do anything else. Another excellent brew! Why, if I don't watch out, you might steal my job from right under me. Is... Is that supposed to be a compliment? For my own well-being, I'm going to assume that it is? <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure Sarah will find this very useful. Sarah? Oh, she's the customer. I guess the potion isn't for her. But knowing that other woman isn't in pain should take a weight off her shoulders. Especially since she doesn't have the strength potion anymore. I'll take this to her right away. Just stay here. I'll have some more recipes for you in a moment. Okay. With her signature smile on her face, Mirabelle pats me on the head before she leaves. The next few hours are a cycle between receiving orders, filling them, and being subject to Mirabelle's alternating affection and backhanded praise. And because I'm working full hours today, it feels like even more like a slog. By the time the shop closes, all I want is to go to bed. Two days down, five to go. If I survive them. <laughs> At the beginning of my third day working for Mirabelle, I make a promise to myself. I'll continue to move forward one day at a time. Even if I don't do perfectly, I can still do a good job. It's not like I can do much worse than Mirabelle herself has. That thought is more comforting than it probably should be. I'll see how things shake out in the next few days. But I'm confident that things will turn out well. Yeah, I believe it too. When I enter the shop, I don't even get the chance to say anything before Mirabelle makes her presence known. Liri, just the woman I wanted to see. I've got good news for you. What is it? You still have a job. I wasn't worried about that before. I have another simple potion for you. It's, well, to be honest, I don't actually know what the customer wants to use it for. They seemed kind of scatterbrained when they were explaining everything, but they need a potion that will increase their dexterity and concentration. <gasps> ADHD potion, got it. Sounds like they're trying to make something. Maybe they're doing embroidery? I don't know. And if I've learned anything from owning this shop, it's that sometimes you really shouldn't ask questions. That's fair. Sounds sensible enough, but I don't know if I'd want to take your business advice. Anyway, you should be able to make this one work. All you need is to put in some beeswax, some lavender, and something red. Something red? Oh, that's the bell. I'm relying on you, Liri. But Mirabelle runs off yet again to do whatever she does up there. I think it'd be a lot easier if she weren't so uh, hands off. 
But just standing here won't make the potion magically summon itself. What's something red that goes with beeswax and lavender? Hmm. Right, I'm thinking rose petals? Bum 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 bum. Affecting passionate emotions. Would that be right? I don't know, but there's nothing else that's red. Yeah, I think the only red thing I have here is literally just the rose petals. So it's going to have to be, right? Beeswax, lavender, and something red. I keep wanting to go to this corner to close it, and it's over this corner. <laughs> lavender, beeswax, red. I'm just going. I'm just going for it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. The customer should be really happy with this potion. Hi! Oh my goodness, she's close. Hi. Ooh, this one looks really pretty. M Mirabel. I'm jolted out of my thoughts by Mirabel's sudden intrusion, which surprises me so much that I nearly drop the bottle onto the ground. Luckily, she seems to have the reflexes of a cat, catching it as soon as my fingers lose their grip on the glass. You should be a little more careful, Liri. It's a good thing I was here to help you out, though. You're the one who startled me. <laughs> I wouldn't have almost dropped it if you hadn't snuck up on me. But it's all right. Just let me get this back out to Lillian, and we can move on to the rest of the day's work. She leaves the back room, and I try my hardest not to think about her fingers brushing against mine, or how empty the room feels without her presence. That's kind of gay me. I think the weirdness of this situation might be rubbing off on me. No, I'm being silly. Also, Gambler, hello! Didn't expect me to still be live, neither did I. I did not expect to still be live either, but I'm I'm playing the games. I'm 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 on the last game now, so I have to keep going. But thank you for the hydrate. I'm onto water now because I finished my monster, but thank you! Welcome, welcome. No, I'm being silly. About what? Again? Somehow, today has turned into Mirabelle accidentally, at least I hope it's accidental, scaring the living daylights out of me. How are the games? Oh, they're all amazing. It's, it's genuinely incredible how they all have such different vibes. They are all such very different games. All four games are so, so very different to each other. And I've enjoyed all of them. It's so good. It's been so fun. <laughs> I'm so glad I decided to just play them all because that I love them. I'm having I'm having a blast. I mean, like, if I wasn't having a blast, I wouldn't still be streaming. I would have ended a while ago. But it's it's been so fun. I love them. While I'm making potions, while I'm on my lunch break, while I'm waiting for more orders. It'd be really funny if it weren't happening to me. But it is happening to me, so instead it's driving me up the walls. <laughs> After the shop closes and I head home, I keep half expecting her to sneak up on me again. Okay, here we go. I don't know what it is, but something about today feels off. Maybe it's just because I had a bit of trouble sleeping last night? But I can't help but get the feeling that something's going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. I'm too tired to deal with a real crisis today. But my hopes are dashed as soon as I enter the shop. Hi, Larry. Hi. What's, what's the matter? What's the matter? Why are you pout? Mirabelle seems really low energy today. Oh, is this something in the air? Is it just like a low energy day? Gotta get some peach. Um, Mirabelle, are you alright? You look kind of sad. Sad? Mirabelle looks at me for a few seconds, blinking with an expression I can't place. Then she perks up, but it's clear her heart isn't in it. Why would I be sad? I don't have anything to be sad about. I 
if I was sad, would I be smiling like this? Uh, mm. S sorry. I'm definitely not going to push her. It's not really any of my business as, as an employee anyway. Even if the way she's acting right now is pretty unsettling. In fact, I think you're the one who needs to perk up. She pokes me hard in the cheek. It really hurts. Okay, okay. I give her the widest smile I can manage, just so she'll get off my case about it. Oh, uh, you don't need to perk up that much? <laughs> it's pretty appropriate that we're talking about perking up now, because what you'll be making today is an energy potion. <gasps> energy potion! But the cus- Oh. Yes! But the customer doesn't want just any energy potion, no. What they need is monstrous energy. Despite the name, it's a really easy recipe. It has peach seeds in it. Just peach seeds? Of course not. Have you ever heard of a potion with only one ingredient? I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This is my influence. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm here just like pointing at the screen like I did this. This is my fault. The energy peach is my fault. <laughs> I'm so proud. I could not be more proud. I'm so happy. Of course not. Have you ever heard of a potion with only one ingredient? The other two ingredients are something blue and something shiny. Okay. She's making it harder now? Without saying anything else, Mirabelle simply leaves. Great. I spend a few minutes just grumbling to myself for a bit but I eventually decide that I have to at least attempt to do my job. Peach seeds, something blue and something shiny. What could that be? And a peach, well, something blue and something shiny. Pretty sure that's the only things that it can be. All right, blue. Bluebirds enhance attributes, so that makes sense. Cat's eye intensifier, monstrous energy, yes. And the peach seeds energy, yeah, this sounds right. I think this is the potion. I put in the ingredients and start to stir, making sure to pay close attention. I don't want to mess this up like I've done before. As I wait for Mirabelle to come back for the potion, I reflect back on the beginning of the day. Something really seems to have rattled her. But what? I assumed that someone who's been in business this long with a shop nearly everyone hates would be pretty thick-skinned. Maybe I was wrong about that, but whatever's going on, I don't think she's going to tell me about it today. Oh, I bet she would tell me about it if I hadn't messed up the first potion. Well, that's okay. I can, I can skip mode go through that afterwards. <laughs> I hope she'll be all right. Leary? Rather than sneaking up on me, Mirabelle approaches me calmly. Is the potion ready? Yes, I just finished bottling it up. Wonderful. Let me get this to the customer and then I'll come back with the next order for you. The rest of the day proceeds with much less fanfare than I'm used to. Mirabelle is much calmer than I've ever seen her. She's almost acting like a legitimate boss. It's so weird. And it's weird that I think it's weird. What has this place done to me? <laughs> By the time I clock out and go home, I'm almost dreading the thought of coming to work tomorrow if she's just going to be like that again. Almost dreading. The part of me that still cares about my paycheck is ecstatic. Yeah. The past few days have been such a whirlwind that I feel like I should be prepared for anything when I walk up to Mirabelle's shop. But nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. Okay, what's this? Which was absolutely nothing. Wait, she's not here? Mirabelle, are you in there? I try knocking on the locked door, but I can't hear anything inside. What's going on? She's done plenty of stuff, but she's never been laid. Nah, uh, I don't think she's in- Is she not at the shop? Did she leave? When is she coming back? 
is she coming back? Thinking about that makes something ache in my chest. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. For as long as it's felt, I've only known her for less than a week. I decide to wait for her, leaning back against the wall of the shop and closing my eyes. After a few minutes, I think, it's hard to keep track, I finally hear a familiar voice. Here she is. Mary, I'm so sorry for keeping you waiting. Did something happen? I've never seen you late before. Oh, it's nothing bad, I assure you. I just had some official business to, to take care of. Official business? Some stuff related to the festival. Those cellar fees are nothing to sneeze at. Cellar fees for the festival? It's in two days. Shouldn't that have been handled ages ago? Mirabelle's acting kind of weird today. I know it might seem strange to have to pay so close to the festival, but the organizers are really nice. They let me make an arrangement to pay over time and today's the final payment. So that's a worry off my shoulders. Oh, I see, that makes sense. Wow, that sounds convenient. It is. They really will go out of their way for us townsfolk. Now come on, we've got a potion to make. We? Well, you'll make the potion, but I'll give it to the customer when it's finished. Classic teamwork. Of course. Don't worry, all we need today is the opposite of yesterday's potion. Something that'll put the customer right to sleep. It's a really nice potion, too. Use mint and two things that smell good. Now, don't worry about me. I have a short errand I need to run, so I'll be back in just a little bit. Doodles. Okay. She has to be doing this on purpose. Mint and two things that smell good. What could those be? Wonder if mint, mint, and mint works. Mint. You can only click it once. I think it's like you click it and it adds an ingredient. Like you have to add different ingredients. All right, so two things that smell good. Well, lavender is known for sleep. So I'm just gonna throw that in immediately. And then I guess, would it be like the rose petals? Rose petals smell nice. Or peach. Oh, would it be the peach? No, it doesn't say anything about scent, though. No, I think peach would work. Because it says here as well, it's stuff with energy, but depending on the other ingredients, it can give an insomniac a good night's sleep. I think it might be peach. Give, give it a little save. I'm going to try peach. I hope this is it. See, peach smells really nice to me. It's, it's what I would go for. Otherwise, it's going to be the rose petals, but let's try. Not again. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um, it's not the peach. It's just going to be the rose petals. Lavender and rose petals. There we go. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'm so glad this still roll back. I was just like, I wonder if I scroll. Can I just roll back? And I could. Good, good. Yeah, it would be an easy and boring potion if you only had one ingredient. Yeah, it, it you'd, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to call it a potion, I think. You would just have a bottle of mint. You'd have like mint infusion. It wouldn't be a, a full potion. <laughs> As I slowly stir the potion, I think about this morning. It was so strange for Mirabelle to not be here waiting for me. And I'm not sure I quite believe her story about having an arrangement with the festival. Sure, I believe she has a booth, but what kind of arrangement could she have that would mean she gets to pay the fees later than everyone else? Is the festival treasurer her brother or something? Is that how her shop has survived so long with such bad reviews? Yoo-hoo, Larry! You'll burn the potion if you're not careful. Oh, yeah, sorry, I, I just spaced out there. Don't worry, nobody's perfect. As long as you try your hardest, you should be fine. Come on, get this bottled up so I can give it to the customer. I think they'll bite my head off if I keep them waiting much longer. All right, just a second. 
As soon as I finish bottling it, Mirabelle takes the potion out of my hands and scurries away. Despite everything, it feels like we have a pretty decent rhythm going. The rest of the day goes smoothly. Not without its problems, but nothing that seemed insurmountable. But the little things that have been building up don't leave my mind. What's the arrangement? Why was Mirabelle so nervous earlier? Since I'm only a temporary employee and my tenure ends in all of two days, I'll probably never find out. But that just makes it even harder to ignore the mystery in front of me, even once I'm off the clock. Ooh. I'm getting to the bottom of this. I can't believe the festival is tomorrow. This definitely isn't how I'd planned on spending it. Who knows how it'll turn out. I feel like anything could happen at this point. It'll definitely be exhilarating for us, no matter what. Wait, why am I thinking of Mirabelle's shop in terms of us? I won't even be working here two days from now. <laughs> when I arrive, Mirabelle is waiting for me outside with a sad, solemn smile on her face. Oh? Hi, Liri. There's something we need to talk about. I swallow the lump that formed in my throat listening to her voice. What could be going on that would cause her to act like this? Am I being fired? I don't think I messed up that much. Come on inside. It'll be easier to talk there than out here. Hmm. Is something wrong? Not exactly. Well, no, that's not right. Obviously there's something wrong. I've owned this shop for a few years now. It's not like I don't know what everyone says about me. When I open up the Welp book and see all those angry reviews, it hurts. Oh. Honestly, I always thought she was just that oblivious. Or that none of the negativity bothered her. And I know, I know that I've been in over my head, that I was never ready to run a shop of my own. Those negative reviews, almost all of them are telling the complete truth. But I thought if I worked hard enough and kept a smile on my face, I could turn things around. It never worked, but I kept trying. Owning my own shop was my dream for so long. I just couldn't give it up. You know that arrangement I mentioned for the festival? Yes, you told me about it, but no offense, it didn't really make sense. Also, hi you! Yeah, I've, I've been going for like over 10 hours now. I didn't expect the stream to go this long, but these games have just been so fun. I'm, I'm just like, yeah, I'm finishing them. I'm getting this done. I'm doing this. <laughs> it's so fun, but hi. Yeah, I'm still going. And honestly, I'm amazed at how well my throat's doing as well, considering I've been reading nonstop. Which game is it now? I'm on Witch You Want. It's the last game. I've played the first three games. I'm now playing Witch You Want. And... Oh, they've all been amazing. They're all so good. They all have such different feels to them. They are all completely, completely different from each other. And I love that so much. <laughs> it's been so much fun. It's so much variety today. <laughs> yes, I left out a lot of information. I applied for a stall this year, just like all the other years since I opened shop. But they rejected me. Rejected you? Wow. You don't need to be mad at them on my behalf. They were right, but I just couldn't admit it to myself. So I begged them to reconsider. Eventually they relented, but under the condition that I pay an extra insurance fee. Oh boy. That fee is very large. They were at least nice enough to let me pay it in installments, but if we don't sell every potion we bring to the festival, I'll have to close the shop permanently. I'm almost completely broke now. I'm sorry for not telling you this earlier. I didn't want to put all of that on your shoulders when you were only going to be here for a week. So why are you telling me this now? I've been so, so worried about the festival. This is the very last chance I had to make the shop work out. And for the first time in a long while, I feel like there's hope. Oh, just hope I'll still be fine tomorrow. Oh, I will be. 
Uh, like, thankfully, I don't have to do any talking tomorrow. So if my throat's mad at me, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but no, I, this has been so fun, though. I, I love these games. Sure, there have been some bumps in the road, but I'm confident we can make this work. As long as we work together, we can make this happen. We? But tomorrow's my last day. Oh, we'll see about that. Oh, am I getting a full-time job? Huh? I'm not going to ruin the surprise. It's all a lot to take in at once. All this time, I never thought much about how Mirabelle felt about all of this. Working for Mirabelle long term? I'd have to think about it. There's a lot of baggage attached to this shop. But even though things haven't always gone well, she's been nice to me in her own way. And she is cute. <laughs> now that all that boring stuff is taken care of, are you ready to make potions today? Yes, I'm ready. Great. Today's potion is a bit special. It's not a potion for a person. Instead, it's a sparkalizer a plant is going to drink. A sparkalizer for a plant? Yes, you pour the liquid into the soil the plant is growing from and it makes the plant sparkle. It's a really pretty effect and it's a lot easier to make than it sounds. Okay, what are the cryptic ingredients? Oh, there we go. You need peach seeds plus two other flower ingredients, but no lavender and nothing yellow. Simple enough, right? Uh... Oh, I hear the bell. Okay. Mirabelle scurries off without clarifying anything. I did promise to do my best. So, plant ingredients for the plant potion. One of the ingredients is peach seeds, one of them isn't lavender, and none of them are yellow. What does that leave me with? Um... It leaves me with rose and mint. Right? But mint isn't really a flower. Oh, it's probably fine. If I'm wrong, I will just retcon. I think it's gotta be. Yes! Oh, it is, yes! Another good potion, I'm glad. It's always a bit nerve-wracking putting the ingredients in and waiting for them to brew or not. Should I draw some leaves on the label so nobody thinks they can drink it themselves? No, that would just make them think it's made of plants. Which, well, it is, but I don't know if it'll make a person sparkle like it'll make plants sparkle. And that would be a surprise to someone just looking to quench their thirst. Yeah, the, the twilight potion. What would? I ought to be surprised that she's here, but nothing surprises me anymore. Do you know what would happen if a person were to drink this potion? A whole lot of nothing, probably. Do you want to test the sparkling on yourself? No, I just want to stop people from drinking it when they shouldn't. Oh dear, I don't think anyone could really stop that, but you may be overthinking it. Mirabelle takes the potion out of my hands, summons a pen out of thin air, and writes something on the label. Then she holds the bottle up to me. Underneath the shop's name and plant sparkalizer is written, Tastes like spoiled milk, do not drink. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. If you just say do not drink, there will, there will always be people who are like, Okay, but what if I do? But if you say it just tastes bad. Yeah. Does it really? No, but most people aren't going to want to find out. Now, let's get this out to the customer. They really, really want their houseplants to be as to be sparkly as soon as possible. Sparkles. It's really nice to be able to have casual, uh, casual conversations with Mirabelle. She's still my boss, of course, but after this morning's talk, I feel like we've really cleared the air. The rest of the day passes by similarly, but as the minutes and hours tick by, I can't help but become increasingly aware of how little time there is until things change for good. There's less than a day now until I'll have to be at the festival. For better or for worse. At one point I drop a bottle, an empty one, luckily, 
and Mirabelle asks me if something is wrong. I try to play it off as just being clumsy, but I don't think she buys it. When it's time to clock out, I don't really want to leave, but Mirabelle shoes me outside. She gives me a key to the shop and tells me to let myself in if something comes up. I barely have an appetite at dinner, and I'm nearly too nervous to fall asleep. I never thought so much would be riding on the village festival. I've gone every year since I was a kid, and it's almost always just been a good time. This is it! It's the day of the festival. However this week ends up, it's going to be decided today. Mirabelle asked me to come to the shop early today. Oh, to come to the shop early today. We did a lot of preparation, but apparently we got a single rush order. Oh boy, okay. So I have to come in to make that potion while she finishes setting up the stall. Oh, it's all me then. I used the key Mirabelle gave me yesterday to let myself in. It feels strangely barren without her here. When I get to my station, there's a single folded note waiting for me. Dear Liri, Thanks for coming in early today. I know you'd prob probably rather be at the festival right now, but when someone came up to me and begged me to give them a courage potion, I just couldn't refuse. Seriously, they looked so pathetic. I would have felt like I was kicking a puppy if I hadn't taken the job. That's Yeah, I would, I would have taken that job too. That's fine. The three ingredients you need are... Something romantic? Something made in the ground? Something you make a wish on? Great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Please help this customer out. I don't think I'll be able to live with myself if it doesn't work. No pressure, huh? This can't be too difficult if she left it to me, right? Something romantic, something made in the ground, and something you make a wish on? What do I have for those? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Because I feel like something made in the ground could be any of the plants. Well, not the peaches. But the something romantic is going to be the rose petals. Hmm. Dandelion wishes! Dandelion for the wishes. Make a wish like when you blow all the seeds on a dandelion. Okay, so we got dandelion, rose, and something made in the ground. Would it be the lavender? Or mint? No, lavender is like calming properties. We wouldn't want that for courage, would we? So... I think it would be the, the rose petals. Passionate emotions, that makes sense. Something you make a wish on, the dandelions. They have a big effect. And... Mint's coolness? Maybe mint. I'm gonna try mint. Because I'm thinking like the coolness would get bring the courage like if you're nervous you've got to like cool your emotions and then you are calm and in control and you have the courage that's what I'm gonna go for I think so I got that and that and I'm gonna try mint let's see if this works okay I don't know if it's right or wrong yet but we'll find out <laughs> yeah I thought of those two right away but the thing in the ground took a while yeah it's I ended up like going through the properties of the ingredients to see what would work for like a courage potion because lavender is for like calming so I don't think that would it's, it's like a sleepy time thing I don't think that would work for courage I don't know I could be wrong I could have just messed everything up we will see I operate the cauldron and my ladle like I I'm possessed not really registering what's going on 
I have to get to the festival as soon as possible, no matter how this potion turns out. I don't even look at it when I go to bottle it, so I'm not even sure if it's worth drinking. I'll just have to figure that out later. I've got to leave now. Well, I guess I'll find out later. <laughs> okay. As quickly as I can, I clean everything up, finish closing up the shop, and start to run to the town square where the festival is being held. Oh, I hope I got that right. It's easy to tell when I'm getting closer, since there are more and more people closer and closer together on the streets. Did I save the game there? Yeah, I did save it at least. It's easy to tell when I'm getting closer, since there are more and more people closer and closer together on the streets. I barely managed to avoid running into anybody. <laughs> yeah, it's so mean. It doesn't say directly this time. I can't rely on the the context cues to know if I got it wrong or not. <laughs> well, it's fine. I got the first potion wrong anyway, so it's it's okay. I'm just I'm just hoping for the best. All right, you're running on three hours of sleep. Oh my goodness, yes, please get some rest, gambler. I hope you can sleep well. I'm glad you were able to stop in though. Have a good sleep. Let me tell you, I'm gonna have such a good sleep after the stream's done. I'm, I'm just gonna lie in bed and crash, I think. <laughs> Eventually, I do have to slow down because there are simply too many people to run past. People crowd in groups with their friends and loved ones in front of all the different stalls enjoying a variety of foods and other sundries. Excuse me, pardon me. Sorry, didn't mean to step on your foot. I'm on the noodles. Let me squeeze through for just a moment. Not every part of the festival is like this, but the stall area is always packed to the brim. After a while of moving past people, I finally find my goal. At a small booth in a corner, barely out of the shadows, is a respectable display of bottled potions with impeccably designed labels below a sign bearing a familiar shop name, Mirabelle's Miraculous Mixtures. Mirabelle, I got the potion! It's about time, there's so many people here! I managed to wriggle my way through people browsing Mirabelle's wares and behind the stall, sitting in the empty seat next to her. Come on, let me see what you brought. I show Mirabelle the courage potion she had me make before I left. Ah, that's... I guess I didn't do it right, okay. Let's just tell her that we didn't have time to make it, all right? That bad, huh? And make sure not to pour that on any of the bushes here. Ouch. There's no time to waste, let's get back to selling. You, in the red shirt. You look like someone whose life woes can be helped with a stiff drink. It's the gemstones. It's the gemstones. I just realized. I'm so silly. I just realized it. <laughs> I'm going to blame how late it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, this is fine. I'm just rolling with it for now. You in the red shirt. You look like someone whose life woes can be helped with a stiff drink. I've got plenty of stiff drinks here for the discerning customer. Mirabelle, that's not what a stiff drink is. She laughs brightly before turning to look at me with a twinkle in her eye. And then she's just like, actually, there's vodka in every one. <laughs> it got your attention, didn't it? You're not supposed to get my attention. Am I not? Oh, oh. How dare you? Don't you dare kissy face at me. I will fall for it. <laughs> Mirabelle flushes her eyelashes at me. My face immediately feels hot, and I jerk around to look away from her. She's doing this on purpose. You! I point to a tired-looking woman holding a baby in one arm, with a small child holding her other hand. Do you need a monstrous energy potion? Yeah, this is exactly what I would do. If I was the assistant, I'd just start selling the monstrous energy potion. As the day goes on, Mirabelle and I try to get people's attention, but surprisingly, it turns out to not be necessary. People are coming to stop at our stall even without being called over. At first, I thought it was out of morbid curiosity with how, what with how bad a reputation Mirabelle's shop has. And maybe for some people that was it, but soon, people actually started to buy potions. 
Gradually but steadily, the number of potions resting atop our table dwindled. And as the sun set, someone bought the last of the potions we set up. <gasps> we did it. Ah, oh. oh, we did it. Honey, honey. We did it. We did, the shop can stay open. Just as Mirabelle said that, a burst of purple fireworks blasted through the sky. Even the fireworks are celebrating our momentous achievement. They are, how courteous of them. Of course, I know it's just a coincidence, but it's nice to think that the rest of the village wants to celebrate with us too. Since we no longer have anything to sell, an excellent problem to have, all we can do is watch the firework display light up the night sky. It paints the view above us with a rainbow of different colours, all both beautiful and fleeting. I've seen the fireworks a ton of times, alone, with family, with friends, but somehow it feels different this year. I look to the side to see where Mirabelle is sitting next to me. She's looking at the fireworks with a determined expression on her face. I wonder if she feels the same way I... While I was thinking about her, Mirabelle kissed me softly on the lips. It's awfully unprofessional, I know, but I've been wanting to do that for a while. Ah! Ah! You have? Mm-hmm. It's been very distracting. Now, I have a very important question for you. Is she... No, she couldn't be. Not this soon. Do you promise to come to work tomorrow morning? Will you kiss me again if I do? Absolutely. Then I promise. I'll keep working for you tomorrow and every day after that. Hold on, you'll need vacations and sick days too. Suddenly, I can't help but feel grateful that my last job let me go. If they hadn't gotten rid of me, I wouldn't be here right now. The future of the shop may, might still be uncertain, but one thing's for sure. However it turns out, Mirabelle and I will face it together. Yay! I did it! Yes! Right, I wanna I wanna see what happens if I do everything right. So I'm I'm gonna load it up. I'm gonna like skip through. I'm gonna skip through the text I've already seen. I just wanna see if anything changes if I do everything perfectly. So, cat's eye, some peach seeds, and something soft. Cat's eye, peach, feather. Got it. Here we go. First one correct. Yeah, it was the feather. It was just a soft thing. Makes sense. <laughs> Thank you for the headband, too. I feel so accomplished right now. After I put all the ingredients in the cauldron and stir them, the mixture begins to bubble satisfyingly. It's been a while since I've done this. It's actually pretty relaxing. As long as I ignore the circumstances that brought me here. Before too long, the brew is finished and I pour it into an empty bottle. The consistency is silky smooth. It's, uh, I'm so glad it's not the clumpy one I did before. You'd have no idea this was my first potion in a long time. Yoo-hoo, the customer's here. One strength potion to go. Mirabelle seems to be in a hurry when she enters, but after she takes the potion out of my hands, she takes a moment to look at it. Wow, now that is a beautiful potion, especially since you said you only have a little bit of experience. She leans in towards me, her tone of voice conspiratorial. Why, I'd almost think you just stole this from my shop. What? Of course. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's get this to the customer. Whoa, okay. Mirabelle runs off again in a hurry to get back. For a moment, I think about following her, but instead I take the opportunity for a break, even if it's just for a few minutes. She might be the one running around, but I feel like I'm the one who needs to stop and take a breath. A few minutes later, I can hear footsteps approaching. She probably has another task for me. Hopefully not involving geese this time. But when I turn to face her, instead of giving me another order, she pulls me into a hug. I can't believe I missed a hug so early on by messing up my first potion. <laughs> it was perfect! Congratulations on your first successful order! 
thank you? She lets go of me but keeps a hand on my shoulder. This partnership is going very well so far, if I say so myself. Now, on to the next order. For the next few hours, Mirabelle sets me up with some very simple orders, which all go as well as the first one, though without as much hugging. In between, she gives me a tour of the shop. If I didn't know any better, I think it was actually a really nice place. But just because the decor is pretty and everything organized, doesn't mean the stock is good. Well, it will be now that I'm here, haha. <laughs> Eventually, the sun begins to set and Mirabelle closes the shop. She waves me off as I leave. I guess she lives on the second floor. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm learning new information too. Right, Skippy, okay. Oh no, because I didn't fail, it's like positive text now. Yeah, I'll just notice her eyes don't just have stars, but rainbow stars. I love that. Gay stars. <laughs> okay, so that's a bit overdramatic. It actually went pretty well, all things considered. I earned my keep and nobody got poisoned. Yeah, so I guess that line changes depending on how well you do. Oh, yeah, and she's happy this time. Larry, it's so good to see you. It seems like time hasn't blunted her enthusiasm for me. Or the work I'm doing, any. Ready for another great day of work? Yeah, sure. I made sure to study up on some basics last night, just in case, you know. Okay, yeah, this is the same. Up oh, here we go. Uh, what do we have today? Well, the good news is that the strength potion you brewed yesterday worked perfectly. Yes! Good news? Then what's the bad news? That some customer came into the shop in a panic while I was getting ready for bed. Things were pretty hectic in the preparations for the festival, and apparently she dropped some really heavy boxes. Ouch. On someone else's foot. Ouch. That's what I said. She, the woman whose foot had the boxes dropped on her, went to a healer, but, well, you know what they're like sometimes over there. The customer feels really bad about what happened, and she wants to give her a potion to relieve pain. A pain relief potion. Uh, there's a few recipes for those, but one that you have ingredients for contains lavender, beeswax, and something cool. Something cool? Yes! Is she messing with me, or did she really just forget an ingredient again? You're a smart cookie, Liri. I'm confident you'll do just as well today as you did yesterday. No pressure there. Now, if you don't mind, I have some other orders to take care of. I'll be back to check on you in a bit. It'll be interesting to see how much more positive the random flavor lines are when I'm doing well. <laughs> Mirabelle gives me a quick wave as she leaves me on my own again. Lavender beeswax, something cool. Lavender beeswax, something cool. Got him. Let's see. Yep. Okay, and now I can now I can keep skipping. I won't let this job consume me, even if I'm good at it. Uh, I haven't known Mirabelle personally for very long, but she has to know that her shop's reputation is terrible. And if I can help relieve that, well, maybe it's a bit flattering, but it could also lead to this job being way more than I signed up for. Right, skippies. Oh, no skippies. I have great news. What is it? That potion we gave Sarah yesterday worked like a charm. She even told me Lillian, that's the woman she dropped the boxes on, was shocked by how well it worked. I'm getting so much more now that I'm... I didn't fail the first potion. This is wild. Oh, that's good. I think there's an implied considering where it was bought in that sentence she's forgetting. In fact, she was so impressed that she just came over to buy another potion herself. Really? Yep, you just missed her actually. We don't have any knitting potions in stock, so I had to ask her to come back later. That's where you come in. Oh yeah, knitting potions. Oh see, we, d we only had like a vague instruction before of what potion it was. But now that like we're talking to the customers and we, we have a good reputation, we're getting more information. This is good. I'm kind of glad I flubbed it on the first run. It's it's interesting seeing how it changes. A knitting potion? That's what she's using it for anyway. 
She needs a potion to enhance her concentration and dexterity to make up for the progress she the progress she lost on her stall stock. It's pretty simple, maybe a bit too simple for how well you've been doing, frankly. But I won't have time to do it myself, so just put in some beeswax, some lavender, and something red. Something red? Oh, I think I hear the bell. I'll check on you later. Yeah, that's the um the rose petals. Of course she will. I'm just gonna have to figure out ingredients the whole time I'm here, aren't I? Alrighty. Well, just standing here won't get the potion made any faster. What's something red that goes with beeswax and lavender? Beeswax, lavender, red. Boop. Another potion well made, if I say so myself. I never thought I'd make a potion for knitting, but there's a first time for everything, I suppose. Boop. Okay, that's that I can skip. That was the same. Up oh, slightly different now. Uh, hello, Larry. It's good to see you today. Well, I am your assistant for this week. Mirabelle is more nervous than I've ever seen her. I can tell she's trying to play it off and cover her nerves with cheerfulness, but she's really bad at hiding it. Is everything all right? Of course everything's all right. Everything's pushing up... The Wait, pushing up daisies? That's... <laughs> That's not the... Um, hmm, for the shop. Why wouldn't I be all right? <laughs> That's a little worrying. Pushing up daisies means, like, a body that's dead in the ground. Like, that... That's a little worrying. Also, Susan may thank you for the hydrate and posture check. No, that's fine. Okay, yeah, you're right, Gigi. I'll have a big sip and a stretch and look after myself. But don't worry, I will. I'm nearly done with this. I, I did, like, technically finish the game, but I didn't do everything right. So I'm going through it doing everything right before I end, but I'm, I'm basically done now. So I'm, I'm good. I'm looking after myself. <laughs> That's a really long-winded way of saying no. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Well, it's 1 a.m. for me. <laughs> it's, um, it's not really evening. My evening is gone, but... <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. It's okay. I'm going to bed soon. 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 It's going to be 11 hour stream. That is wild. I did not expect to do this. <laughs> but thank you. I'll do my best. But yeah, oh, she, she's so cool, isn't she? I love Mirabelle. I love this design so much. This is just like peak character design right here. Yeah, it really is so wild that everything was like slightly different because of failing the first potion. Like everything was just slightly less personal. That's fascinating. Okay. This isn't really any of my business, is it? I'm not even a long-term employee. Both of our jobs right now are to face today with a smile. Mirabelle pokes at the sides of my mouth. All right? All right. I relax into a genuine smile despite myself. Now, Sarah came back to the shop today. I'm not used to having regulars. Oh my goodness, I, I cheated her out of having regulars by doing a bad potion at the start. This is hilarious. <laughs> I, I mean, having regulars is a completely normal part of owning a shop. <laughs> so of course I wasn't blindsided sided by it or anything. That would be silly of me. Anyway, what she needs today is a boost of energy. She has more stuff to move around for the festival, but she's been fretting over Lillian so much that she hasn't gotten a wink of sleep. This isn't a job for a mere cup of coffee. Needs monstrous energy. Here we go. That's where you come in. The recipe needs peach seeds. It's really easy. Just peach seeds? Nope. Nope. Yeah, this is the same. Oh, here. Yeah. Uh, something blue and something shiny. Her memory's getting even worse. Without saying anything, Mirabelle turns and walks away. Not even an acknowledgement. Somehow she's way more scatterbrained today than usual. It's kind of disconcerting. I guess that worrying won't make the potion create itself, though. Peach seeds, something blue, and something shiny. What could that be? Peach seeds, something blue, something shiny. Boop. Yeah. 
like usual, I put the ingredients, put in the ingredients and start to stir. It's becoming kind of a ritual, soothing in a sense. As I wait for Mirabelle to come back for the potion, I reflect back on the beginning of the day. Can I skip? Yeah, I can skip now. Wonderful! Let me get this to Sarah and then I'll come back with the next order for you. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, the same. Okay, what if I say here now, is she ignoring me? Is she in there but pretending she isn't? But why would she try to push me away? Thinking about that makes something ache in my chest. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. For as long as it's felt, I've only known of her for less than a week. I decide to wait for her, leaning back against the wall of the shop and closing my eyes. Let's see if this is the same. No, it's not. Here we go. What happened? It's not like you to be late for work. Uh, you were surprised to be on the opposite end when you moved out. One year later, the nearby bakery noticed that you're a regular. <laughs> After a year? A whole year? That's wild. <laughs> Just like, oh, I've seen you a couple of times. More more than a couple. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been a regular at a shop. I don't think I've ever gotten to the point in a shop where where people have known who I am. Except maybe the, the shop across the road from where I live. Uh, they definitely got used to me buying Cancer Monster over there. <laughs> I got recognized as that I just walk in and buy a can of Monster and leave. But now I buy it in bulk, so I don't do that anymore. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I had a little bit of official business to take care of. Just some stuff related to the festival. Yeah, this is the same. No, it's different. Okay. Just some stuff related to the festival. Nothing you need to worry about. You know what those seller fees can be like. <laughs> the festival? It's in two days. Shouldn't these have been handled weeks ago? Yeah, see, I just outright say it here. In the first playthrough, I just thought it, but I didn't say it out loud. Ah, well, under normal circumstances, perhaps, but we have a <laughs> special arrangement. So you have more leeway on the deadline? Yes, that's exactly what it is. That's pretty convenient. Very. Now, come on, let's get to work. All right, what do I need to make today? Oh, I got a lovely visit from Lillian today. She's having the exact opposite problem Sarah was, I'm afraid. She's been having such a hard time sleeping lately and needs something that'll at bare minimum give her a really good nap. Make sure to put in mint and two things that smell good. Now, just a moment. I have some stuff I need to tidy up. Okay. She's definitely doing this on purpose now. Mint and two things that smell good. It is mint and lavender and rose. In what's quickly becoming a habit, I stick the ingredients inside the cauldron and wait for the mixture to start quietly bubbling. Bum bum bum. Yes, I can skip that. There we go. But don't worry, I know it would have been fine. You've been so consistent. It's amazing. Come on, get this bottled up so I can give it to Lillian. Poor dear's at the counter looking like she's at death's door. All right, just a second. As soon as I finish bottling it, Mirabelle takes the potion out of my hands and scurries away. Yeah, there we go. Okay, continuing. We've been making a lot of potions. The shop might actually make a profit. And we even have regular customers now. Wait, yeah, that's so funny how much it changed just from the first potion being bad. <laughs> Hi, Leary, there's something we need to talk about. I know it can't be my performance. She's not the kind of boss to fire someone who's doing a good job. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, yeah, this is the same. Oh, wait, because for the first time in a long while, I feel like there's hope. When I put out that job posting, I didn't expect to get someone who was actually really good at making potions. And I definitely didn't expect the person who responded to be such a pretty girl either. Huh? I swore I would be honest about everything today, no exceptions. Anyway, if a miracle happens and we sell enough to keep the shop open, I want you working here. You don't have to make a decision right now, but will you promise to think about it, at least? Yeah, I promise. Somehow this just feels right. Not just because I want a job, either. I think we really can turn this shop around. 
It'll take a lot of hard work from both of us, but if we work together, we can do it. Now, before you get too distracted, guess who came up to the counter just before I left to wait for you? Was it one of the regulars? Both of them. They only need, needed one potion, though. And let me guess, I have to brew that potion? Oh, that was the first change you really noticed. You feel bad you didn't notice the other ones. <laughs> it's, it's so wild how much changes. I love it. You really are a quick learner. This one is a bit unusual. It's not a potion made for drinking, it's one you water a plant with to change its properties. But the method of making it is exactly the same, so just think of it like normal, okay? For a flower sparkalizer, you need peach seeds plus two more flower ingredients, but not lavender and nothing yellow. Yep. I really do need to think about it before committing to this job long term. I should at least ask her to get better about sharing actual recipes with me. <laughs> so, plant ingredients for the plant potion. One is peach seeds, neither is lavender, and none of them are yellow. So that means... It's, um... These. I think it was that. Yes, yet another perfect potion coming up. Maybe it's a bit arrogant to put it like that, but I have been doing a good job. Mirabelle said so herself. Hmm. Do the cakes in the back also contain potions? I wonder. I wonder if they are or if it's just a nice cafe. Like, oh, we had leftover um, fruit, so we baked things with it. <laughs> oh, it could be a thing like, oh, they only need the peach stones for the potions. So they're buying peaches, and then the leftover peach they're baking things with. Oh, if yes, hope it's my potions. Oh, me too. Yeah, maybe it's a bit arrogant to put it like that, but I have been doing a good job. Mirabelle said so herself. Okay, yeah, this is the same. Here we go. Now let's get this, let's get this out to Lillian and Sarah. I'm dying to figure out why they need sparkly plants. It's really nice to be able to have, yeah, casual conversations. I let myself in with the key Mirabelle gave me yesterday. The shop feels so barren without her here. Here we go. Oh, there's two folded notes. Wait, there was only one before. Which one should I read first? Um, the note on the left. I don't think I'm meant to be reading this. Um, um okay, uh, dearest Sarah, I know we didn't get off to a great start, but I assure you that despite your breaking my foot, this past week has been the most joyful of my life. Your heart bursts with kindness and compassion and cheer, and rather than feeling inadequate, I feel comforted and energized in your presence. If you would allow me the pleasure of being your beloved, I will want for nothing more in my life. With ever-flowing love, Lillian. Oh, it took you three lines until you noticed to stop. I saw immediately. I was like, hold on. Oh, that's that's funny. I can just imagine just being like, whoa, huh? This, this letter for me? I, I don't think I should be reading this. Mirabelle, why did you leave someone else's love letter at my station? This is what the courage potion's for, isn't it? It's so they confess too. It's so that the, the, the other lesbians can also confess. Oh, I get it now. I can't believe I missed this whole plot by just messing up my first potion. Wow. I should just look at the other note. Hopefully it's not also a confession. Yep, here we go. Yep, dear Leary, thanks for coming in early today. I know it's not ideal with the festival and all, but when Lillian came up to me and asked for a potion of courage so she could confess to Sarah, I couldn't say no. Have you seen those lovebirds? I was surprised they weren't already courting. She even left a really sweet note for her. Make sure to bring it with you when you come here, all right? Could have made it clearer that the note wasn't for me. Why did you even leave it here in the first place? Never mind that, let me read the rest of this letter. 
potion you need to make today is one that increases the drinker's courage. The three main, main ingredients are something romantic, something made in the ground, and something you make a wish on. I'm sure you'll be able to help Lillian and Sarah. Their relationship depends on you. No pressure. Well, I've had plenty of practice now, so it shouldn't be that difficult, right? Something romantic, something made in the ground, and something you make a wish on. What do I have for those? I think it's going to be the gemstones for the something made in the ground. I hope it is at least. I'm going to save anyway, just in case. Romantic. Make a wish. Made in the ground. Courage. I operate the cauldron in my ladle like I'm possessed, not really registering what's going on. I have to get to the festival as soon as possible, no matter how this potion turns out. I'm not going to find out for a while anyway. All right, let's skip. We're going. I'm going. Here we go. I show Mirabelle the courage potion she had me make before I left, as well as Lillian's note. Why did you leave this at my brewing station? It obviously wasn't for me. Oh, I feel like it might be time to sleep. That's Oh yeah, it's 1am. That's totally fine. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I hope you sleep well. Hopefully I get to sleep soon. I think I'm nearly done. <laughs> this has been so much fun though. I'm I'm so glad I got to play all of these. But it was just so cute. It would have been a shame if you didn't get to see it too. Remind me not to leave anything secret around you. Well, she has her charms anyway, even if secrecy isn't one of them. Oh, this potion looks beautiful. Yeah, that was the one. Okay. There's no way Lillian will get turned down with this. If you ask me, I don't think she'd get turned down without it either. But I'm not going to refuse her money. Yeah, the gems aren't something you think about first when you have flowers next to it. Yeah, exactly. I guess it's like the operative thing is like in the ground. And when, when the plants grow, I guess they're like out of the ground then. But yeah, it... It definitely, I, I had like the brainwave moment afterwards where I was like, oh, it's the gemstones, I'm silly. But I got it now. I got it when it counts. I think the fact that they're shiny as well, that it mentions they're shiny and like polished and stuff, it immediately made me think like, not rocks. But they are rocks. <laughs> There's no time to waste. Let's get back to selling. Right, skippies. Here we go. Even Lillian came over to pick up her courage potion. Sarah stood at her side with a hand resting casually on Lillian's shoulder. As Sarah made small talk with Mirabelle, Lillian secretly swiped both the potion she'd ordered and the note she'd written. Finally, it'll be going to its intended recipient. Ah. I'm pretty sure Lillian wants this to be a secret so I don't say anything, but I cheer her on internally. I think Mirabelle was right that she doesn't really need luck, though. Sarah's so obviously smitten with her that a confession would be a formality. And then, yeah, and then the rest is the same. I did it! The game is completed! Right, the only thing I haven't tried is just failing everything. I'll try very quickly. I'll just shove some random stuff in this cauldron and see what happens. Yep, after I put in the ingredients and start to stir, I can immediately tell that something is wrong. Oh no, this isn't good. Maybe I really will be fired today. I didn't think I was this rusty. Oh, you had a different end because you rolled back when you read the love letter. Oh, so I bet it's different depending on if you read it or not. Oh, that's sweet. I didn't think I was this rusty. I wonder if I can just throw this out and try again before Mirabelle comes back. Oh dear, it smells rather smoky in here. I guess I can't get out of this, huh? Leary. I gulp out of instinct. She isn't any less scary than she was yesterday. Were you lying when you said that you had potion making ex experience? Of course not, I just, um... I promise I won't get mad if you say yes. You won't get mad because you're already mad. I was telling the truth, really, but it's been a while. You said you'd study up on potions. I did, I just messed up anyway. Mirabelle sighs. 
She's clearly not much happier about this situation than I am. Just leave. I'll clean this up and make a new one for the customer. What should I do? Leave. Do whatever you'd like. I think about asking whether I'll still get paid for coming in, but that seems like a bad idea. I'll just write today off. Ultimately, I end up not being able to enjoy my impromptu day off. I feel bad for disappointing Mirabelle twice right away. Even if the reviews of her shop are already at rock bottom, I wasn't exactly aiming at contributing to that. Okay, I will not blow this, not any more than I already have. If I'm not careful, I might even get fired before the festival, which would just be embarrassing. How incompetent do you have to be to get fired with cause from a shady merchant who desperately needs the help? I don't intend on finding out. No, just kidding. I do intend on finding out. I just want to get fired. I just want to get fired so I can go to bed now. We'll see how things shake out in the next few days. But I'm confident that things will turn out well. You still have a job. Well, that's good to know if a bit surprising. All right, here we go. All right, time to make, um, I don't know what I'm making. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. I don't remember being this bad at making potions. Since I caught my mistake early, I decided to just throw out the bad potion and replace it. But this turns out to be much more of an ordeal than I thought it would be. Why is this cauldron so heavy? How do you even get it in here in the first place, Mirabelle? I almost managed to pick it up, but in the end mostly just succeed in wriggling it around a bit. <laughs> in the meantime, my hands are covered in the botched potion. It smells and feels terrible, but at least my skin doesn't hurt. Come on, Leary. I freeze in place when I hear Mirabelle's voice from behind me. What in the stars are you doing to my brewing station? I, I can explain. There's no need. Clean up the mess you've made. After that, I don't want you out of my sight until you go home. Understood? Yes, ma'am. The rest of my workday is spent with Mirabelle breathing down my throat. Sometimes literally. She looks so cute, but she's really scary when she wants to be. Am I fired yet? Am I fired yet? Is this my fault for messing up so much? Oh my goodness. I'm on thin ice. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a potion with only one ingredient? Although I wouldn't be surprised if you thought that was possible. It definitely is, and you always need at least three ingredients for a potion. She's still not firing me. What the heck? I need you to fire me. Please. Please fire me. Uh, these. Again. I put in the ingredients, begin to stir... For a while, it seems like it'll turn out well. I should, know, I should know better than to get my hopes up, but I want to believe. Just when I'm about to finish and bottle it up, however, the whole thing turns into sludge. What a waste of time. Why couldn't it have just gone bad quickly? At this point, I think I'm more or less resigned to my fate. I'm either going to get fired or I'm going to continue to blunder my way through the end of the week. Maybe it'd be better for me to get fired. Then I'd be able to... Then I'd be able to enjoy the festival in peace instead of having to work. To cap things off, I can immediately tell that Mirabelle is approaching. Of course she'd pick today to not just sneak up on me. Looks like it hasn't gone very well, Leary. Nope, sorry. I won't be offended if you fire me. Mirabelle looks at me with a suspicious glare. Do you want to be fired? Oh no, she's caught on. Oh no, she's caught on. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> of course not. I'm going to keep you till the end of the week, just like we agreed. Oh. You can staff the front counter for me today. Are you good at dealing with people? Nope. Maybe? It's not too hard. Just make sure to keep a smile on your face and never cry if a customer yells at you. I, I think I can do that. No, you need more enthusiasm. Say after me. I can do it. I can do it. I'll serve the customers with a smile. I'll serve the customers with a smile. And I will not cry. 
And I will not cry. Um, wait, is that something that happens to you a lot? Just head over to the front counter, please. And make sure to write down all the orders. What did Mirabelle just rope me into doing? The rest of the day saw me having graduated from errand girl to customer service. I was really worried about people being rude or downright abusive, considering how bad the shop's reputation is. But ultimately, there ended up not being many people, and the ones who did mostly acted normal. Yeah, get an energy potion, surely she has some. <laughs> no, I messed it up. I only teared up once the whole day, so I'll consider that a success. I sure needed one. All right. All right, not at the shop? Ba, 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 ba. Not that I'm in any position to question her on anything. I might actually get some help today instead of being left to flounder. Oh, nope. Of course. If she does exit interviews, I know exactly what I'm complaining about. I swear she's setting me up to fail, but why? Mint and two things that smell good. How about rocks, beeswax, and a feather? Not again. I think my definition of smells could may be different from Mirabelle's. <laughs> That's gotta be why the potion came out wrong. Definitely not because I'm bad at making potions. Even though objectively I kinda am. Trying to hide what happened isn't going to help me any, I don't think. I kind of wish there was a way to instantly contact someone from a distance. You'd need some really powerful magic for something like that, though. And I feel like if Mirabelle had the ability to talk to me at any time, she'd probably bother me after work a lot. Maybe that kind of invention would just make things worse. <laughs> I shudder at the thought of having my boss interrupt my dinner. Oh yeah, and imagine like if someone could just like talk to you at any moment. Transmit a message instantly or... Oh. Oh, are you feeling a bit chilly, Leary? I'm sure I've got a spare warmth potion that might help you a bit there. No, I'm fine, I swear. When did you get here? Just now. I take it the potion didn't come out too good, huh? I'm afraid not. Sorry. I don't expect anything else from you. Yeah, mm hmm Ouch. She has a point, though. I can't expect her to keep her hopes up when I haven't managed a single good potion over halfway through the week. <laughs> How about you take the rest of the day off after this? Are you sure? I don't have anything for you to do today. No point in keeping you around. This seems awfully generous. But the festival's in two days. The whole reason she hired me was because she was swamped with festival preparations, wasn't it? I can't risk more failures, sorry. <laughs> Just fire me. Just fire me already, please. That's fair. When I get home later, I feel exhausted. I just want to get fired. <laughs> I love how you can just mess up so much and the game keeps going. It's it's kind of great, but also when it's like 1am. I'm just here like, can I get fired, please? It's strange because I didn't do a lot and it's still pretty early. But it still stings to know that I've screwed up so much. Please fire me. Things haven't been going well. I'm kind of surprised I haven't already been fired. I can't imagine how badly things could turn out for us at the festival. This is going to be really bad. I'm getting fired, aren't I? Oh, this was the very last chance I had to make the shop work out, but I don't think it's possible anymore. Oh no, oh no. So I'm trying to come to terms with it, with this part of my life ending. I, I don't think it's that bad. You don't need to try to comfort me, Liri. It just wasn't meant to be. I should have seen that earlier. Yeah, you should have fired me on the second day, honestly. This is, this is your fault. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still going to carry out my obligations to the festival and to you. I'm not going to use the shop's closure as an excuse to slack off, and neither should you. It's all a lot to take in at once. All this time, I never thought much about how Mirabelle felt about all of this. 
I know that Mirabelle is most of why the shop is in such a precarious position in the first place, but I can't help but think that I was the final nail in the coffin. She needed someone who could help her make potions, and that wasn't me. Bum 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 bum, as ready as I'll ever be. I'll take it. Alright, this is the sparkalizer, isn't it? So dandelions. Just, I, just, just whatever these are. Uh, soon after I start stirring the ingredients I put in, it becomes extremely clear that what I've made isn't a sparkalizer. It's a dead ariser. I should make sure not to get any of this stuff on the plant ingredients. Or the non-plant ingredients. Or the furniture. Or me. I'm not even sure this stuff is safe in the cauldron, actually. Uh, Mirabelle, can you hear me? All I can hear is the incessant bubbling of the not sparkalizer. I'm having an issue over here. Still no reply. The one time I actually needed her to come. Should I leave to go find her? No, I need to make sure this stuff doesn't come out of the cauldron and wreck the place. Mirabelle, I think this stuff is about to escape. Finally, the telltale sound of Mirabelle's shoes on the wooden floor hits my ears. What's that? Whoa! Exactly. Wait outside, all right. This stuff is dangerous if you breathe too much of it in. Don't you need help? Outside, please. Mirabelle forcibly pushes me away from the station and out of the room. I get the hint. I end up not going back in the shop the entire rest of the day. Not out of lack of trying, mind you. After Mirabelle comes out to say that the mess is gone, <laughs> she says that the shop has to remain closed so it can air out. Don't end the shop early. <laughs> I'm just ending everything. It's like, can this get any worse? Oh yeah, it can. Uh, hold my, my dead ariser. I've messed up before, but not that badly. As if the shop's chances weren't bad enough already. Before she tells me to go home, Mirabelle places a key in my hand and tells me to let myself in if something comes up. Definitely not what I expected, considering... everything. Later on, my nerves start to take over. I have a hard time eating dinner, let alone sleeping at night. I've never felt so much like I'm just delaying the inevitable. Alright. Festival time. It's actually pretty calm without her around. Alright. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Yeah, this is the... Courage potion. I think she might be overestimating me a bit here. Alright, just them. That's fine. <laughs> I end up not really paying attention to the cauldron as I add the ingredients and begin to stir. <laughs> It's not a conscious decision on my part. I just end up getting the sudden feeling that nothing I do will make a difference. At the very least, nothing's going up in smoke or anything, so the potion should be fine. If it turned out bad, I'll find out later. I have to leave as soon as possible. Right. Let's see how this goes. As quickly as I can, I clean everything up, finish closing up the shop, and start to run to the town square where the festival is being held. Oh, this isn't going to go well. But as I get closer and closer, I can tell that something is off. Instead of getting denser and harder to pass by, there are fewer people as I get closer to the festival. What's going on? Oh, did I like, did I like actually do something really awful here? What is going on? Oh, I wonder if the last potion could still give a special ending if you succeed. That would be interesting. What's going on? And there's screaming? Not the happy cries of excited children, or even the sound of a grumpy baby. I start running even faster. Someone tries to grab my arm and says something about how I'm going the wrong direction, but I ignore them. Mirabelle, what's going on? That smell. The smoke coming from the marketplace! Mirabelle, where are you? There's a fire going on, isn't there? <laughs> Nearly 12 hour stream. Hi, Nermits. Yes. Um, I, I said to myself, dedicated day, women Wednesday. 
I'm going to play all four games from the Studio Elan game jam. And um, I'm, I'm still here, but this is the end now. This is the, the, the end of the stream now. I'm finally going to be free. And it looks like things are on fire. So what, what more fitting way to end? <laughs> but oh, I'm, I'm glad you managed to, to catch a bit of the stream. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 1.20 a.m. for me. It's a, a little bit late. Women Wednesday plus a bit. Well, it's, it's like time zones. It's still Wednesday somewhere. <laughs> There's a fire going on, isn't there? I know we haven't had the smoothest road here, but I have to make sure she's safe. Mirabelle! Just as I'm considering giving up, I finally bump into her. Literally. Mirabelle, are you alright? You! The expression on her face is furious in a way I've never, ever seen her before. This is all your fault! How? Oh, I just got here! All I needed was someone who could brew simple potions, and what I got is someone who brewed explosives. What? How did I do that? I never ever want to see your face again, you hear me? What is she doing? She's like... Why, why is she this close? This is uncomfortable. <laughs> and don't think I'm going to pay you for ruining the festival. Not just for me, but for everyone. Before I can try to defend myself, Mirabelle runs off in a huff. I really did screw everything up. Worse than I thought I ever could. And that's the bad ending. <laughs> I feel like there's probably another ending too, which is like a, a middle of the line kind of ending. But that is enough of this for me, I think. I think after 11 and a half hours, it's probably time for me to stop. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> so with that, I am going to... Whoop, I'm gonna head on... Oh, I left the table up. Let me, let me put my table away. Where's my table? Whoop, there we go. I don't need the table. Anyway, it is time for me to go to bed now, I think. But oh my goodness, that was so fun. I'm so glad I decided to do all four of them. Like having the super marathon stream, playing all of the games. That was so fun. They were all so good. I loved every single one of those games. They, they were great. And it's, I've, I've said it before as well, but I'm still so amazed at how thematically different they all are as well. Like four incredible short games for free. And, like, they're so different, but they're all so good. That was, oh, that was good. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, I gotta go rest now. I gotta go rest now. It is time. Oh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for, for, being, for being here with me, for joining the stream with me today. This was really fun. I didn't expect to be going for this long. I, I did not expect to still be going after, like, 11 and a half hours. But I, I, I don't feel like I did too much. I don't feel like I'm super tired or anything. So it went well. It was a good time. I'm glad. But yes, definitely time to, to sleep now. Right, who are we raiding? Who am I raiding? Oh, well, I'm raiding Momoka. I'm sending the raid to Momo. What's she playing? Clock Tower. Oh my goodness, I remember this game. Oh, I remember this game. Oh my goodness. I'm going to send you over to the lovely Ushime Momoka because Momo is lovely. She's also doing a partner push at the moment, so I'm going to send you over her way to support her too. And she's just debuted her adorable Halloween model. Little witch outfit. It's so cute. Anyway, here's the raid message. If you're subbed, we've got bongos. If not, we'll send hearts. And I will send you to the, the lovely Momoka. And then I'm going to bed. Because that was a way longer stream than I expected. Yeah, from which game to which streamer, it's perfect. <laughs> but oh, that was really fun though. I've, I've had so much fun. I'm so glad I did that, but I definitely need to go to bed now. <laughs> but yes, please send the love over in Momo's direction. I'm gonna rest. I'll be back on Friday for some more Divinity with Xander. And uh, we just got into the Phantom Forest there, so I'm excited to see what's going to happen next, because I, 
think that's gonna be big stuff. I think that's gonna be big stuff. I'm excited for it. But yes, that is it from me for now. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.